It's the Mixed Martial Arts Hour with... Mixed Martial Arts Hour is back in your life on this Monday, August 15th, 2022. Hello again, everyone. I sure hope you're doing well. What a great day it is here on this program. Summer winding down, beautiful outside. It's getting a little chillier, but man, oh man. You know, usually I like to like uh, ramble on and talk about the weekend and so much has happened and San Diego and PFL and blah, blah. We have as jam-packed a show as I can remember. And it is fitting because tomorrow is the one year anniversary of our return to this program. And so I wanted to do it up big and we are doing it up big, my friends. We are doing it up very big. Two in-studio guests, massive names, top to bottom. We've got so much to discuss. And you're probably thinking to yourself, wait a second, two in-studio guests? What's going on here? Because I looked at the post and I know that Demetrius Johnson is joining us in studio. I saw that, but I didn't see anyone else in studio. What's going on? Well, I'm here to tell you in less than 15 minutes, 12 to be exact, from right now, a big name fighter is going to walk through that door and sit right here next to me and announce some massive news pertaining to his slash her career. 12 and a half minutes from now, they will walk through that door and sit here. Only on this program do you get moments like this. This is the closest thing to the Monday Night Wars back in the day. WCW Nitro, the limo pulls up, the feet come out of the limo. Who is it? Pan up. Wow, it's so-and-so making their debut. Well, we're getting one of those moments in about 12 minutes from now right here. Someone is going to walk in here. I have not announced who this person is. We don't know what is going on. No one knows what's going on. But keep it locked in 12 minutes, sitting right here. Spread the word. A big name fighter sitting right next to me to announce some major news. I can't wait for this to go down. Now, we have so much to discuss. It's a one-year anniversary show, a.k.a. tomorrow is the one-year anniversary, but we don't do a show on Tuesday, so I figured we'd do it today. It's a big day to be alive here in New York City. Everyone is very happy, healthy. We're all living the dream. Of course, Cheeto Vera with a massive win, and we will talk about that win, and we will talk to him about that win later on in the program. There is so much that we could get to. Of course, UFC 278, Leon Edwards' moment against Kamaru Usman this Saturday. This Saturday is proving to be one of the biggest days in the history of UK combat sports. UFC 278, Leon Edwards finally gets his title shot against Kamaru Usman. BKFC featuring MVP Michael Venom Page on loan from Bellator to fight Platinum Perry. What the heck is going on here? Yes, it is true on loan. Sounds like my guy Dean Henderson on loan from Man United, the starting keeper for your Nottingham Forest. Yes, I said Nottingham Forest, so all y'all can suck it, you haters out there. No, I'm not talking about that. PFL in London this weekend, huge, right? Kayla Harrison, Brendan Lochnane, Chris Wade, that's big, and of course, Alexander Usyk against Anthony Joshua. But the biggest news of the weekend, bigger than Cheeto's win, bigger than anything that went down, bigger than PFL's debut in Cardiff, was the fact that our very own mysterious Frank, the sole survivor in week four of the Parlay Pals. First, I went down. Now, I, I will debate this later on, but we don't have time for that right now. I went down. Then it was, I do believe, New York Rick who went down. I might be getting the order wrong here. And then it was GC who went down. And all that was left, was Mysterious Frank standing tall in the main event. He picked Cheeto, Cruz, over two and a half rounds. There was actually a moment there around, like, with 30 seconds left where it looked like the fight might end. But he's, could you imagine the man who kind of backdoored his way into all of this was the only one to get a correct pick? Now, of course, one person loses in the parlay. We all lose. But I love the fact that Mysterious Frank is the sole survivor for this past week. Mysterious Frank, here are your flowers. Congratulations. You walked into the studio today with your chest puffed out. Tell us, how are you feeling? Oh, I feel like a million bucks. I mean, this is amazing, right? You could be rubbing it in. Yeah. But, you should uh, be rubbing it I, in. I am a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. You feel good about yourself? Oh, I feel great. I mean, it was no question on the pick, no question that it would deliver. You feel I, like... I was a little questionable about your guys' picks, but... Yeah, I mean, we won't get into the fact that I picked Bo Nickel and that was turned down. I then picked Pat Downey, that was turned down. Then I went to the YouTube chat 
those scoundrels, and they all told me to take O'Day Osborne, not the two guys who ended up winning. I remember Benito. at the end of that show, we made sure that you knew that that was your pick. Yeah, yeah, but I just, you know, I'm allowed to say that now in uh, in retrospect. But, I mean, you must, I mean, this is big. You have now, I felt like you felt like you had some sort of imposter syndrome when it came to the parlay draft. A little bit, yeah, but um, that's gone now. Now you're, like, fully in. All in. I love it. God bless you. You're on a roll. I appreciate I know. I'm thinking about having my own segment soon. Yes. Uh, oh, you want to do picks as well? Yeah, I might, might have to. Uh, all right. Make so, a quick note of that? or No, I was just telling you that there's a bunch of switches as far as the lineup is concerned, so I'm telling the guys that we could do the switch that we were talking about. If you check out the chat. All right. Well, congratulations. We're going to talk more with the boys on the back end of the program. Uh, recap the night. A lot happened, of course. Cheeto Vera with the massive win over Dominic Cruz. First two rounds were not going his way. He was losing. And third round, he starts to figure him out. And then fourth round, kablam, kick to the head. An incredible moment for Ecuador's own four in a row now. Sad moment for Dominic Cruz, who looked fantastic. It, it looked like it looked like 2011 Dominic Cruz, right? It was incredible. He was uh, moving all over the place. He was, I mean, it was amazing. And uh, and then he got caught. No shame. I don't understand why anyone is calling for him to retire. Um, let's hear from the man. Give him some time. But I think there are plenty of big fights left for Dominic Cruz. He was on a winning streak, by the way, going into this fight, <clears throat> lest we forget. So I think he has uh, earned the right to take some time and figure things out. Certainly not. It's not like a Gustafson situation where it's starting to get uncomfortable watching Gus fight and he's losing in a minute. Dom was winning that fight. He was up 29-28 on all three scorecards. In any event, back into the show. We'll talk to the boys about the uh, the picks, the weekend, and whatever else might come up. At 4.30, my friends, we're going to be joined by Leon Edwards, Leon Rocky Edwards, live from Utah. I think he is familiar with Le- with uh, Utah now, Leon is. Uh, remember, last time he was on the program, he uh, was not so familiar with where Utah sat on the map. 4.30, he'll join us. Uh, to talk about uh, the big title fight this weekend. We are a mere five days away from his big rematch against Kamar Usman, the pound-for-pound pound king of the UFC in many people's eyes, and, of course, the reigning defending welterweight champion. That's at 4.30. At 4 o'clock, we're going to be joined by Cheeto Vera, the great Cheeto Vera, after his big win, one of our favorites on the program. Very happy for him. And remember, I said it. Last year, I said it. I mean, I, I think I might have even said it before the Aldo loss. This man will fight for a belt one day. That proclamation, that prediction looking to be truer than ever right now. He's not quite there. We don't want to count our chickens just yet, but I mean, it's looking pretty darn good uh, at the moment. So that's at four o'clock. At three o'clock, we're going to be joined in studio by our second in-studio guest, Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson. I mean, what a day. Demetrius Johnson returning uh, in, uh, what, 12 days from now to fight uh, Adriano Moraes in the rematch of the flyweight title fight that went down last year. This is the first event on Amazon uh, Prime Sports. This is uh, one on Amazon One, something like that. Anyway, they're going to Singapore. He's stopping by. My old friend, Mighty Mouse, will be in studio. I got his toy right over there. I got his picture right over there. I can't wait to see him. I think it's been over four years since I last saw him in person. Looking forward to that. At 2.30, Nate the Train Landwehr, who had an incredible fight on Saturday. Back and forth with David Onama. I mean, it was just unbelievable. I can't believe Onama made it to the end of the fight. Fight of the night. Huge personality. Fun personality. Nate Nate the Train, they call him. Uh, just, just a great character. First time on the program. Looking forward to talking to him. That's at 2.30. And Bo Nickel is going to join us at 2 o'clock. Of course, it was announced last Saturday that uh, he is going to fight again on the Contender Series. That's on the September 27th card, I believe it is, not the 29th. I keep getting confused about the 29th, the 27th. What is it? Yes, September 27th. And uh, he's back, and he'll be fighting one more time on Contender Series, and then we presume off to the UFC he goes. Of course, last week he won. There was a whole hullabaloo about not getting signed, not getting picked up, kayfabe, this, that, and the other. Y'all know the drill talking to uh, Bo Nickel at 2 o'clock. In five minutes, we're going to be joined in studio by a big-name UFC fighter who fought 
less than a month ago, and he'll be in studio to make a major announcement. Uh, before we get to him, I do want to acknowledge the fact that yesterday we found out that the great Rory McDonald uh, was calling it a career. Uh, he lost on Saturday in Wales, lost to Delano Taylor, and I, I figured uh, once Malatov was pulled from the card that you know this was a net positive for Rory, who uh, one would suspect didn't match up as well with Umalatov. In the end, he got knocked out by Taylor, took off the gloves after the loss, didn't get to speak on camera for whatever reason, and then posted Sunday morning uh, something on social media saying that his time had come. And I was very emotional when I saw this for multiple reasons. Obviously, I'm a proud Canadian, just like Rory. And I do believe I was, uh, you know, thinking about this, I do believe that Rory is the second greatest Canadian MMA fighter of all time behind George St. Pierre. I mean, I think George is the greatest of all time. And then you can make a case for, you know, I don't know, Carlos Newton and David Loazzo. And there are so many over the years, so many great Canadian fighters, but I really do believe that Rory is the second greatest ever. Of course, that fight against Robbie Lawler, UFC 189, is one of the greatest fights in UFC history. Uh, he told us on this show many moons ago that it's one of the greatest, if not the greatest moment of his career. Obviously, a lot has happened since. And then he went over to Bellator and had some success there. But really, I, I, I remember after the Lima fight, I, you started to feel like maybe the fire was, uh, was dimming a little bit. And uh, just one of the great characters in the sport, and as I said on social media yesterday, uh, we'll never forget. A lot of people don't know this. It was the 2016 interview in March of 2016 interview with Roy McDonald, um, where he was offered a fight with Wonder Boy in Canada, and he didn't like the contract, he didn't like the deal, he didn't like the terms, and said he was going to fight out the deal. And it was that interview that prompted the call from Lorenzo Fertitta to Fox to let me go. And it was the next day that I got the, uh, the call that, you know, I was being relieved of my duties. And regardless of that, I don't even know if Rory knew that, but we had just spoken. Uh, we always had a great relationship and still do. He was one of the first fighters to have my back publicly then. And a few months later after the 199 stuff, class guy, Mensch, um, and a guy who just, you know, fought with his heart and was often, I think, misunderstood we got the uh, the guy right over here. There he is, the iconic moment. He will always be by my side. And you might think, wow, you lost. You didn't get the title. Why would that be your favorite moment? Roy was just a different cat, showing up, getting his hands wrapped while wearing the suit. We called him you know, the, uh, the Canadian psycho. He liked Red King. He first came in as the water boy. I will always appreciate and remember how he had my back and I will always appreciate and remember all the great fights that he gave us and I will always appreciate and remember how he represented Canada and this sport to its fullest and in the best way possible made his debut at UFC 115 in the octagon in Vancouver in his home province of BC lost a heartbreaker and uh, really put it all together and was able to uh, go on a nice run all the way to the title it didn't pan out for him but he leaves the sport I think with his head held high, and in my opinion, the second greatest Canadian to ever step foot in any type of MMA cage. And uh, I think considering who is number one, that's pretty damn high praise. So congratulations, Rory. Uh, Rory will be on the show on Wednesday to talk about his career, his retirement, and where he goes from here. I can't wait for that conversation. I have the utmost uh, respect for him. Now, so we've gotten rid of, uh, you know, the Frank stuff. Frank, God bless. You could take the day off. Congratulations. These are the perks of winning, you know, the the draft, if you will. Uh, we've talked about Cheeto to come, Nate to come, DJ to come. But Frank, we do have some breaking news right off the top here. This is Shades of WCW Nitro. This is Shades of WWF Monday Night Raw back in the day. A month ago, the fighter who's about to step foot into this studio had a massive win. In a matter of seconds, he's going to walk in, sit here, and break some major news. And so let's not waste any time. It is 1.15. I'm a man of my word. Let us say hello to our guest here today, walking into that studio, the pride of the Bronx, the one and only Shane Burgos. How Shane, going, how are you, my friend? Good I'm to good. see you. I'm good, yeah. Good. Second time in studio. Second time in studio, yeah. It was in this one, right? 
back in the day in 2017? No. Did it look different? It looked different. It might have been a different... Uh, it might have been a different setup. Different green room maybe I was back different, in? Yeah, yeah, maybe a different right. green room. Yeah. This is great. This is a big surprise. <laughs> yeah. I didn't tell anyone. You didn't tell anyone. No. My family. Uh, we yeah. just saw you on Long Island. Of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like in the outside world. We just saw you Long Island. <laughs> yep. Uh, less than a month ago. A day away from a month ago, right? I believe that was July 16th yep. on Long Island. Yep. Had the big win over Charles Jourdain. You gave us some hints about things going on in your life. I don't want to waste any time. Frank, we have breaking news. You have a major announcement to make. Yes, yeah, so that was the last fight of my deal. I told you last time we spoke after the fight that I wanted to test free agency, test the water, see what, uh, whatever. I know what I, I think I'm worth. I know what I am worth. I want to see whatever else, else that I was worth. So I went out there. I tested the, the free agency market. And I'm excited to announce that I'm signing with the PFL. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I mean... It was it was not an easy decision. Um, it was just one of those. It was an offer. I just, I couldn't I couldn't turn it up. I, mean, I got two daughters. I got to go back home and I got to look 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 at them in their face and be like, you know, it was worth it when it, when when it's all said and done in the sport. With this deal, I feel like that that'll secure that. But um, not taking anything away from my UFC career. Like, man, I, 11 fights in UFC. Like that was a, a dream when I was 14 years old. I saw it for the first time on TV when I was 12, and I was like, you know what? That's what I want to do. When I was 14, I was like, I made the decision. I started training at 15, and uh. The UFC has given me this opportunity. They gave me the platform to be able to be in this position right now and then secure the deal that I, that I just secured with the PFL. So Sean, Dana, Hunter, Mick, all the guys at the UFC, I can't, can't thank you guys enough. Wow, okay. Um, a lot to ask you about. First off, congratulations. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, sounds like a great deal for you. Yeah. Um, you mentioned how hard it was to make this decision because I remember I was going to ask you about this. Like you were telling me like you were in school and you would draw pictures and yeah. stuff like that. Like all you wanted was to be a UFC yeah. fighter. Yeah, yeah. Did they, you know, I know PFL has been interested in you yeah. for a while. Uh, Peter Murray has yeah, talked yeah, about yeah. you. He's I from the Bronx too, so yeah. He's from the yeah. Bronx. He tried to sign you the last time your yeah, deal was Yeah, so up, last right? time, exactly. Last time he really wanted me. And then I was like, you know what? Let me, I, 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 I was UFC fighter. I was so proud of being a UFC fighter. And I still am. I still take a lot of pride in that. But I, I was a little bit younger at the time. Yeah. Now I'm a little bit older. And I'm like, you know what? It's just too good of a deal to, for me to pass up. And uh, I, I know they, they, they're putting a lot of trust and a lot of stock into me. I'm still in my prime. I'm only 31 years old. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to make the absolute most out of this deal. How difficult? What like how how much it was, did you? It was hard, man. It was yeah. hard because I like I said, I love the UFC. I really I really do love everything about the UFC. The, the way they treat us, uh, the staff when you're there on fight week, so accommodating. You got like the, the PT. You got you got uh, you got the, the food all there for you. You got Heidi who runs the entire event. She's freaking awesome. My hair braider, Etienne, she was awesome. So leaving all that behind is is it was not an easy decision at all. But again, I got to come home and, and look my two daughters in the face. And at the end of my career, I got to say it was worth it. Did so, the UFC match? Did no, they try? They they couldn't. They could, it was that good of a deal. Yeah, it was that good of a deal. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So they almost made the decision easier for you. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It still wasn't an easy decision, but uh, yeah, it was uh, it, it's not. I don't want to say bittersweet, but it's just like oh man, it's you're hard. about to get paid, man. Yeah. No. Exactly. This is the so, dream. Ex exactly. Exactly. That's why I keep I keep focusing on that. And PFL is a great organization. They're on ESPN too. And one of the good things that I like about my deal is that I'll be able to commentate in the future too. Wow. So that was a, that was a huge part for me because you know I'm a yeah. diehard. I'm a yeah, diehard yeah, fan. Yeah, yeah. I love this sport. So once I'm done with this sport. I'm never going to be done with this sport. Right, I'm going right. to be involved some way. So being able to commentate and get my feet wet with that, that, that was a, a huge a huge factor for me too. So one thing that's interesting about this is um, you just had your last fight, but usually how these things go, there's like this exclusive period, three months, this and that. Your fight was a month ago, less than a month ago. Did they just say, God bless? No, no, no. Sean said, go get some offers, see, see what they're offering, and then come back to us with, with, uh, with what they're saying, and then we'll go from there. Okay. So that's what my manager did. Malky went out and yeah, did that. Yeah, Malky and, went out and got... And did you talk to anyone else, or was it just PFL? It was just PFL. Wow. Yeah, and yeah. they came They came strong. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, yeah. I don't want to ask like specifics, but is this the most you've ever made in your career? Yeah, absolutely. Not yeah. even if, close? If it, was, if it was close, like last time, it was it was relatively close the first time. That's why I was like, you know what? It, it's not that big of a... It was a bigger difference. I mean, yeah. It was six figure difference back then that what I was going to get paid for, from PFL. And I, and I turned that down to, to stay with the UFC. And now it's obviously bigger than that. So it was actually a smarter, I mean, like in the end, you bet yeah. on yourself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the numbers went up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just made a post on like bet on yourself. I'm huge into that. Huge oh into my that. God. Yeah. But so th th even back then it was a difference of six figures and you still turned yeah, it down. Yeah, like I, I really, like I said, it's not, it still isn't an easy decision because I, money isn't everything, but I mean, just of that course. financial security, it, it means a lot. So, uh, it, it was a hard decision, but I'm excited to, to get going with the PFL. And just curious, why didn't you talk to other organizations? They, they were, they didn't show too much interest in the okay. first time. So I was like, you know what, if you guys weren't interested the first time, I'm like, I don't really care to hear right. from you this time. So whatever.
Uh, did you speak directly to the PFL guys like Peter and whatnot, or was it just your manager? Uh, this t- this time I did. I was I was in Miami uh, last week, I think it was, and uh, I, I met with my manager, and then we we called Peter on the okay. on the phone. How was that? It was cool, man. That was I, I went to the headquarters back with the first time I was renegotiating and uh, met with them there, and it, he he's an awesome guy, real good okay. guy. So you're gonna fight at 145. That's another thing. I I, I oh. I'm definitely I, I'm on that I'm teetering on 55 45. I mean, I'm I'm getting tired of fucking the the, the really? weight cut. Everybody like, what, knows what how are you big. right now. I'm big. Yeah. You're big. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> like, how big do you get? I get big enough to fight at 55. Really? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Is it, yeah. Is it starting to kill you? It's it's not the, the actual weight cut because I, I take it so so strategically and I count every single thing I eat. But I'm just getting tired of that part where like I'm only cutting about 10 pounds in, in the sauna every time, which isn't yeah. isn't crazy at all. But to get to the port where I'm cutting the 10 pounds, it's just like, dude, I'm, I'm tired of this, man. I, I'm right. a bigger guy. I can put on more muscle. I can fill out a little bit more at 55. So I think the first fight will probably be at 45, and then from there. I think I might go the second season at 55. Okay, because I was going to ask, because they have their uh, semifinals this weekend uh, at 45. Yeah. So I was curious if you were looking at their roster. I mean, with all those, they've got a great 45. they got a great, great Brandon Lockman, yeah. Chris yep. Wade, super yep. tough New yep. Yorker. Yep. But I feel, I mean, I feel like the the path, with all due respect to them, I feel like the path is wide open for you to get this Millie. I, I can't I can't look at it that way. I got to look at it like I'm, yeah. I'm in the yeah, UFC yeah. still. You know what I mean? I, I can't do that because then I'm going to end up right. looking stupid thinking that these guys are easy. They're not easy and they're not going to come at me thinking, oh, they're, they're looking at me like I'm fresh meat, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I, got, I got to keep in mind that these these are UFC caliber guys. And I do think Brendan Lockney and Chris Wade, I'm obviously, sure. they, they are UFC caliber guys. So I'm not overlooking any of them. But um, at 55, too, I'm watching. So. Okay. Uh, so I was going to ask about that. But are, are you. Like we have seen, let's be honest, some guys come over to the PFL, big name guys, yeah. and not do well, right? Um, I know Pettis just broke his hands. He made it to the semis, Rory. Yeah. Do you feel like that's been part of the mistake? Guys have come over and maybe not it, taken it as seriously? Possibly, but I also think it maybe was a little bit at the end of their career. Yeah. I don't see myself as being at the end of my career. I'm only 31 years old, and I feel like I haven't really hit my pride. I feel like my, my, my prime. I, I feel like I haven't really even shown the best of me yet. Right. Yeah. So I, I feel like the, my best years are still ahead of me. Are they going to bring you out? They have an event in London this weekend. Are you going to be... Uh, I mean, I'm going on vacation on this okay. weekend, so I don't know if I can do yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> now, they have this weekend, and then they have the finals right in october the championship and but they've talked about doing like super fights and things like that are you going to fight again this year yeah so it looks like i'll probably be oh, fighting really? november december okay yeah in, in obviously like a non-tournament yeah yeah fight, outside right? a tournament fight like a just, one-off yeah exactly like thing. not a, not an exhibition but a outside season fight. got it got yeah. it and do you know who you'll be fighting no nobody okay. yet yep. have they talked any no no nothing yet okay. we just got this deal done like 24 hours it's not even completely done yet i didn't even act put pen to paper really? yet. You could have brought it here and yeah. signed it. <laughs> it's not done yet. We're just going over some, over some language stuff in the okay. contract, but it's it's basically a done deal. Got it. Yeah. Um, so you will fight again at least once this year. Yes. Probably just once. Yes, yeah. And it will be at 45. Most likely. Okay, most, most likely. likely. And you think next year in the tournament you'll be? That, that's we're gonna see how, how this one goes and go it. from there. It could be fifty five, it could be forty five. I'm not I'm not hundred percent sure yet. I was talking about this over the weekend. Like you see some of the guys who are in the finals, like you know. Uh, a weight or semifinals Wade Lockname, even this dude that beat Rory Delano Taylor yeah. Juan Adams yeah. like to me and of course the UFC offers so much and it's such a big platform and they are by far number one and they're on ESPN and all this stuff but you look at some guys and with all due respect the caliber and the fact that they're able to make this type of money if I'm like a mid-tier fighter at this point, I'm not. I'm, I'm talking like mid-tier. I'm talking <laughs> a guy who can't even get to the UFC. <laughs> why would you go anywhere else? When you can make a million, you know what I mean? No, I, I hear what you're saying, but it's still the, the pla- if you're not in UFC yet, you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Or not in UFC, or if you're like a UFC quote unquote cast off. You yeah, yeah, yeah. You lost yeah. three in a row. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's what, one thing I like about it, the, it, the structure. You win these fights, there's your, your bag, right? It's right yeah. there. You can see it. It's, right. it's almost like, you know what I mean? With UFC, you don't know exactly when you're going to get a title shot. You don't know exactly when you're going to get these opportunities. With this one, it's like, it's laid out right in front of you. Right. You win those two, uh, what do you call it, out-of-season fights, you, you get your, rack up the points, and then three fights to win the million. It's right there for you right. to see. How do you feel about the format as a fighter? Like, obviously, you're not someone who needs to make a name. You're very well known. Do you like this format, or would you prefer just one-off fights like you had in the UFC? I, I like the idea of the format being, it's just, it's black and white. Right. There's, there's no gray area. I, I do like that. Um, the, the, the five fights in a, in a year is a lot. That's why I'm not sure about 45 or 55. Uh, uh, yeah. So for me personally, I don't care too much about that, but so that'll be a little bit harder for me to do the 45 every six weeks or something. But again, it's it's laid out right in front of you. And, and with the money that you're making, I can't, how am I going to complain about cutting weight right. twice in six weeks? I can't. And I can't and, and that. people forget like that you're making money on route to the million. Like you're yeah, making exactly. Like, I know Pettis was making 750 on route to the million. Yeah. So there's a lot. I mean, yeah. PFL it appears as though they're paying pretty damn good. You can attest to this. 100. So that. 
all, with all, when all said and done after the first season, when I, obviously I plan on winning, I'll, 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 I'll be a multimillionaire. I'll say that. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Is it possible? Can you tell me this? In one PFL fight that you'll have, how many UFC fights combined equal that one PFL fight? <laughs> multiple? Yeah, multiple. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. you're killing it now. This is this is this was. Yeah. I mean, this was a no brainer. Did you have someone like smack you upside the head and be like, "Why are you even thinking about this?" My, my wife and my dad were like, "What? What? 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 Yeah, like what? What? What are you thinking?" Uh, yeah, but money wise, it, it is no brainer. But like I said, it's not right. Like I love the fucking UFC. That's yeah. I thought it was my dream as a fourteen year old kid trying, get trying to get there. So that it wasn't an easy decision. If we're just looking at money, it's black and white. I right. mean, yeah, no brainer. I, I'm, I'm making I'm making good money, but. I, I can't say anything bad about the UFC. The, the, the position I'm in now and the, the reason why I got that deal is because of the platform the UFC gave me to put on those crazy fights that, that gave me this worth. Yep. Did so, you call anyone there to say, you know, thank you? Not, not yet. It, like I said, I haven't put pen to paper in. Got but it. I, I can't thank them enough. I mean, I, I, when I was 14 years old, I didn't know what the fuck I wanted to do. I was terrible in school. I hated high school. I hated all that. I had no path in life. I was like, what the hell? All my friends are talking about going to college. I'm like, what am I going to do? Like what I don't I have no clue what I'm gonna do. And then I find I find it on TV. I'm like, this is awesome. I'm obsessed with it. Then I find a gym, I started training that gym, been the same gym ever since, and I'm like, okay. This it, is it. it gave me my path. It gave me a, a a a purpose in life. So I can't thank the UFC enough. I really can't. Do you remember what that fight was? My first fight? Like the one no, the one that you saw. Yeah, I mean, I, it was a UFC Unleashed episode. I told the story like 50 times. I probably told you the story. It was okay. uh, Matt, Matt Hughes slam, slamming Carlos Newton. Uh, it's on UFC yeah. Unleashed. And I was like, he knocks him out, and I was like, what the hell is this? And my yeah. cousins, I was like, well, what? Wait, oh, he won a belt? And I was like, what the? You can win a belt by slamming a dude? I was like, what do they do? They just get to do whatever they want? I didn't know the rules. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. like, this is fucking crazy. And then it was like a, a marathon of the UFC Unleashed uh, on Spike yeah, TV. Yeah, on Spike, yeah. Binged it. Binged it. Were you a thing. pro wrestling fan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah like, so you were giving that, that intro. I was getting yeah. a little nervous. Honestly, I was like, the, I remember the WCW. Remember uh, that? When that the was, limo that, would that, pull up? That, that was the best. Yeah, that, yeah. The, the, the m- Monday Night War. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Well, that's what the reason I asked if you were a pro wrestling fan was because, like, that's how I started watching UFC. Exactly. And you were like, oh, this is pro wrestling, but it's real? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So I fell off the pro wrestling in middle school. Then I found that right in the beginning of high school. And I was like, it's similar with the, with the like back in the day, they had the ramps and that, yeah, and yeah, the fireworks. Yeah. And I was like, right. that's kind of what drew me in. Yeah, yeah. And then then it's real. Dudes are fucking slamming each other in the heads and shit like that. So I'm like, oh, this is insane. Love love it first. Were sight. you a troublemaker? No, and I would, I've never been in a street fight. I've never been in a fight outside of a cage. Really? Never. Wow. Never. never. So I was like, just terrible at school. I hated school. I didn't understand why I, I'm... I'm never gonna use chemistry in my life. Why the hell are you making me do this? I gotta do it and I failed and I gotta do it in, high, in summer school. And right. if I don't do that, then I gotta stay back and not graduate on time. I'm like, this is fucking ridiculous. So I, Did you I, graduate? I graduated, yeah, but it was it was close because I- It was dicey. I, yeah, I cut a lot of school back in the, I actually ended up failing gym in my senior Come year. Come on. And I was gonna have to, I wasn't gonna graduate because of gym. Because the gym was second period. It's 7 a.m. I'm not trying to, I'm not even Wait, trying to be- second period is 7 a.m.? Yeah. What time does school start? It started at six, six. Come on. Yeah. What school is this? Monroe Woodbury High School. It was like six, six thirty, and then Holy and then second class seven thirty. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, I was like, I'm not trying to get sweaty. I'm not. Even, I didn't even go to the school until like third yeah. period. So I just kept missing gym, and I ended up failing gym. Guys, like, I'm gonna hold you back for this. So he's like, clean up the gym closet, and I'll pass you. So I wow. ended up having to do that. Imagine that, it, yeah. uh, uh, an MMA fighter. Failing so you gym. just never, sh- you just never I showed didn't, up. I, not never, but I missed a lot enough right, right, to right, right, obviously right. not pass. <laughs> but you would think that someone like yourself, who's like, oh, I don't care about chemistry, math, whatever, you would relish. Gym. No, 100. percent But you tell me, I gotta wake up at 6 a.m. to get to get yeah, to there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's too early, man. So at, at what point did you say like, I figured it out? Like, was it really right away? It, I, first class, I was like, wow, that was a lot of fun. First training session, I was like, that was so much fun. I never, I was 15 years old. I was like, I never had fun like that. Like, I, I do some other sports that are cool, but this, this is a different kind of fun. I was like, I don't think I could do what these guys are doing. They're, they're crazy. I don't think I could do that. Three years later, I had my first fight in high school. Wow. <laughs> you were in high school? I was in high school, yeah. Oh, we actually, I was, yeah, I just turned 18 and then in, uh, in March, and then June, I had my first fight right before uh, graduating. We ended up watching my class in, uh, my fight in economics class. Come on. Yeah, that was pretty what cool. What do you mean? I, like, Someone I, recorded it? No, no, no. Like, the, we pulled it up online. And, and oh, no it was, way. It's the end of the year, so we didn't have school. You know what I mean? You don't really yeah, do yeah, shit. No. So at the end of the year, they pulled it up on the, on the TV, and my economics teacher showed it. And what was the result? I won. You didn't have a decision. Yeah. Oh, a decision. And was that an yeah. amateur fight? That was or? an amateur fight, yeah. Oh, I, I, I used to fight at 35 back then, too. Damn. Yeah. And where was it? That was in Rahway, New Jersey. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. I know that. Yeah. And how many people were there? 100, maybe. 100. Maybe maybe 200. I got a big family, so maybe 200. Came out? 50 is like my family. Yeah. And uh, were you like crapping in your pants before? No, it was very weird. I, I don't get n- nervous, really. But it, it, even for my first fight, I was like, this is just, sur- it was very surreal. Right. And it's always been like that ever since. Like everyone, how, how's, how is it fighting? It's
kind of outer body experience. Did you know um, last month on Long Island, was there a part of you that's like, this could be it? This could no, be- no, not at all. No, I, no. I, I thought I was just going to re-sign with the UFC. And you really did? Yeah, I, I swear to God I did. I I would. I feel like if I, if I knew that was going to be my last fight, I would have soaked it up a lot more. I, I, that's, that's a little bit of a regret I had that I didn't really like relish the moment. Like I remember when uh, Bruce was saying my name and the crowd went fucking crazy. That was awesome looking back, but I didn't, I wanted to soak it up even more. I wish I could relive that moment. I really yeah, do. But that's something you say in retrospect. Like you're freaking locked. Yeah, in, right? yeah, yeah. It's hard yeah, to yeah, be yeah. looking around. Exactly. And I'm not thinking the about the next fight or the next right. deal in that, in that moment. I'm thinking about the guy that's in front of me at that at that point in time. Correct me if I'm wrong. Obviously, I, I may have missed it, but like leading up to the fight, you didn't mention that this was the last. It was only. I did. No, I did. Did you mention? I did. I did a couple okay. times in media day. I mentioned that a couple okay. times too. Yeah. And so, did you do that because you were trying to let people know? Like, yeah, you know, yeah, a little bit. Okay, yeah. smart. La- la- like, and then we talked about it. Like la- last time I did it, it was um kind of like taboo like it wasn't yes, done as much yeah. now at this point yeah. it's been done so many more times so it's not not as a uh, i don't know the word frowned upon i guess right I'm it always uh baffles me when fighters don't bring this up They're yeah like, oh i don't want to make a big deal i'm like yo this is your life this yeah is your, like if people don't know that you're available how the hell are they going to come yeah, that's table? the first time i didn't really do it i didn't do that at all i was i just kept my mouth shut really and just went, went about it and this time i was like let's make it a little bit more exciting get some hype get some buzz going around it and, and that, that's what i did for this one but and i completely agree with you when you were there like after the fight i think you mentioned to me when we spoke after you didn't speak to dana right no i didn't, didn't no, see him no, no. um did anyone come up to you and say like you will, we'll figure this out we'll sign you you know like, oh, they, oh. they dana said it in the in his pro, uh, post they said, but no one came back no no no, no i was not I, even I, like I, another... I i drove to the fight so i actually got to i literally once i was done with everything i did the media that the, the media shit and yeah, then yeah, i was yeah. like all right i can go all right i'll see you guys wow I you just... didn't stay at the hotel no no no, no. Oh my I, gosh. They, I, the fight was done at, at i know it was what like, three o'clock yeah, so yeah, i yeah. went back home went, you drove to the fight no I, I my cousin drove my car to the fight from the hotel then i drove home Took my truck and just drove. Yeah. How were your legs when you were driving? Because weren't your they, legs- they were fine at that point. At that point, okay. they were fine. Yeah. And, Before and, that. And by the way, like I know we talked about the legs on the Monday. I believe it was. Did you ever have any issues? No, like, not at all. Know? No, it was just it was just the lactic acid, complete wow. lactic acid. And dump. first time, right? First time ever. Yeah, first and, time ever. But you said it was because you changed up things a little bit. Yeah, I just was. I was putting so much emphasis on getting a finish in that fight that I was squeezing with everything I had for. Was it seven and a half minutes, something like that? So my legs, once I stood up, I was like, after the second round, I was like, fuck, damn, here we go. Come on. Now, do you feel like you need to change stuff going forward? Like, like let's say you go to 55 and you add muscle, but like you have to do certain exercises that this won't happen again? Yeah, I just got to, I just don't put so much of an emphasis. I, I knew it was my last fight on my deal, and I wanted to, I really wanted to finish in that fight. Oh. I just put way too much of an emphasis. Like, I, I should have threw more, more uh, ground and pound and stuff like that instead of just trying to take the choke the whole time. So hindsight's twenty twenty. I just, it was a... Uh, stupid mistake on my part just to, 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 to force the choke. That's what I was doing. I was forcing it. So uh, a lot was made of the fact that you're undefeated in New York. I believe it's 7-0 yeah, now, right? Yep. Uh, they were just in New York, PFL was, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, two weeks ago, I yeah. was there. Um, any talk of fighting in New York next year? Like, you got to uh, keep they this def- going. Yeah, they definitely want Okay, to was that part of the... Yeah, it wasn't even... It's just, it's a... Uh, it's a given? It's, it's obvious, exactly. Right. It's like, yeah, why wouldn't we put him on a New York card? Like, yeah, every time I'm in New York, I mean, if, if I got commission off ticket sales, I feel it from the UFC, I, w- I would make a decent amount of uh, a ticket uh-huh. sale commission because it doesn't, I fought in Ottawa, I got a, a huge crowd. If I, in Texas, I got a huge crowd. If I fight in Vegas, I got a huge crowd. So if it's in New York, they only got to drive 45 to an hour. Right. Yeah, I'm, in, I'm in a. Did you get a uh, percentage for, for PFL tickets? No, I should have put that in my deal, right? <laughs> hey, if it's not done yet. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're a right. little carb. You hear that. And uh, so with UFC, at this, okay, so you end the UFC run. You're going over now to PFL, and I believe, like, I was just talking to Anthony Smith about this. Anthony Smith, the day before his fight against uh, Uncle Live, he ended up signing. Yeah. And he said, you know, there were other reasons, and he's doing the TV stuff and yeah, whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What would you say to someone who is in your shoes and, and maybe afraid to take that jump? It, but every, there's more money. You're turning down more money just to be a UFC it, fighter. It depends on who you are. Every single person is different. You know what right. I mean? I can't say I'm worth the same as this guy. This guy might be worth more. He might be worth less, so I don't... I, it would be it would be circumstantial. I got to know who it is. I got to know what his record is. I, I can't just give a generic look okay. because it can't be that generic. If you're two and two in the UFC, now you're done with your career and you're not going to come to the PFL and they're going to be like, yeah, all right, you, we, we really, you know what I'm saying? Right. So it's circumstantial. If you if you already established your name and you, you use that platform the UFC gave you to to to, to establish your name, then I, why wouldn't you just test it out? Right. But for some reason, I feel like fighters are so afraid. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, Anthony Smith got a great deal because he's doing the TV stuff already. Right. So that, that's phenomenal. Like that, if I was him, I would probably do the same thing because he's 
fucking great at, at behind yeah, the desk stuff. I wouldn't want to lose that if I was him either. So and that's his path when he's done. That's again, when I'm, when I'm done with the sport, I want to still be involved with the sport. Right. This is giving me that path to be, to be able to do that. Okay. How, how many years is it for? It's a two year deal. Two year deal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Two seasons. Like two season deal. Two yeah. full seasons. So yeah. that's like 10 fights if all goes your way, right? Yeah, 11. Yeah. If Oh, because there's yeah, the extra exactly. one. Yeah. Damn, that's a lot of fights. Yeah, it is a lot. I feel like in UFC, again, this is not me back. Like, I fully recognize people sometimes will say, like, the UFC is yeah, you the can, NFL. You can't. You yeah. sound dumb. Yeah, yeah. But I, I do think that now with other leagues coming up, it's with TFL, it's, it's good. It's, it's good. Yeah. Again, speaking of the 90s wrestling thing, yeah, right? Yeah, That's yeah, how yeah. everyone yeah. started to get paid. Yeah, yeah. So this is good for the sport. Competition 100%. 100%. breeds success. Competition breeds, you know, guys getting paid and whatnot. And when I see these guys getting paid more, I'm like, Let, let's go. Good, beautiful. Right. Yeah, I don't, if they're in my division, if I fold them, I don't care. Like, Get paid. I want everybody to get paid. I don't want to just be the only one. If, if I'm getting paid, then you're going to be getting paid too. It's it's going to be a. Right. It's everyone's going to going to rise, rise up. The tide yeah. Exa- exactly. Um, I know you're a big MMA fan, but also you know you have a family and whatnot. Have you watched their shows? Yeah, of course. Are yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Who, who do you like over there? Like who? I'm, I, I like Brendan Lockdown a lot. You I do. Like he's, he's a fun fighter to watch. I like Chris Wade a lot. I used to Man, versus Brendan Lockdown would be a sick fight. <laughs> I mean, there's every every all, all four of those guys that are in yeah would be a great fight but then the 55 too you got stevie ray in there yeah. anthony pettis obviously right uh, the, the clay collard I, I, is he in the he uh he didn't make it to the he didn't, uh, he's he's playoffs. really good too so yeah, that dude is tough as yeah, hell his he's, boxing he, he is, is great super tough so like there's no uh you can't go out go go to the pfl and think you're gonna get easy fights like guys that you that don't have a, a million followers or fifty thousand followers it doesn't mean shit. Like just because right. he doesn't know him doesn't mean that this guy can't fight. There's there's guys in the PFL that are legitimate that they can hang with the UFC guys. I feel like I know you'll answer your answer here, but I'll ask it anyways. Uh, we were debating a couple of weeks ago who's the number two promotion right now in the sport, and I think you can make a strong case it's PFL now that they've overtaken Bellator. A little more momentum. I I, I feel like every fight has yeah. purpose, meaning, yeah, yeah. and they're being aggressive. Like yeah. <clears throat> they they tried to get Cyborg recently. They're signing yeah. you. The Pettis deal recently, the Rory deal, other guys as well. They're doing this big expansion in Europe. Yeah. Um. I don't know if you've seen that, but like that's obviously a big deal. I feel this. I f- it's also be. the platform. Yeah. The that, that, oh, that's what. I, right? That's what I was gonna say. It's it's got to be them because it's just easy to watch their shows. It's so easy. It's right. if you have ESPN, you're watching UFC already. It's right. They're on the ESPN too. Like Bellator's on Showtime. Is that like you need a subscription for that? Or? Yeah. Like yeah. unless you're a diehard fan, you're not gonna do that. Right. The, the, the diehards are only only getting subscriptions. I mean, if you already have a, a sc- subscription to ESPN for UFC, then why not just tune in to, to watch the the PFL, which is like the day before I think they usually do Fridays. Yeah, well, actually, but on this uh, this past weekend, they were on at the same time. Oh, yeah. like it was bleeding over into okay. it was like freaking nine hours of uh, <laughs> of fighting. Did you watch the? I think you were tweeting about it, right? The uh, Cruz and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. Cheeto. Yeah. When you see, I'm just curious. Like now you're in this point of your career now where you're about to get paid seriously like all that work is yeah, yeah. not to say you didn't get paid but like no, this is a course. different level yeah, yeah, right yeah. and the sport like it all like on that saturday right you see rory legend he ends yeah, up retiring yep. cruz legend knocked out like this sport is unforgiving right it is that to me is exhibit 9648 why you need to get paid you need to take all the money right now yeah, yeah, 100%. you look at it through that like you're like damn like yeah when I, one well, back when i was 26 27 I, I wasn't no right. i wasn't now that in 31 yeah 100 percent because Whoever's a star today doesn't mean they're going to be a star tomorrow. Right. It really, like, you look at it, there's so many. I don't want to name any fighters to, to, to put them down or anything like that, but it's happened so many times where they're huge, they're stars, they're, or, or not even necessarily stars, but they're going to be a star. Yeah. You think they're going to be a star, they're going to get paid, you think this, and then they fall off and you don't really even hear about it anymore. And it's like, that's you, what you got to get it now. Kinda, yeah, like you kind of, like you had the platform, right. but now you're not getting paid for it. You should have tested free agency at that point, right? If you could have. Right. Um, all right. So when you look back, favorite fight in the octagon. Oof. Favorite moment, favorite fight. <sighs> favorite moment. The last moment, Bruce saying my name. Really? Was that when he said my name in the in the like, What was so special about it that? It was the, the crowd. I never heard a crowd like that. Wow. It was awesome. It was that cool. one was loudest, like yeah. even yeah. MSG. Yeah. yeah, because MSG, they had a bunch of New Yorkers on the card. This I was the only New Yorker on the card. That's true. It was it was crazy. I felt it into my in my bones. So that I, that was a great moment, but I also liked the that the MSG fight when I fought um, Mac one, mm. that that was that was incredible. That was a crazy one. That was crazy. The, every, the fight week, every, everything was just awesome. Uh, the, my first Long Island card when I fought Pepe, that was like the everyone was like, oh shit, it was this chamber. Was yeah, yeah, so yeah. That that one was awesome. That was 2017. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, that, yes, yes, yes. 17. Yeah, like my the Weidman one, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but I, I, man, it's hard to say. Uh, I can't give you one because then like I look when I fought Cub Swanson, like I was. When I, when I was 18 years old, I flew out to Vegas to do the Fan Expo, the first ever Fan Expo. Come on. Yeah. And I, like as a fan? 
Yeah, and I, my, my parents, that was my graduation gift because I actually graduated. Come on. Yeah, so me and my wow. cousin, me and my cousin, he was 21 and I was 18, flew out to Vegas, did the Fan Expo. It was, I was, dude, I'm, I'm telling you, I was diehard, like getting pictures of all the fans, waiting on every line, like wow. geeking out. And then I, and then Cub Swanson was walking around. I don't think he had a booth at the time because he was in WC. Uh. And he was just walking around. And I was like, oh, Cub Swanson. I was like, can I get a picture? And I, I got a picture of Cub Swanson. And then like fast forward and I'm, and I'm fighting him. Fighting him. So yeah, it, it's it, that must have been surreal. Yeah, it was. It was definitely weird. Was, Did you ever tell him that? Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think I ever spoke to him like one on one before. So really, yeah. Even after the fight. After the fight, I saw him real quick, and then that was it. Right. Yeah. Wow, so what year was that? Was that 2010? When did you graduate? I graduated in 09. It was 09. It was 09, the first Fan Expo. Damn, that's yeah. crazy. I went to both of them. 09 right. and then 10 was in Vegas again. I went yeah, to yeah. Too. Did you go to the event? Like I remember. Uh, no, was... I watched it at a, at a bar. I, was, I couldn't get into the bar, but they let me sit in the, in really? the living room area and watch Why it. didn't you go to the event? You couldn't get to it? I was broke, man. I was yeah. 18 years old. <laughs> that was, so I who'd you go with? Your cousin? Yeah, my cousin. It's it just me and him. Yep. And, but who paid for your parents? Yeah. Wow. Yep, yep. Where'd you guys stay? I stayed. It was a funny story. Like, you know, the old downtown Vegas? Oh, yeah. Like, Fremont if, if, Street and exactly. all that? Exactly. If you don't know Vegas, you just think a hotel's a hotel. Right. We ended up getting a hotel at the Lucky 7 or something like that oh, no. just because it was cheap. And I was like, oh, cool. We get that. And I was like, this is... I'm like, this is not the Vegas we're yeah. thinking about. <laughs> yeah. But coincidentally, my, my other cousin, he was there with a bunch of his friends that were staying at the Mandalay Bay. Just coincidentally. He was wow. doing, doing some other stuff. Just, it was a bachelor party, I think, or something like that. He was like, just come stay with us. And the event was the Bentley of the Bay. So I was uh, like, dude, oh my God. They had a TV in the, in the, in the bathroom and everything. Yeah, and this yeah. is freaking cra crazy. So we were going from staying in like a, a trap house <laughs> to right, staying right. like in a Mandalay Bay in a suite. I was like, thank God he was there too. Who do you, do you remember who you met? Like which fighters you took? Every pictures? fighter. Every, every fighter that was there, I went out on every single line to meet every single fighter. Wow. Every, I, got, I got all the pictures and that, all the autographs. Yeah. That is my, crazy. My, my room was like decked out like crazier than this. Yes, yeah, yes, my yes. brother. Yeah, crazier. The posters everywhere. Yeah, I was just a diehard. This is all you ever wanted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a die, absolute diehard fan. I eat, sleep, live, bleed this sport. I, I fucking love it. So what, now being in the UFC for so long, like I still love it, but uh, I do get burnt out of it a little bit, especially when I'm fighting. Like I don't yeah, try yeah. to watch uh, like the, the card before. Like if I'm fighting on on Saturday, this Saturday, the week before, I don't even want to watch it. Right, I just right. want to just focus, relax, chill. So it does burn you out a little bit, but um, I, I still I, I'm addicted. I, I love this shit. I remember when we talked. I think it was the first time you were in studio and you were talking about your teeth. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pasta, right? Yeah, that, the, the, the last one was here. My front one was chipped. Right. Yeah. But didn't you say something to the effect of like about the health insurance or the dental insurance and you didn't have? I didn't have dental insurance. Right. I know. Yeah. And how, so how did you end up? I just got, I got a friend that hooked me up. Hooked and you helped, up. Helped me get so it. So like, fixed, think yeah. about that, right? Yeah. yeah they, like from staying at the shitty hotel in Vegas so, and going to the expo yeah. to making it to the UFC, but not having the money to fix your teeth, <laughs> right? to now getting paid yeah. because of what you did in yeah, the UFC. Yeah, yeah. That's why I feel like yeah. I understand when you say bittersweet. I yeah. totally understand. Yeah, yeah. Like my dream was to go to ESPN. I wanted to go to ESPN and it was great. And it got me to a certain point. But then like there's something powerful about being able to be like, no, now I have other opportunities as a result of this one. I'm grateful for exactly. this one, but not having to shit on it on the way out, but recognizing that this got you now to yeah. where you can actually support your family and support yourself, exactly right? exactly how I feel. Like I can never say anything bad about the UFC. I can't, how could I ever like, I love the UFC. I love everything about it. They gave me the platform. I'm here. Now I'm in PFL. Now I'm going to love the PFL even more. They're giving me, they're changing my life completely with, with, with this space. So, yeah. Do you feel, and obviously we could talk when the fight is about to happen, but one thing I've asked a lot of the guys who took big deals to go to the PFL or even when they go to Bellator, there's sometimes this feeling of, I need to prove that I was worth this money. I need to prove that I'm worth the investment, right? Like they're taking a chance on me. I need to win, look good, and make this all. Do you feel, do you? I could see feeling like that, but at the end of the day, when the referee says go, I'm, I swear to God, I'm not thinking about shit. I'm right. just thinking about the guy that's in front of me right there. So I, I can see leading up thinking that, but again, once they say go, all that is gone. Everything is gone. No matter what was happening in my life before that moment, doesn't matter. So I don't, I don't think I'm that kind of fighter that'll bring that kind of, uh, stress or or uh, those kind of thoughts or emotions okay. into the cage. I feel like I'm a very uh, free fighter. Like I, when I get in there, I'm I'm fighting. I'm not. You don't get nervous. Uh, I can't even say nervous because really, no, no. GSP would tell me like would want to throw. I can up see. I can. Fight. I can see some people doing that. I get more nervous for like a. You know, I really don't get as nervous. I get more nervous for sparring or for like a hard cardio workout. Like when my when my really strength, yeah when my strength and conditioning because I know it's gonna suck. Right like for, the, for the fight, you don't really know because right. it's it's a little bit um new territory. So. It's unknown. When I have when I have a hard sparring session, I'm like oh, I got to spar this guy today. Shit, this, gonna, this, this motherfucker's hard today. Then I know what to expect. You know what right, I mean? The right, cardio right, is like right. I know what to expect. The fight, it's like I don't know what to expect. This could be 30 seconds long. You still sparring as much as you did early in your career? No, 
No. No. Because of the head trauma? I just don't need to anymore. You get to, like Max said it too. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get to a certain point, you don't really need to. And that, that, I, I would highly recommend to spar when you're, when you're coming up because that's how you get good. The only way to get good at fighting is to, is to fight, right? But then you get to a certain point where you're not getting better by doing all that sparring. You're probably doing more damage, if anything, taking all those shots to the head and stuff like that. So I'm only sparring once a week. Just once. Yeah. How many, and then how many we'll do, times? We'll, like, is it just like one sparring session? That's it. Yeah. And then we'll that's, do we'll do other light sessions where we're flowing, like flow sparring, touch sparring, moving. Right. We're still the same exact motion of sparring. We're just not blasting each other in the head as hard as we can. And when you are sparring, are you wearing head gear? Mouth. I just I just came from sparring. Right. Right. Really? Yeah. yeah Damn. Yeah. So you're sparring even when you're not in camp. Yeah. Yeah. I only did one round today. My my teammates frightened, so I want to give okay. them a good, a good look. So I just did one round. Who's that? Uh, Rob Riccio. He's a uh, two and zero pro. And where's he fighting? CFFC. Him, okay. my, him, my brother, and two other of my teammates. So your brother fighting as well? Yeah, my brother's. Your yeah. brother right over there. He's right over What's there. What's up, man? Yeah. That's Ryan. Yeah, it's <laughs> he's fighting for CFFC yeah, too. Yeah, he's one and zero pro, three and zero amateur. It's good to be Soon here. you'll be here getting these big time deals. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Now it's very dark over there. Brian, uh, Ryan, Ryan, excuse me, looks like he's like fifteen. Yeah, he does. He's twenty one though. <laughs> twenty one. Holy shit. You got a baby face. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, it's even worse when you get beat up by a kid that looks like he's fifteen, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and when's that fight? Uh, October eighth, right? Yeah, oh, he just okay. got so an opponent yesterday. Time. Yeah. So wow. That's, that's so he's 2-0, oh, you said? 1-0. Oh, he'll be 2-0. Oh. One, yeah. Right, right. 3-0 yeah, like no amateur. All finishes, yep. Wow. So you, wait, you're uh, you're 31. So you're 10 years older than him. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Big gap between you guys. Yeah, it's like I'm like his second dad or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's always with me. Did always he always want to be uh, an yeah, MMA once I found Once I found this when I was 15 years old, 14 years old, he was four. He right. found it, and he was just... Him and my other brother were just tagging team and tagging he's along, four. watching. watching. Yeah. He started training when he was five years old. Wow. 21 now. He's Yeah, it's crazy. Um, UFC 70. <laughs> 70, is that a... 70, 70, 70. That's not Anderson Silva versus... Come on! Uh, <laughs> you can't claim to be an encyclopedia and I know UFC 70. 70, give me a... 75? 75 sounds more familiar. That's not an Anderson Silva one? No. Oh, man. I, I, I knew backstage, I was, I was like, fuck, he's going to ask me. Gonna... <laughs> shit. I'm like, shit, here we go. Anderson uh, did fight around there. He fought uh, 77. That was a looter fight? No. The looter oh, fight was man. before that. You need to stop sparring. Yeah, I Jimmy do. So, yeah. <laughs> Luter fight was 68, 68. Okay, All right. when Luter missed weight. Yes, yeah, I remember that. I, yeah, now I'm I, I, again. I told you, I was from 62, I think, all the way up to like 120. That was the Bisping versus Zach yeah, yeah, yeah. fight. I was, I was able to name but all. This of them. is right in your prime. Yeah, I know. I'm saying I'm. I fucking was like, oh, I gotta let go of this shit. I gotta stop. 70 <laughs> was uh, Gabriel Gonzaga and, and uh, Mirko don't say Prokop. it. Don't say it. I, see, I, I wanted to forget that one. Cause you were, I was a diehard Krokov fan, yeah. diehard. I remember I couldn't, I could barely go to sleep that night. Really? I was, that, I was that devastated when he <laughs> got knocked out. I was like, you gotta be kidding. It was me. an afternoon card, remember? It was a it tape was... delay. Yeah, yeah, Somebody yeah. Somebody yeah. messaged me like, Krokov got head kicked, knocked out. How the hell did that happen? And I was like, he obviously means the other way around. He, right. like, he knocked yeah, the guy yeah, out yeah, with yeah. the head kick. And then it happened. I was like, <laughs> yeah, like a diehard. Remember his like, ankle? Yeah, it was, his knee was twisted around. Yeah, oh, terrible. And then 75 was Henderson Rampage. Remember it was Pi Champ versus UFC Champ. Well, what was, uh, 80, what was uh, Silva versus uh, Henderson? 82. Yeah, right. I knew it was 82. Pride of a champion. Yeah, yeah I that's what they call it. Where was it? That, that I'm you not, you're not good with that? Not as good with that one. Really? Not as good with Columbus. that Columbus. Ohio, all right. Yeah. yeah, they used to always do like uh, the march around the Arnold yeah, yeah, Classic. Yeah, yeah, Arnold Classic, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. He met Uriah Faber. <laughs> At the Arnold Classic? Yeah, Arnold Classic, yeah. Yeah, oh man, so okay. Because I remember the first time we did this, you were nailing him. I was a little bit better. I mean, yeah. You put me on the spot now. I knew what to expect. It's like, oh, fuck, here we go. 92? 94 is easy. 94 is easy? Why? Because it's in another country? No, it, was a hu it wasn't. It was in Vegas. 94 is a huge one. Oh, uh, um, GSP? Against? He fought on USC 100 against Tiago Alves, so GSP fought Kashek. No! <laughs> Come on! You put me on the spot. Yeah. Huge one. BJ. Oh, BJ. Oh, it was the best. That, that countdown show was Prime the time. best. That was phenomenal. I time. worked on it. That was phenomenal. Yeah. That was phenomenal. That was the first one? The first, first one. Yeah. That was, that? that was goosebumps. Yo, I have a crazy story about that. So I um, I was working for a website called MMARated.com and then it shut down and then I couldn't find a job in MMA media. So this is January, 2009, right? Okay, yeah. That's when the fight happened. And so did you, did you see um, The Last Dance? Michael no, Jordan and all that. I know, but I you know, know of it, right? Yeah, yeah. Man, you got to watch it. It's yeah. incredible. I You're know. not a sports fan? I'm not. I'm not. Really? I'm, I'm an MMA fan. I'm a combat sports fan. I'm not, I'm not like Michael Jordan, like... Can't uh, find any. No, uh, I know you're a Knicks fan, but no. Yeah, all right, can't fine. Stand. You're not a Knicks fan. New I'm, not, I'm not a fan. Nothing. It's not a yeah. <laughs> Yankees. Not Yankees. No. Bro you're from the Bronx. I know. How far do you live from the stadium? I, I used to live ten minutes. I went to a game. I actually went to a, a perfect game 
back in like 96 or something like that. I got like a baseball. Who was it? it? David Cohn? I could not tell David you. David Wells? Asked my, text, okay. text my dad and asked him. Wow. I had the baseball from it. Like it said, perfect game. It was supposed to be a big deal. I was like. Yeah. That is a big freaking yeah, deal. Yeah, I didn't even know what that even, I didn't even know what that meant. I just wow. learned what that meant like last year. All right. Well, anyway, <laughs> um, the producer of The Last Dance, who's a really big deal, produced those the, prime okay, times. Those, so it was high quality. The, his name was Jason Hare. Or his name high is. Quality. And uh, he was my friend. I knew him because I worked at HBO with him. And he's like, hey, you're an MMA fan. I just got this gig from the UFC. Come help us. So my job for that, so it was like they did, uh, I think it was three or four episodes leading up to the fight. My job was to just, um, it was, what was it called? Like you um, log. I had to log every second of the BJ Penn training footage. Oh, God. Meaning like at minute 103, yeah, he yeah. throws, so that when they're editing it, they could go, oh, we need a, a head kick from BJ in training, it, it'll pop up, right? So that was my job. BJ didn't train. Oh, shit. So like I got to watch an MMA fighter's training camp yeah. and there was like no footage of him training. Now, when I say he didn't train, he would show up, he would do this, but I was like, this is crazy. Like, he's not oh, doing that anything. That was a huge fight too. Yeah, and he was like going for like a light jog. Cause, cause the thing was, he was fighting at 70. Yeah. Remember? So he didn't have to lose weight. He, he didn't have thought. to lose weight. So I remember thinking, I, I didn't like gamble or anything. Like, this is 2009. Yeah, yeah. You know, what the hell do I know? So the first episode airs and he looks like crap in the episodes. Then he says, I'm not coming back. You're not allowed to film anymore because he was so mad. Dana had to call him. And was, so I got to see like all this stuff go on. By the time we got to the fight, I, and of course, like I love George, Montreal yeah, yeah. guy. I was like, oh, he's going to smoke him. Yeah. And then we saw what happened. And he did. Yeah. That's it was, crazy. Just, it was that... fascinating to watch. Like my whole purpose was to just watch his training. He did nothing. <laughs> he did nothing. Uh, you were in Hawaii for that too? No, no. I was just, they would bring the tapes to New York. Oh, okay. And all I was right, in right. like an edit room okay. watching him. Yeah. And I was like, wow, this dude's not doing, he's going for like a light jog. That's crazy. I, to, I, I, to train for the fight. That, that would make me nervous going into a fight. Do we not, not like not, that's why I always bust my ass in the gym so I don't get as nervous. That, right. If I didn't, no stone unturned, like I need to. Have you ever like taken one off? I've, I've definitely done some stupid stuff back when I was an amateur. I remember a stupid story. I, I don't even know if I want to tell this story. No, <laughs> just, I, I had a kickboxing fight and I just, I just had a, I just had an MMA fight. I just won. Uh, my, it was my first TKO. I won a belt. And then, uh, I had to do a kickboxing fight like three weeks later. I was like, oh, guys, I don't want to do this. I just fought. I just cut weight. I'm going to cut weight again. I was like, I don't want to do this. My coach was like, do it because it's your first kickboxing fight. You're just going to get, get you more confidence with, with your hands. I'm like, I just really don't want to do this right now. And again, this is the dumbest thing. I'll never, ever, I, I look back at this like I would slap the shit out of myself. Like my brother ever did this, I would slap him. <laughs> I went to Seaside on Thursday. Uh -oh. uh, fights on Saturday. And uh, we get to Seaside. It's me and my cousin and a couple of other friends. And um, like X-Pac was there. No way. Remember X-Pac, yeah, right? Of course. Yeah, and like the Jersey Shore crew was there. And then my cousin's like, yo, this is crazy, X-Pac. And, and X-Pac's like throwing shots. He's like, X-Pac wants to get, do a shot with you. I was like, yeah, let's do it. And I'm like, all right. I ended up getting drunk like two days before the oh, fight. Oh, no. And then just woke up. I, I stick to my diet. But then I woke up on Saturday, like or on Friday, I was like, that was so stupid. Oh my God, I'm freaking about to fight. I'm about to fight tomorrow. I was like, I'm stressing out, stressing out. And Saturday comes, I go, I make the weight, suck to my diet. So I was happy about that. I only drank like vodka, it was like no okay. calories. Then I go into the fight and I was like, <laughs> fuck, here we go, man. I was like, all right. But you know what? I train with guys that are better than this guy. So, you know, even if I did that, I should be, I should be good. I ended up knocking the guy out in a minute and a half. Come on. And I was like, whoo, that's the bullet. I'm never really? doing that again. All right. Thank you, God. I'm, I learned my lesson. No, I'm not, I'm never doing that again. Wait, maybe there's a case to be made. No, 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 no. I'm not doing the no. John Jones thing where I'm not doing that. Exactly. No, 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 no. I'm not doing that. <laughs> that <laughs> no. story actually reminded me of Jones walking to the cage for the first Gustafson fight. <laughs> yeah. what, what number? Uh, <laughs> 165. Anyway. Uh, and he said to himself, I'm about to lose for the first time because he was partying that whole week in Toronto. He drove like an hour and a half yeah. away from Toronto to go party with people, told himself he was going to lose. Dude, I would be stressing out. There's too, way too many people watching you. That's not, hey, I, can, I can't imagine doing that. Man, you must have been freaking that, out. I, I, that in my head, out. I was like, fuck, man. Oh. No, but when you knocked him out, it must have been yeah, awesome. I was, I was hyped. I was, <laughs> hyped. I was so hyped. I was so hyped. I was like, let's go. Learn my lesson. Never do that How again. How many though. kickboxing fights did you have? I only had two. I only had two, okay. two amateur kickboxing you didn't, fights. You didn't like it? No, I, I liked it. But it was just to get me to more, be more comfortable with my hands. So my coaches wanted me to do a bunch of jiu-jitsu matches. I did a bunch of those, uh. do some kickboxing fights, and then do MMA to get, to get uh, everything comfortable. So you're not just okay. a one-dimensional fighter. You know what I mean? And still the same gym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same coach that yeah. when you walked in as a teenager? When I was 15 years old, I started at the at, at, at one of the smaller ones, Tiger Shulman's. Okay. We ended up going to the headquarters, which is where all the fighters go. So right. I see him still. My, he's actually, my, my first instructor is my daughter's instructor now. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Sensei Montez. So, no but he, he's not in your corner when you're fighting now. Not anymore. Now no, you're no. Yeah. You know, pro. Yeah. That is crazy. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Wow. And now here you are. Full circle. Yeah. About to be a multimillionaire yeah. because of fighting. Yeah. By the time this deal is done. By yeah. the time the first year is done? Yeah. Damn. Yeah, yeah. Because I obviously plan on winning too. So of yeah. course, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and so, okay, so we're 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 still deciding forty five or fifty five. 
first fight likely Probably at 45, 45. Yeah, yeah. yeah don't know against who no don't know where uh no, i'm not sure no yeah uh, and then next year will be five fights, right? Because it will be yeah, the two out of season fights, or what do you call? I don't remember what you call them. Uh, uh, I think regular season. Yeah, regular season. Then the, then, then the tournament, the yeah. playoffs, yeah. and then yes. uh, the finale. Yep. Uh, they've got their forty-five uh, semifinals this weekend. You're going to be on vacation. You're celebrating. Yeah. <laughs> where are you going? You want to tell us? Uh, nothing crazy. I'm okay. just going to Seaside, Lava Lake. Oh, you're not going that yeah, far. Lava Lake. I just went to Miami, where okay. I Fort Lauderdale, and then my wife, her whole family's going out to Lava Lake. They do it every year, so going out there for a couple. Are you going to celebrate this? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm not a big drinker or anything like that. Well, just, so, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, big I mean, dinner. Eat some food. Yeah, I'm all about that. I'm a yeah. foodie. That's why I hate. This is a great lives. story, man. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Like, I, it's, I, it's like a. I mean, no, I, I talk ad nauseum about fight or pay, fight or pay, fight or pay, <laughs> and just like to see you guys have options and you know be able to get what you're worth because we all know how small this window is, right? Now you're in your prime. You're on a winning streak now, back on track. And you're getting this huge yeah. deal. Like it's it's a beautiful thing. It is. It is 100. percent Like. I, and it ends so quickly. Like, look at Rory. Yeah. I feel like three yeah. years ago, we were talking about him as yes. the next yeah. big thing. Not to, to crap on him. Not like at all, yeah. 17 yeah. years in the game is an incredible run. Look at Dom. These are the moments that you have to capitalize on. I'm happy you, exactly. I'm happy you didn't say, like, oh, I want to be a UFC fighter. I'm going to take... Uh, you know, a quarter <laughs> less just to tell people. Because you know there's dudes that do yeah, that. 100%. I, I did do that the first time. Right. And, and I, I don't regret it. Like, I really don't regret it. I fucking love being in the UFC. I love everything about the UFC. Like I said, I can't say that enough. But I just, again, I need to look my kids in the face and be like, when, I, when this is said and done, it was worth it. Their college is paid off. I'm happy. I still have money in the bank. I have my, my fallback plan. I have investments from here, from this and that. So that's that's where my mind was. That's where my mindset well, I appreciate you coming in to do this. Uh, before before we go, yeah, UFC please. UFC 100. Uh, what oh. was it, what was the swing bout on that card? Wow, we're gonna do this. Yeah. Uh, what was the swing bout? You know what the swing bout is? Yeah, of course. Okay, but it didn't come on after. Yeah, it did. It came on after. It did after Brock and Mir. After Brock and Mir. It wasn't Paulo Tiago, was it? Versus who? John Fitch. Ah, damn. come on. <laughs> all right, all right. I mean, I, that was a hard one. So I yeah. was like, all right. Oh, my God. All right, good job, good job. Wow. Good job. <laughs> hey, you know what's my favorite swing bout story of all time? Which one? Uh, UFC. <laughs> this is, who else could I have this conversation with? Uh, UF, UFC 73. There, there was a swing bout on that one? Oh, yeah. It's the greatest swing bout story of all time. And it was at, at, it was on pay-per-view. It got televised? Yeah. Do you know what UFC 73 was? Uh, is it a heavyweight fight? So it was called Stacked. Oh, yes, I do know. Noguera fought, uh, I, I thought, uh, Noguera yes. fought um, Heath Herring. Heath Herring, but uh, what was Sean the main? Sean Shirk versus Jeremy Franca. That's right. Uh, what was the main? What was the main? Give me a weight class. Middleweight. You mentioned the dude. Anderson. Yeah. Anderson and, uh, not Rich Franklin, um, not Luter, obviously. What did you say? <laughs> Mark Hart. Oh yes, yeah, Marquardt. I do remember that one. Yes. So, but but so this is the story. Also, um, I remember a swing bout though. Uh, Rashad Tito on that yeah, card yeah, fought draw, to a draw. Right? Yeah. yeah. Yep. So I had a birthday party and I told my brothers, my friends, like, you got to watch this UFC thing. It's so great. So we all go to a bar to watch it. It was the shittiest card of all time. It was stacked. <laughs> yeah. right? It was like, yeah. so they ran out of time because of the draw. All the fights went the distance. Yeah. So the swing bout fight was, and it was in Sacramento Arco Arena. Kenny Florian, Alvin Robinson. Kenny walks out with the freaking uh, Bruce the Lee kimono, yellow. Kimono thing? Yeah. Oh, okay. And then he smokes him in like a minute and a half, and that's when he gets on the mic. He says, who wants to see fights finished at oh, 155? Yes, 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 it was great. And then he, so it was like, oh, finally someone gets a finish right yeah. at the end when as everyone's, it was one of my favorite post-fight promos. And they made that on the pay-per-view too? They put them, yeah, they put I it after uh, Anderson yeah. and Nate. It was supposed to be way earlier, but they ran out of time, so they yeah. put them on the back end. They don't really do that anymore. No, they haven't done that. I think that. they Thank just God. extend the yeah. window. Thank God. I've, I've been a swing bout back before the UFC, and I never want to be a swing bout ever again. Because they keep changing Because you don't know when you're going to fight. Should I warm up now, or should I warm up in two hours from now? Like, right. you gotta, Did you ever have one where you were ready to go, and they're like, not No, thank up? God. No, they, they said you're going to be the fourth fight or the 14th fight, and I was like... Oh, my God, that's so horrible. I was like, and I warmed up to be the fourth fight. I was like, I'm fighting, guys. I, I don't care, and I ended up fighting, so it worked I'd be out. crapping my pants. Yeah, it was that, I mean, that, that's that, like that. a difference of like three hours. It was stupid. No, that was stupid, yeah. Wow. Well, you don't have to deal with that. Anymore. I don't. Yeah. You're a main eventer. Yeah. Yeah. You're a headliner. You're a multimillionaire. Congratulations, man. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate so it. So happy for you. Thank you. Well done. And thanks for doing it. This was fun. Yeah, it was. Yeah, we got to do this again. I like some heavier, I'm sure your phone is blowing up yeah, right it now. Is, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you can feel it? <laughs> I can feel it. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay, awesome. <laughs> Shane, you're the man. Thank, Thank you, you so much. You. Ryan, good luck to you, my man. You. We'll talk to you soon. Congrats to you guys. There he is, Shane Burgos, the newest member of the PFL roster. He He's having trouble with the door, though.
He's a PFL millionaire, but he can't open the door. There he is. The newest member of the PFL roster walks into this studio and announces the news. Wow. This is a beautiful moment in the history of this program. How about that, Joe? Huh? One year anniversary of the show. What are the show? Oh, I got to put my, um, I forgot about my headphone. Wait, can I hear myself, Frank? Frank, I can't it's hear myself. Oh, I'm back. Oh, I see a great tweet here from the uh, the P PFL social media does a great job. Shout out to Diego and the whole crew over there. They did the uh, fighter remove, fighter added thing. I mean, that's fun. That's fun stuff. How about that, guys? Huh? Uh, GC, you there? Yeah, I got you. What are the streets saying? About Burgos? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you heard, but we just had massive news in the history of the program. I know, a lot going back. What do you think I was asking about? Control room, man. Your lunch? Control room. Your burrito that you got yesterday? Bodega burrito? Yeah, bodega burrito was great. Shane, I mean, amazing. Are the uh, streets talking? I mean, people are definitely talking about it on Twitter. Yeah, absolutely. Are we getting uh, credit? Uh, some some people are, some people are I see aren't. another tweet here from PFL, not even credit. Yeah, didn't even mention it. I mean, they waited on it, but didn't even mention it. Edit was great, though. I'm happy for Shane, dude. I mean... What a great guy. Get the money. GDP. You know what that stands for? Get that paper. Huh. Come on, man. I thought it was going to be the actual, you know. The, G the gross yeah. domestic yeah. product? Yep. Something like that. How about Shane? By the way, uh, how about the fact that uh, this stayed a secret? Right? Hey, he did good. Really did broke good. the news. I mean, a lot of people. No one guessed it. Someone in the chat guessed that. It was Burgos coming on to either Come on. or BFL. Really? Yeah. Did we get the new badges? Oh, yeah. New badges, new emotions. New badges are up? People are trying them out. It's People are great. trying them out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can try them out, too. How do I try it out? Oh, I see I see uh, my face. Yeah. What else? How Go do you down, do it? Hit the, hit the smiley at the bottom. Hit the smiley. Yeah, I'm going to give myself an old Barry H for this one. Oh! oh. Wait. How do you do it? I am chat. I don't need, Back in your life. Bang. Oh, look at that. You and me. Look at us. <laughs> this is amazing. What a day. Uh, thank you very much to Shane Burgos for stopping by. Thanks to uh, his guy, Malky, for uh, setting that up. And congratulations to them. Uh, great to see fighters getting paid. Much love, much respect. Now, we talked to one fighter who is departing the UFC, and we go to a fighter who is on the verge of entering the UFC. Everyone was going crazy about the news that Bo Nickel won his contender series fight and didn't get a contract. How dare they disrespect him? I was all fired up. And then we find out on Saturday, he's fighting again on September 27th. Let's talk to Bo Nickel, who is the star of his very own show, the Bo Nickel contender series. Here he is joining us via the magic of zoom. Hello, Bo. How are you? I'm doing awesome. Ariel. How's it going? I'm doing great. Thank you for joining us. Look at you. You're in uh Happy Valley right now, right? I see the Penn State. Oh, yeah. I'm in the wrestling room right now. So I'm uh, we're just mid-workout, but uh, obviously Jeez. I had to make time for my man, Ariel. Yes, my good friend. We're boys. I appreciate it, Bo. Uh, could you describe what the last week has been like for you since your fight last Tuesday? Oh, it's been pretty good. I uh, flew home and just hung out with some family and stuff and obviously had a lot of people reaching out and whatnot, but it's been cool. It's been good. And I mean... Fine again here soon, so straight back into, into training. You, you've you been on big stages. You have fought the creme de la creme. You're no stranger to high-stakes competition. But considering this, you know, a lot of people watching, Dana's there, the brass is there, a lot of buzz surrounding your first fight under the banner and all that, what, what did it feel like in the locker room in the days before this fight last week in Las Vegas? Oh, you can definitely tell, you know, it's a big, a big fight, a lot of buds and whatnot. Um, but like you said, you know, I've, I've been there before I've, I've done this a million times. So, you know, definitely, um, the opportunity was on my mind. Um, obviously, you know, getting to perform uh, under those lights and that stage is, is a big opportunity. And, but for me, you know, I know at the end of the day, the bigger the opportunity, the better I'm going to compete. So, um, there was a lot of hectic stuff going on before the fight. Uh, I missed my flight from, uh, huh. Pennsylvania did. So I had to stay the night in New York. And then, uh, there was like all kinds of crazy stuff with trying to get, uh, like 
EKGs and whatnot. I had to do post weigh-ins. So like, it was just wild, but I, uh, just because I've had COVID before, so they make you do an EKG, but they'd scheduled it after my weigh-in. So doing all that, but I'm a professional. So whatever comes my way, I'll, I'll handle it accordingly. You were in New York. I thought we were friends. You could have stopped by the studio. We could have hung out. I know I would have, it was like really crazy. So I was supposed to, um, catch a connecting flight in Newark and I went from my flight got canceled in Newark. So we we're trying to figure out what to do. And they flew me out of JFK like 6am the next morning. So I was just like running around trying to get my weight down, trying to get a workout in. And then I flew out like super early and I was, I checked the bag too. So I was like trying to get my bag. I had like oh, no. all my stuff in it. So it was wild, but, uh, yeah, we, we handled it. All right. And, and, uh, I mean, let's shoot straight here. I mean, did you, you weren't surprised by any of this, right? I mean, you have a deal with the UFC, right? I'm, I'm, you know, I was one and oh, I'm two and oh now. So, you know, I don't really care so much about getting the contract. It wasn't really like a big concern for me. Um, after, after that fight, I expected to fight again on contenders. So here we are, got an opponent, got to fight on contenders again, and I'm going to smash this dude and then be a UFC fighter. Anything about that fight surprise you or are you expecting to roll through your opponent relatively quickly? You know, it's kind of funny. I, I kind of expect literally exactly how it happened. I thought he was going to try to like jump and do like a switch kick or something weird and, you know, get off his base, have his feet close together. I was going to double leg him and then either uh, ground and pound him or submit him. So it pretty much went exactly as I expected it to. Um, very little resistance, but yeah, that, uh, you know, a little, a little disappointing, but also it just, you know, gives me a little confidence in where I'm at. 61 seconds. How could anything about that be disappointing? I, I guess when I look at my performances, like, you know, I, it's almost, that was like such a given, such an expectation from myself that it's like, you do it. I train hard for six weeks. I put so much attention into my camp and my training. And then I just it happens like that. It's like almost a little bit of a letdown because it's not like exciting. You know, it's not like a, it wasn't like that crazy to me. It was just what I expected business as usual. So, yeah, I mean, that's the disappointing part. But the good part is uh, obviously came out of there unscathed, didn't take any damage. And I get to fight again right away. Uh, I mentioned on the night that I couldn't believe that every promotion under the sun didn't try to, you know, snag you before you got to contenders right back in the day we've seen deals with like aaron pico before he ever even had an amateur fight or anything like that in your mind was this all your decision in the sense that like you just wanted to go to the ufc so you didn't want to listen to anything else or did people try to come after you before you know after that debut that incredible win icon before you jump over to contender series yeah well, people have been wanting to sign me you know for since I announced I was going into MMA and, uh, you know, after a, I had a couple of amateur fights, you know, m more organizations were reaching out and I had serious talks with a few, but, um, it was just, it's always been in my heart that, you know, I need to compete in the UFC. And, you know, that's obviously, if you want to be the pound for pound, number one fighter in the world, that's where you need to compete. So for me, it was almost, um, formalities, you know, I had to have the conversations with other organizations, but I knew where I wanted to go. I knew where my heart was. So you at least listen to them? Yeah, yeah, we talked. Yeah, okay. was, I, I felt like it would have been dumb for me to not, you know, at okay. least I engage agree. in conversation. So right. we had conversations and stuff, and um, they they were throwing big numbers out there. A lot of these promotions, but the, I don't fight for the money. Like at the end of the day, if I wanted to make money, I would I would have been a finance major in college, and I would probably be running a Fortune five hundred company or something. So you know, I, I'm I'm fighting because I love it because. This is what I'm passionate about. And uh, yeah, that that's it. But there is some, you know, element of wanting to make money, right? Like it is prize fighting at the end of the day. Oh, of course. I mean, like I, I definitely want to, you know, make money, but I leave that to uh, my management, to uh, First Round and Malky. And, you know, they, they take care of that end. And, you know, for me, I'm, I'm aware of my value. I know what I bring to an organization, what I bring to a company, and I'll be paid accordingly. I know that and I'm confident in my team. So that's just something I don't worry about. Um, the money is really secondary to, you know, the other things that, that I mentioned. And, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to be getting paid for sure. <laughs> so can I tell you my issue with the whole thing last week? My issue wasn't that you're coming back for another fight. I actually think it makes sense. It's good for the brand. You're fighting on a Tuesday in, uh, you know, late September. There's not much else going on, whatever, whatever. 
I didn't like the way they positioned the whole thing. Why couldn't they have come out, as I said on the show last week, and been like, this guy's once in a lifetime. We've never seen a talent like this before. This is the greatest talent to ever come through these doors at the Apex Contender Series. And I love him so much. Of course he's a UFC fight. Of course we're going to sign. I love him so much. He's coming back for one more because we're going to end this season off with a bat. Instead, we got the whole charade of like, hmm, maybe he should get one more fight and, you know, slow your roll. And eh, why, why are we doing this? I felt like we were demoting you rather than pr promoting you. Do you understand what I'm saying? That was my issue with it all. Oh yeah, I understand. And I mean, I agree with you. I think at the end of the day, I take care of what I need to take care of. Um, I take care of putting on a show and, and performing to the best of my capabilities. Um, I didn't know how they were going to handle it. That wasn't really like discussed with me at all um, prior, but yeah, I mean, I, I knew I wanted another contender series fight. And so I'm not really worried about all that as far as like promoting me. Like I think my performance speaks for itself and it's kind of funny to hear some of these, uh, you know, big wig veteran guys like talk about me and stuff. And I'm like, yo, what are we chatting about here? Like, <laughs> it, I guess if you have to say stuff about me, like, and you have to go negative with it, that's, that's fine. But I don't really, I don't get it either. So it is what it is. Who are we talking about? Rockhold, Bisping? Who are we talking about? Well, yeah, of course. Rockhold, Bisping, Anthony Smith, these dudes all chatting about me. I'm like, yo, I'm a 26-year-old 2-0 pro, and you guys are veterans of the sport. One of you is retired. If you want to chat about me and tell me to slow my roll, like, I just don't really know if that if you're in the place to do that. So is what it is. But, I mean, at the end of the day, I think I didn't really read the whole quote or listen to every single thing that those guys had to say, so I'm not going to sit here and dissect it. But... I think the media kind of maybe portrayed it a little worse than what it actually was. Like, I'm sure those guys aren't really super hating on me, but no, I don't from the headlines, it would seem like it. So, but I don't, I don't really take it personal, but it, it's all, it's all good publicity. Did you watch the broadcast afterwards? Um, I didn't really listen. No, I didn't, I didn't watch. I didn't listen to it. You didn't go back and watch your fight. I watched the fight, but I didn't, you didn't listen the, to like, the stuff afterwards. Really? No, no, I didn't listen to any of it. Okay, that that was the part. I mean, the other guys that were just saying, and I actually think Bisping's words were kind of taken out of context a little bit uh, and made to be worse. I just, I just wish they would have been more transparent about the whole thing. Like, we know you're not going anywhere. I see people saying, "Hey, Scott Coker should call up uh, Bo Nickel right now." And come on, man, UFC ain't putting you on this platform to let someone else to like. Come on, what are we, what are we talking about here? Yeah, yeah, I, I think you're you're pretty spot on um with that assessment but <laughs> yeah i mean it's all good <laughs> hey they promoted you big time i will say this on the saturday broadcast did you see that i mean they don't usually make a big deal out of uh, contender series fights like that so i'll give them that yeah yeah i was like obviously again not expecting that so i was watching the fights and stuff <laughs> i was with uh my family and they just dc said something and they put me up there and i'm like oh that's cool like that's really really kind of crazy um to see them do that but yeah i feel i feel really confident with the ufc and i think they're you know behind me they're gonna push me they're gonna um you know help me in the ways that they uh can and at the end of the day i'll take care of my end and i'll put on amazing performances and smash guys so i think it's a good partnership uh long-term one that's got to be surreal. You're just sitting there on your couch watching and all of a sudden dc and these guys are talking about you like you had no idea that was popping up no idea, no idea about any of it. And just popped up. They chat about me and my, my, uh, I was with my in-laws and they, they, um, aren't like, I wouldn't say they're like super fight fans. They're like, they know I fight. Obviously they understand like what's going on, but they were just like, what the heck? And I'm like, uh, yeah, I guess I'm big time now. Yeah. No, nah, I'm playing. Get but used yeah, to it was it. just funny. Yeah. Get right. Used to it, <laughs> I guess. Things are about to change around <laughs> here. Um, now this opponent that you're fighting seven and one. Is this a legit seven and one or are we going to be like a minus 5,000 in this fight? Well, just cause he's a legit seven and one doesn't mean I'm not going to be a minus 5,000. <laughs> uh, come on, come on. Let's get real here. You, again, I, I feel like I'll be minus five. Like let, 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 let me ask you a question. You put me against a top 10 guy in the UFC right now. Where are the odds? Yeah. I mean, okay. Okay. Let's, yeah. let's see who's, I just want to see who's top exactly top 10. With all due respect, a middleweight in the UFC. So number 10 is Andre Muniz. Number nine is Darren Till. I mean, could you imagine Bo Nickel, Darren Till? Fight lasts, what, 65 seconds? What? Did, I mean, <laughs> with all due respect, Darren, I mean, come on. 
<laughs> Maybe not even. Yeah. I mean, seriously, what am I opening in, at that, in that fight? So, I mean, let's just, that's just the facts. <laughs> there is a, uh, I mean, like you look at the guys in the bottom half of the top 10, Gaslam, Uriah Hall just retired. There's a, Brad Tavares is getting up there in age. Do you feel right now you go into the UFC and you could beat the guys in the top 10? Yeah, I feel that for sure. I mean, I think that a lot of people, the, the number one critique I hear is, oh, he doesn't fall anybody, this and that. Like, cool. Like, I'm 2-0. and I've trained for one year, and I know what I can do. I know the guys that I get to work with at American Top Team are absolutely world class. And, uh, you know, I'm, I feel confident in my abilities. And nobody, there's never been a collegiate wrestler with accolades that I have transition into the UFC at my age, you know, with my upside. So that being said, I don't really see like anybody really stopping me from doing what I want to them, like at the end of the day. And, uh, I'll respect the process and I want to continue to build and get experience and make sure that I'm when the moment comes that I'm ready to go. So, um, and, and I'll let my manager and, you know, the UFC handle that as far as, you know, who I'm fighting, but, I know what I can do. And if you put me against any of those guys right now, I don't think it's going to be, you know, too much fun for them. Just based off your wrestling alone, how far can that take you? Obviously you have to turn into a well-rounded fighter, striking all that stuff, but just based off your extremely high level wrestling alone, how far can you go with that? I don't think there's a really a limit. I don't think there's like a, a ceiling, you know, at this point, um, Nobody, especially at middleweight, it's not like I got a bunch of NCAA All-American wrestlers in there that are going to be able to stuff my takedowns. Like, what's a guy supposed to do? I've trained my whole life to take people down. Like, a guy that's never done that before, never felt anybody like me. How are they supposed to stop me? Like, they're going to train for eight weeks and wrestle, and that's going to catch them up with where I'm at? Like, no, there's no, like, logical progression of how they're going to stop me from doing what I want to them. So, you know, I think at the end of the day, like, if I want to do that to a guy, it doesn't matter who they are. I'll do it to him. This is a bit of a silly question, but I feel like I have to ask it anyway because we're talking about this. How do you think you do against Israel Adesanya right now? Oh, I would love that fight. That's like a dream matchup for me. I would be, obviously, with all due respect, you know, he's one of the greatest middleweights of all time, um, great champion. Um, but I think people say this a lot, like styles make fights, so... With that being said, I feel confident in that matchup. I feel very good about it, and I would love to have that fight at some point in the future. That would be literally a dream for me. And you say in the future, but right now you would take the fight. Right now you would be confident in that fight as a 2-0 and fight. I would be absolutely confident, absolutely confident in that fight. Yeah, that's a, that's a fight to me. Again, like I said, styles make fights, and uh, I, would be ex I would be extremely happy with that matchup right now. It's so funny because I hear you saying this and I know that you believe this. And then I hear them on the broadcast being like, oh, he needs one more fight in the contender series. Like, what are we to come on, guys? What are we? <laughs> this guy's talking about. I mean, if you just listen to one of your interviews. Crazy world out there. Yeah. I, I just it, it's so funny, like transitioning into MMA because people are like people say say stuff that they really don't understand. Like they don't understand what I do every day. They don't they don't go back and watch the film see what i'm capable of they don't see me training every day they don't see how i'm progressing like they just go totally emotional based on the fact that they've never seen something like this before and that's what they that's how they judge it it's all emotion it's all you know thinking like this is impossible this and that dude like you've never seen me work i've been doing this since i was six literally 20 years of prepping for this like and just because it's not on ESPN and you haven't seen me do it doesn't mean the work's not already there. It doesn't mean that my resume doesn't speak for itself. And so, you know, I think that people get emotional about that because they've just never seen it and it just seems impossible to them. But to me, it's like, I've already, I'm ready for it. Did you talk to Dana behind the scenes after the show, after your fight? I chatted with him briefly. Um, you know, he was super positive. He said he, was you know obviously incredibly excited about the fight and how it went. He gave me a bottle of his whiskey and uh, which I didn't I didn't drink. I don't I don't drink, but um, I thought that was a nice little little token of appreciation. It was cool and and he said uh, and I said uh, I'm ready next I'm ready next week if you want me in there so I can just stay out here in Vegas. But you know plan was for end of September, so we're we're in there end of September. 
Did you know about the end of September fight before this fight? So it wasn't obviously like booked or official or anything, but in my mind, that was kind of the plan was to fight again in September, come out of there unscathed and uh, get right back into training and move forward with that. So, yeah. And you're okay with that quick turnaround? Like I said, I would I would be I, I would be okay fighting tomorrow. So I didn't even I I've haven't even been hit like in a real fight. I know obviously in training and stuff. I know you asked me this the very our very first interview. <laughs> have, can you take the punch? Have you been hit? Yes, I've been hit in training. I trained with a collegiate national champ in box, boxing with seventy amateur MMA or excuse me seventy amateur boxing matches. So yeah, I, I get punched. But uh, yeah, so far um, I'm super healthy so i'm ready for the quick turnaround and uh yeah september's the date and by the way i reiterate i wasn't asking that to offend you it's because i know i know there are some, it's a legitimate question but also like that was the knock on brock that he didn't like to get hit i didn't yeah. mean like could you take a punch it's just like the feeling right. of getting hit isn't something that you have to do as a wrestler right i know you're getting beat up but it's not like a punch straight to the face i i completely agree with you and i think that a lot of wrestlers don't transition to mma for that exact reason like they don't they're, they're scared of that and so i always tell people like if they're a wrestler and they want to get into mma i'm like well then go tr start training like start fighting see how you do get it get experience in the in the practice room and see how you like it because you can't just like go out there and do it that's why i took two amateur fights you know um just because it's it is different and so anybody that's like a wrestler that wants to do MMA, I'm like, all right, come train. We got it. We got a gym out here. Let's go. And, uh, you know, I think that obviously a lot of wrestlers would have a lot of success, but it's also, it's some, some people are just not for them. Uh, I spoke to Malky, your manager, Malky Kawa of FRM last week, and he said something that has stuck with me since he said that you are going to be everything that John Jones was supposed to be. Now, obviously, he used to be John Jones' manager. He was by his side for the vast majority of his career. And John had an incredible career, one of the greatest of all time. When you heard that comment, because I think I uh, tagged you in it, so I'm pretty sure you at least heard the quote or saw the quote. Uh, what did you think? Yeah, um, you know, that's, that's uh, you know, to be even talked about in the same conversation in, in an MMA sense as John is, you know, that's really... Uh, makes me I feel I feel honored to be even talked about like that you know by a guy who's obviously super close with both of us I think that when he said that it obviously wasn't anything against John's MMA accolades I mean he's done everything you can do he's you know has one disqualification loss I guess but aside from that dominated so many amazing fighters and you know to me probably is the number one pound for pound guy, uh, the, the greatest of all time, you know, if you look at his resume. And so to be talked about with a guy like that first off is, you know, really cool. And I think that it's more in a sense of like John and I, I, I've never had a conversation with John, but I think he would probably say this too. Like he shot himself in his foot. Like it wasn't like anybody else did it to him. And I know for me, like, I'm not going to do that. Like uh, he obviously had his, his trials that were, I would say a lot more outside the cage versus inside the cage. And I think with me, I have just as high of a ceiling as far as what I can accomplish in MMA. You know, I see myself being an undefeated, undisputed champion, defending my belt many, many times with tons and tons of finishes and all different types of techniques that just like him. And I, I just know that, you know, for him, he had his troubles outside the cage and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna have those same, those same troubles and issues just with how I live my life. So with that being said, um, I think that Malky was referring to me in a capacity where we have that same potential as far as what we can do. And, you know, there's just a lot more opportunity for me with, you know, I'm not going to be shooting myself in the foot and getting myself in trouble the way that he was. But I career wise, as far as in the cage, I see us having, you know, similar trajectories, similar careers. Uh, just a couple more things and then I'll let you get back to your training. You keep mentioning, I notice. You want to be pound for pound king, number one, right? You mentioned that above anything else before becoming a UFC fighter, before a champion. Why is that so important to you? I just think that's the, you know the that's the absolute pinnacle of the sport, and I wouldn't be anything I do. I'm I'm here to reach the pinnacle. I'm here to do what. There's only one guy that can do that, and I, at the end of the day, you know, there is a lot of opinion in pound for pound, but I feel like 
it was the same thing for me when I got into college. My goal wasn't to be an NCAA champion. It was to be the Hodge Trophy winner and to be the absolute best guy in collegiate wrestling. And so um, that's just kind of my mindset And when it comes to anything is I want to do what nobody else can do, the, the hardest possible thing. And, um, yeah, there, there's going to be impen- opinions involved, but I look to make it so clear cut that I am the pound for pound number one fighter in the world that every single person will agree with that. There might be maybe, uh, you know, a guy's mom or something like that might say, no, son, you're, you're the number one, but everybody else will know for sure that it's me. And so you fight on September 27th, all goes according to plan, uh, minus 5,000, whatever it is. Uh, do you think you'll get one more in this year? Do you, do you, do you feel like you'll be able to squeeze one in? Is that the goal? Is that the plan? Yeah. Yeah. I'm here to fight. So I want to fight as much as possible. Um, I would like to fight again. I'm looking at December. There's a big card in December. Yes. And, uh, I, you know, I, I love those, those big arenas, big environments actually. Uh, so I got my eye on that. Um, but again, I feel like you were about to say something. Do you, I I feel like you already have that fight. You're about to say something right now, actually. And then you pivoted. If I want it, I think that, you know, I obviously I'm, I, I was, what I'm saying is I, I need to take care of business 27th. You know, I'm a professional, so I don't put the cart in front of the horse and I'm going to take care of business. I'm going to smash this dude and uh, get him out of there quick. I'm going to be unscathed again. And then um, if I want the fight in December, then you know, hopefully we'll make it happen. And I, I feel like if I want that fight, then uh, the UFC will, will do what we need to do to make it work. I like the way you phrase that. If I want the fight in December, we can have it. Bo Nichols contender series, man, I like it. That's, that's, that's what's drawing people to you. You've got this confident, but like, you're not a dick about it, but you're extremely, it's a weird, sometimes people are confident, they're brash, but they come across the wrong way. You do it in such a mild mannered way that it's likable. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, I think, you know, I think that I'm not really stepping out of my lane too much when I say these things. And, uh, you know, some people step out of their lane and, then they, you know, they go so wild with it that it's doesn't, it's not realistic, but I think everybody knows when I say these things, they're like, it doesn't matter how crazy it is. They're like in the back, even if they're the biggest hater on me, they're back of their head. They're thinking, damn, he might do that. Like, I don't know. But in the people that are, you know, followers of me that love me, they're like, he's doing it for sure. So even it doesn't matter if you like me or not, you know, in the back of your head that what I'm saying that even if you really don't want it to happen, you know, it's a possibility. And so I think that's kind of where it comes from. And I think in addition to that, the way I live my life, like every single day, putting everything I have into this, that I, I back it up, you know, not only with my performances, but with my, my lifestyle choices each and every day, it's different than what you see in, in typical MMA out of a lot of MMA fighters. Like I'm just not doing those things. Again, I'm a real professional. I'm a college graduate. I spent five years training with the number one program, uh, NCAA wrestling program ever. And so, you know, I have all these life experiences that have brought me to this point. And I think people kind of, even if they don't know that already, like they sense it. Last question. Uh, by the time it's all said and done, who has the better MMA career? You or another guy who had a big week, collegiate wrestler transitioning to MMA, Pat Downey? <laughs> oh man, I love Pat. I love Pat. He's the best. He's so, uh, he's great. But, you know, if, if, if I could play it all out perfectly, you know, I go 30, you know, undefeated, all finishes in the UFC. He does the same thing in Bellator. So I'm rooting for all the fight or all the wrestlers transition to fighters. Um, and, uh, you know, I wish nothing but wins for Pat Downey. And, uh, I think that Bellator is a good place for him. The UFC is a great place for me. So it all kind of adds up and makes sense. All right. Good answer. Uh, congrats on the big win, Bo. Thank you so much. Good luck, September 27th. And, uh, I, you know, just remember we have your back over here. All right. They may not say it, they may not promote you, but we're, we're fighting the good fight for you over here. All right. I appreciate you, Ariel. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks, Bo. All the best. There he is. Bo nickel. Remember that name by now. You obviously know who that is. Huge win for him last week. He returns. Uh, they announced it. And I will say this, you know, I went on the rant, uh, last week and I talked about how I didn't like the way they positioned him, the way they spoke about him the way they quote unquote demoted him. I will say this on the broadcast on Saturday, I I do think that they promoted him nicely. They made uh, him out and his fight on September 27th to, uh, to feel like a big deal. You know what I mean? Like it it felt like, all right, we don't usually get 
these kinds of announcements when you know someone is fighting on Contender Series. I mean, they hardly even mention it on the Saturday night broadcast. You'll get maybe a mention here or there, all that stuff, but you don't get like a whole highlight package. And uh, you know, Bisping's breaking it down, and DC's talking about him. Name of his opponent, by the way, on September 27th is Donovan, the highlight reel beard, seven and one. Has won his last two in a row. CFFC product. Has been fighting since late 2020. So a little more experience than his last opponent, who was three and one. Three and oh going into this fight, three and one now. What a day. And we're not even close to done. So, so far, what we have accomplished in the last uh, 90 or so minutes, let me see, can I do another badge? We're, we're doing a badge uh, thing on YouTube right now, YouTube chat. Oh, I got my face here. Let me see. Oh, yeah. You could do my face. Oh, you have an, so you could do a, a Westphalia. Wow. You could do that. Shout out to GC who set this all up. You could do a Westphalia. You could do an Oh My. How fun is this, guys? And of course, we're giving you guys this kind of love, even though you made me make a mistake in our parlay draft. All of you. All of you who told me to pick O'Day Osborne, you should be banned from the, the chat. What's this train here? What is that? Is that the Barry? Oh, it's a Barry H. Wow. And then what's this? Back in your life. Fun. And then what's this? 10-7. Wow. Look at GC. I mean, that's fun. That is fun. All right. Still to come. Lots of show left. Back into the program. Leon Rocky Edwards. Five days away. Oh, Leon Rocky Edwards. Rocky Leon Edwards. The pride of Birmingham. Not Birmingham. Like you casuals like to say, Birmingham, England, the pride of Birmingham, finally getting his opportunity to fight for the belt. Big rematch of a fight that happened in 2015 and hardly anyone was watching when they were fighting in Orlando on the prelims. Uh, he will join us at 4.30. At 4 o'clock, Big Cheeto Vera, the pride of Ecuador, who had the massive win over uh, when Dominic Cruz this past Saturday at the San Diego Sports Arena. It will always be the San Diego Sports Arena to me. And um, did I screw up? Oh, I screwed up, huh? I screwed up, guys. What happened? Ugh, I screwed up. When I, ah, oh, God. We were doing so much at the beginning of the show and we had to change Nate's time. Uh huh. I was trying to to change from uh, Central to Eastern, and I and I told them the wrong time. Got it. This is why I shouldn't be doing this a minute before the show. Yeah, so there's a chance he's not going to show up or will be late, and that's kind of on me. Well, there's an actual reason why we have to change it. Should we mention that? No, nah, I won't mention that. Um, God dang. Let's uh, go into beds. No. Oh, I thought you were going to say let's go to sleep. No. No. I thought you were say, let's go to bed. Um, no, Cheeto Vera is going to join us at, uh, God, how unprofessional. I've had to change the time now twice. Four o'clock and Demetrius Johnson at three o'clock. Mighty Mouse, who returns to action. What are they calling this? They're calling it one on Amazon, one? What are they calling this? One, where is it? I'm trying to find it here. It's September 27th. Why do I go on the Wikipedia? I need to go on uh, Tapology. Where's Tapology? There it is. One on Amazon. Oh, one. See, good thing I looked it up. One on Prime Video One. One on Prime Video One, Marais versus Johnson 2. Adriana Marais, who defeated Demetrius Johnson to win 
the, well, they call it bantamweight over there. It's a weird thing. Is it the flyweight title or the bantamweight title? They fight at 35, but I feel like they call it the flyweight. I don't know what's going on. Uh, one second. One on Prime Video One. It's going down August the 26th here in the U.S., August 27th in Singapore. Singapore Indoor Stadium uh, over there in Singapore. And it's one of many... Yeah, I think uh, actually, oh no, they've got a Muay Thai bantamweight title fight. Sorry, I'm texting with uh, Nate the train right now. I screwed up. I, I mean, like I'm embarrassed. I want to crawl under this uh, this table right now. I mean, I've never been so embarrassed. He's gonna jump on right now. Thanks, Ariel. What? For taking care of that. Live on the show. This yeah. Is great. That's how we do it. Hmm. What a win for Nate the Train. So that's still to come. Demetrius Johnson, plus we'll check in with the guys. And Frank, who's just, I hear is just, you know, puffing his chest. Oh, there it is. Yes. By the way, Frank, when I got it wrong, and I think the second one, was the second one GC or was the second one Eric? Yeah, the second one was me. Lupita. Yeah. Right. Oh, what a that shocking Shocking result. I mean, yeah, much didn't, love and respect to didn't Angela wrestle. Hill. Didn't wrestle. Thought didn't use the wrestling. Wrestle. But, and by the way, this goes to show that, you know, getting four in a row, right, on a night, even if one is a minus 800 and one is a minus three, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's still tough. I've said it every single week we've done this. Hitting a four-leg parlay is not easy. What I'm wondering is, once you got it right, excuse me, wrong, and I got it wrong. And then we were down to two, New York Rick and, and Frank. Was Frank rooting that New York Rick gets it wrong? So that he For sure. Be, There's no doubt. He right? takes me on the side. That's, you did, not, uh, that's not how it rolled. Come by on. the way, I wouldn't hate you. He was like, Ketchewara is about to, about to get this dub. I'm going to hit the over two and a half easy. I can't lie. When Cheeto dropped Dom in the third round, I, I thought we were going to... That it was going to be like at the three-minute mark, right? Yeah, I thought we were going to go all 0-4. Which, honestly, get the losses out now because we're bouncing back this week on 278. I know. You feel that way? I was kind of looking at it a little bit. And I was like, oh. 278, man. PFL. There's a lot. Can I do... Uh, no, nah, she opened at minus 3,000. Who? <laughs> I thought you were Kayla? going to ask if you could do Kayla Damn. Harrison. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it. Um, I don't like this rule, by the way. Again, we've just established how hard it is to go 4-0. Nope. We're, we're keeping the limit. and uh... But I could do... Can I do... Uh, I could do PFL. Can I do bare knuckle? Probably not. Yeah. It's a combat sport. That's what we said. But uh, we do have Nate Landway here. Oh, we do? Nate okay. the Train. Oh, Nate the Train. What a story this is. Had this incredible fight. Seemed like he almost lost in the first. And I'm... I mean... I'm embarrassed. I want to do this interview under the table. First time Nate the Train is on the program, and I've, I mean, I have fumbled this big time. Let's say hello to Nate here because uh, I've screwed up the times that I've given him twice, which I don't usually do. Uh, just juggling a lot here. Nate, I'm so sorry, my friend. This is on me. Okay, if you were here, I wish you could slap me in the face, by the way, because this is on me. I have screwed this up. Incredibly unprofessional on my part. Oh, it's all good, man. You famous. It's, we're going to let you slide. Nate, you're Even the man. You, didn't want, you weren't going to let me on here anyways if I got beat up. Well, I mean, out of respect, why, why would I? I try to, <laughs> I don't want someone to come on. I know on you to, doubted me, man. You didn't want to get me on here, but I'm on here. Wow. Anyway. What, Brian Butler talking smack about me? 
Yeah, Brian, let me know. Wow. Brian, me know. My man Brian, you know. <laughs> oh, wait a second. Let's let's break the fourth wall here. Brian asked me on Tuesday, hey, Nate on the show on Monday. I was like, well, let's see what happens in the fight. I mean, like, I don't know if the fight doesn't really go his way. I don't really think he's going to want to come on. Yeah. Right. That's all. I didn't, I didn't talk. I didn't talk. I hope he didn't say I, I disparaged nah, you. Or talk, but, nah, he just said, give you a hard time. I forgot to give you a hard time. Oh, please. You, listen, you can give me a hard time about that and screwing up the times here. So you're a pro, yeah, my yeah. man. Hey, congratulations on that win. What a freaking fight. Have you ever had that much fun fighting before? Yeah, man. I have a lot of fun fighting. Uh, all my fights in Russia were some badass fights. Uh, had some badass fights on the region scene, and uh, I'm glad to bring it up to the UFC. Um, first round, what are you thinking in that first round? Like, how close was the fight to ending? Man, shitty clock, man. I don't remember that. I was <laughs> in my mind, I was in it. You know what I mean? <laughs> you don't remember anything from it? No, nah, I remember. I mean, he caught me with a good one. All, all you can do is keep going. What's it going to do? Say, Mama, I can't go. Right. <laughs> what about going into the second round? What was your corner telling you to get you back on track? Uh, man, they knew the deal. I got the heart of a champ, and everybody that's around me know that it ain't no stopping me unless I get stopped. You got that dog in you. Yeah, everybody got to see it. Man, you had to be there live to really get the whole pleasure. I know, I know. There's a, there was one point, I don't know if it was on TV or not, but I started stomping on the uh, two stomps, one clap, bro. <laughs> I don't know if it was in between second round or third round, but I did two stomps, one clap a couple times. And yo, the whole crowd started to stop, one clap, doom, doom, doom. It was live. It was pretty tight. I fought in front of bigger crowds before, but it felt big. Right. Because it was packed. Yeah. Uh, everyone was behind you. It was a crazy fight. The second round was crazy. Were you surprised that he even survived the second round? No, nah, man, it was half my fault, too, though. I should have tried. I mean, I was having a good time. It was a great fight. I think uh, everything played out well. Well, Going into the third, what I thought was really interesting about it was, I, have you rewatched the fight? Yeah, I watched it. I mean, the guy was like falling over going into the third in between rounds. Like they were trying to hold him up. James Krause was asking him, do you still want to go? Do you still want to go? I thought they should have stopped it then. After seeing that, what did you think? Well, I think the dude's tough. He's a tough young guy, man. I knew he was going to be tough coming into it and, uh, I was just there, man, ready to put on a show, and that's what we did. Do you think, in retrospect, you could have finished him in the third? Like, did you did you let him hang around? Yeah, a I mean, bit? I could. I, mean, I could have finished him a couple times, but that's in the past. On to the next, right? Why? Why did you? Why did you let him hang around? I think any time I could, I probably could have started doing rapid fire for like ten seconds straight, and the ref would have called it. Right. So why? Why? Why didn't you finish him? In hindsight, I probably shouldn't have let his ass up that last time. He yeah. clocked my ass. <laughs> yes. That's what I was doing. When I was getting out the hospital, I was like, in hindsight, now 2020, looking back, I uh, <laughs> could have went ahead and just hit him with that. Da -da 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 -da. And the ref probably would have stopped it. But no, nah, I think I got more notoriety doing it how it went. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it was incredible. And you did have to go to the hospital afterwards. Everything okay? Yeah, we, we, we both went to the hospital. It was one of the things they wanted... Uh, protocol to do since we was in there banging it so no, no breaks yeah, no nothing everything's good. everything's good no breaks no nah, everything's fine okay. i mean i'm a little bit beat up a little bit that's okay. why i got these glasses on man i would wear i would wear those shiners with pride you put on a show yeah no nah, i just want to look cool though, you do you know? look cool you do look cool respect uh and uh, did you see him at the hospital yeah yeah i see him at the hospital i was like i told you it was gonna bleed man you know what I mean? Well, you bleed it, didn't you? That's why I told him at the weigh-ins. At the weigh-in, I was like, you think you're the boogeyman, bro. Tomorrow, you're going to bleed. Damn. What did he say when you said that to him? Uh, he was stoic. He was sitting there. I think he was in, just there in the moment. Right. He's a real, he's a different kind of guy, man. He's like, he's a good kid, man. I think he likes to smile, but then he acts mean, but then he wants to smile. But it's, it's like, which one do you want to be? You know? Sure, sure. What kind of guy are you? I think I'm just mean, bro. I don't know. I think I'm mean with a great ass personality. And I say I could fight pretty good, but I could cut one hell of a promo. Fuck, man. That promo was tremendous. I mean, that promo yeah, on could... the microphone was incredible. Are you a pro wrestling fan? 
<laughs> I think everybody that was born in the uh, 80s was a pro wrestling fan. Who yeah, is your guy? I done got I done got power bomb more than once by my brother oh, for sure. Oh no. On on, on the yeah. concrete? No, nah, never. I ain't that fucked up. Man. You know how brothers are. <laughs> sure, sure. If you ain't ever been choke slammed or power bombed as a kid, was you really growing up? That's a good point. That's a good point. Uh, who is your guy? Man, I like Jamal. Man, Stone Cold, The Rock, Yeah, Undertaker, uh, Mankind, Mick Foley, all the all his personalities. Yes. Did you so want to be HBK with the kick? Oh my god, tremendous! What an era that was. Did you want to be a pro wrestler? I mean, I don't think I was ever big enough to be a pro wrestler. You need to be like 2, 210, 240, 260. Mm, there's some high flyers. Well, unless, you know? you, unless you can do the Hurricane Arana. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going to lie to you. One time when I was a kid, I tried to do the Hurricane Arana, and man, he fell on me and started beating me in the back of the head. Oh, uh, <laughs> man. Do you still watch it? I tried. No, nah, I don't watch it really no more, man. Yeah. After after they changed the name to WWE, I was like, man, it's the WWF. Oh, uh, you were out. So, that that pissed you off. You said, gone. I'm done. <laughs> I was gone. I was gone. Uh, why do they call you Nate the Train? Oh, man. It's kind of just came along like that, man. I'm the motherfucking train, baby. I don't go backwards. I go forward. Yeah. Run through motherfuckers. Shit like that. Let me cut this promo for my boy Scuba Tony for all your diving needs in the beautiful island of Cosmel, Mexico. Okay, go ahead. Hit up Scuba Tony. <laughs> hit up Scuba Tony. <laughs> okay, how do I hit him up? I mean, you just look him up, man. He's got some beautiful diving. They say it's the best diving second to the Great Barrier Reef, and it's right. It's like four hours away from me. So it's probably closer to you. It's right there by uh, Cancun, Mexico, right outside of it. Sure. Beautiful island. Although I'm in New York right now, so I feel like you're closer than I am. Oh, you're in New York. Oh, you're in New York, so it's probably going to take you at least eight hours. Yeah. Where'd you think I was? Oh, I don't know where you was. I thought you was in Cali, probably. Oh, no, man. I'm an East Coast guy. You know what I'm talking about? Okay. All right. Uh, I guess I did never know. <laughs> well, tell me about Clarksville, Tennessee. What kind of a place is it? Man, it's nice, man. It's real nice. We're about 40 minutes away from Nashville. It's kind of, it's not really small, but we're home to the, the biggest Air Force 101. It's a, um, it's basically the Army's Air Division, Airborne Rangers and shit like that. 101, shout out to them. Huge Army base, Fort Campbell. So we got a bunch of Army guys running around. Pretty much if, uh, Usually, if you graduate here, it's about an 80% chance you go into the military, so. Wow. Did you graduate? And uh, Yeah, I graduated barely. I was screwed up, but I graduated, went to college, ran track, and then dropped out of college like a fool, started tr trying to start a fight, and, and well, now I'm here. Do you regret dropping out? With my, I was messing with my mom the other day. If I was like, if I knew now what I knew, if I knew then what I knew now, I'd have dropped out of middle school and started training. Oh, just no. Be a, just to be a fighter. I was like, that's all you got to do. Win these fights. So you don't Get regret dropping training. out? No, nah, I do. I wish I would have finished. You could go back. Yeah, I'm going to go back. I'm going to finish it one day. I'm gonna, if I'm going to start, I'm going to finish. I plan on finishing. And, and what about the military? Why didn't you go down that path? Actually, man, I was real close to going down that path, but it just didn't work out for me. I had this little situation come up. Okay. Which situation? Uh, just some little situation. Okay, you don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a little, it's just a little situation. All right. Is everything okay with it now? Oh, yeah, it's all good. Everything's good. Okay, respect, respect. Um, you know, because you mentioned like everyone, 80% of the people who, go, who graduate from high school go there. So I was curious if you ever were close to going there too. Yeah, I've always been trying to cut my own trail, my own path. I'm a little different. Yeah. And and why did you choose MMA? Man, honestly, I, after college, I was just going for a jog one day, seeing this gym, walked in, and I had my first fight that weekend. So Come on. I kind of just kind of just chose me, I think. I mean, I always played sports growing up. Never felt really at home, but as soon as I fought, bro, I felt at home. It's at home. Wait a second. You you didn't train? You Like, you had no background in martial arts? And you just walked in, then you had to fight that weekend? 
That weekend, and I pulled 20 fights in two years as an amateur. Wow. So you knew right away this and was I, it. Man, as soon as you, it's like in your blood or it ain't in your blood. I've always liked to entertain. And I was, you know, I was watching that movie, The Gladiator, the other day, and I was like, damn, that shit real. You win the crowd. You win your freedom. I was like, damn, I'll win the crowd because I'll win this motherfucking crowd, boy. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I that's what it feel like in there you know but when I was doing my little pre-fight interview I was like uh, it was like how is the crowd going to affect you I was like I'm going to be good but then I realized real quick I act real stupid when there's a big crowd around I forgot oh. it's been so long yeah it has it's been so long since we've had a crowd last time I had a big crowd like that was when we, I was fighting in Russia and man it's a something special Speaking of which, I mean, you're from uh, Clarksville, Tennessee. The vast majority of your career for a good portion, you're fighting in Pennsylvania, Tennessee. Then all of a sudden, you go to M1, and we're talking about Moscow, Nazran, uh, Astana. You're in Kazakhstan. You're in all... What was that like for you? Good old American boy over there. A wonderful experience. Could you imagine an uh, American dude like me that had been watching Rocky his whole life get a call, you going to Moscow to fight into the Olympic Stadium against the Russians. Shit, it was like a, they wrote that shit up. And it was like, you starring in the movie, baby. So you over there and you traveling around, they give you the tour that we seen the Kremlin. When I was fighting with, uh, I thought we fought in Ingushetia, the Republic of Ingushetia. I met the president of that little territory sitting at the table with him, chopping it up. I mean, it was the greatest experience of my life. Sometimes I wish I would have made it to the UFC quicker, but my journey is, like, special to me. Did they treat you well there? Man, so well. Really? So well. They treat you so well. I don't know what it is about other countries and how much they respect and honor and power and strength and bravery, but they accept fighters immediately. More so than this country? Way more so than this really? country. Way more so. What makes Most you? Other why do you feel that way? I don't know. That's just when I travel. That's the the vibe I get. Most people they like they think fat. They think America is fat people, weak people. You know what I mean? And you go over there like, oh, you. Most people, of other countries, you got to be strong. Still, you got to still be strong. You got to go out there and get it. Uh, and and you felt comfortable there. No issues, right? They treated you. Oh, comfortable. They loved me, man. Yeah. Unless they already had, I say they loved me unless they already had a guy. If they had a favorite fighter, they didn't love me. But if they didn't have a favorite fighter, I was their new favorite fighter. Prior to going out there, had you ever left the U.S.? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I traveled around. My wife and I, we like to travel. We do this little thing where each of us will pick a, uh, we'll pick three places, write it on a piece of paper, throw that shit in a hat, and we'll draw it out of it. That's where we go. Come on. Just like that? Yeah, just like that. Like, what kind of places have you gone as a result of this game? Been to, been to, yeah, we've been to Ireland. We, we've been to Jamaica. Wow. This shit like that, Mexico. That's how we That's how we found out Cosmel and shit. We, picked, we went on a cruise and found it. Wow, you guys are really living it up. Man, we tried. Man, I figured we ain't never going to get to go everywhere, so I kind of let fate decide a little bit. Do you have kids? No, uh, not yet. I got my beautiful wife right here, though. Oh, hello. I'm sorry. You must be cursing me out. I'm sorry. I ruined your whole day. Keep changing the time. I mean, no, it's all good. Nah, I'm just, it's all good. We and, just out chilling. And then Butler throws me under the bus. I mean, that's not cool. Butler, he likes you. Just help me give you a hard time. That's fine. Say you're a fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, all right. So now, I mean, all of a sudden, you must be getting a ton of love, right? Since Saturday, has life changed? Is it getting overwhelming? Man, you know, I was telling the guys at the fighter, like the fighter interview, I was like, you know, I'm kind of more famous in Russia than here, but it's, <laughs> they catch it now. I needed, I needed one good fight, and that was the good fight that I needed, because, I mean, I can fight my ass off, but I think I'm a good, 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 maybe even a great entertainer. Oh, my God, you're amazing. I mean, the promo afterwards, after a fight like that, I could understand why you would have nothing left in you. You say, my mama didn't raise no bitch, all this stuff. I mean, it was amazing. <laughs> Crowd pop. Yeah. DC yeah, was loving it. Was, the, crowd, the crowd was amazing. I mean, the crowd, the crowd's something special, man. The way they cut the arena off halfway and then they packed the rest of it, it felt it felt big. Plus, we was the co-main event. 
it was crazy. It was a crazy storybook kind of thing because it was like I was supposed to fight the week before the, on the sixth against another guy. He couldn't get a visa. Oh, Nama stepped up. We got moved to the 13th. The girls' fight got canceled. That was the co-main event. They moved us into that slot. And then I fuck around and put that fight on at that moment with a packed crowd. Come on now. Who wrote this? Yeah. Also, you were going to go and fight at the Apex on the 6th. Now you get to fight in front of Apex. Him. No. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. No more Apex, right? I mean, a, a personality like you, an entertainer like you, it's a crime to put you in the Apex, if you ask me. Yeah, it's a crime. That's what I've been trying to tell these guys. You know? Enough. We got to put you out there in front of the world, in front of the public. You're fighting in front of five people <laughs> at the Apex. Like, Mark, how Mark Waterberg said, I'm a peacock. Yes. You got to... I'm a peacock, man. You gotta let me spread my wings in this. I can't imagine what it's like living with you. 24-7 yes, entertainment? 24-7 <laughs> entertainment. <laughs> Never a dull day. She always gets she always gets better because the fact she look at me, I'm just giggling to myself because I'm over entertaining myself and shit. You're just you're cutting promos to yourself. Cutting promos. I used to run a lot, so I used to be able to cut. I can't run no more. I got a fucked up calf, but what happened? I guess it's from, I don't know, man. I just ran too much, brother. I used to run like 10 miles a day. Wow. A day? For days. I'm talking about I got a hoodie that probably got 3,000 miles in the bitch. I used to run. That's what I did in college. I ran track and okay. shit. Cross country track, man. I used to be able to run. I ran the half mile in a minute 54. Whoa. Damn. Minute 54. Minute 54. And still was getting my ass whooped by the elite. There's that's, that's some fast dudes out there. I think that's why I'm good at it. the MMA cardio shit because the, the half mile is pretty similar. Where's your last name from? Landwehr. It's a very interesting name. Where's that? Where's the uh, the history behind that? It's up German. I've never got a, a little test, but I, what I've been told is up German descent. German descent. Okay. Have you ever been to Germany? I looked it up. It kind of mean like a small army. Some would say like a one man army. Wow. You know I mean? That is good right there. <laughs> that is, I yeah, mean, man. the way you just spun like that. A one man army, you know what I mean? And you know, the name Nathan is a gift. So, yeah, my name is the gift of a one man army. I'm just saying. That's right. In, in Hebrew, I believe it's a gift, right? Exactly. So, my full name is straight up a gift of a one man army. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, are you a little... a just call me Mr. Landwehr from now on after that shit yeah, just call me are you religious yeah What? what which religion do you follow uh, I just believe in God I'm undenominational my wife is Catholic though okay Respect. so we're about to start our we're about to start our children journey we're about to start having these kids so we've been talking a lot I'm gonna start going to church with her to the Catholic Church and see if I like it. Okay. How many how many kids are you hoping for? Well, I was thinking we need at least three: one to replace me, one to replace her, and one to give to the earth. Well, I've never heard that before. I never heard anyone say yeah, that. Because they say, you know, I heard Elon Musk talking about there's not gonna be enough people. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's, I was like, damn, Elon. <laughs> It's not gonna be enough people. <laughs> so it's like, so if two people have one kid, right? You miss out on you. You lose a person. Sure. You know what I mean? But so you gotta have three kids per couple to gain a person. That's what That's like, I never looked at it that way. Thank God I have That's three. Like, damn, like, That's what they say. So we're about to start trying this right now. We've been trying for a year. It's been a little tough on us. We're gonna have to go through this shit called. What's it called, man? IVF. Okay. Yeah, we gotta do IVF. We're gonna we got our first round of IVF coming up. I guess this one in eight. Every one in eight women have trouble fertility wise, and men have trouble fertility wise. And we've been going through our little journey. And uh, if anybody else is going through this journey, don't feel bad. It's just nature, guys. Uh, keep on plucking. Yeah. Well said. Uh, just a couple more things I wanted to ask you about before I let you go. You know, you talk about. I, I love the fact that you recognize that. You need to have a personality. You need to be entertaining. You need to cut to promos. Do you think a lot of fighters fail in that department? Like they just think, oh, I'm going to go. Yeah, out a lot there. of people are trash. They're trash. You can't give them the mic. They free. Uh, 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 uh. Right. Shit. Yeah, a lot of people suck. And then a lot of people, a lot of good fighters don't speak good English. So it's, it's hard for them to cut a promo. 
Cause then when they get the when they get the microphone, they'll be like they'll say a bunch of shit. But I learned over there in Russia, you gotta chop it up. When you gotta, uh, if you got somebody translating for you, you gotta be like that that that. Like you be like that that that. You uh, gotta be like that that that. That is smart. If you be like that 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 that, and then you give them the microphone, and be like, oh shit, I don't know what he said. He said a bunch of shit. Right, right, right. Yes, you gotta almost dance with the translator and give him like a nice yeah, little package. You be, yeah. And- that's, it. Who, who's... That's what I love about being over there in M1. It got me ready for the plane, the plane flights, and the translators, and the chauffeurs, and the lights, and the cameras, and the free fights, and the smoky rooms coming out with the all kind of cool shit. Uh, in your opinion, greatest of all time on the mic in MMA? I mean, there's been a couple of them. Chael Sonnen's always cold. Uh, I think that shit that Michael Chandler pulled the last time was cold. A couple of people have their moments. I think I might be the best, though. Who knows? You think so? We'll By see. the time it's we'll all see. said and done. Why not? We'll see. I, I think, you know, if you can cut a promo, you can cut a promo. Is there a better or worse? You see, it's like pass-fail, right? Do you, do you watch, like, pro wrestling stuff now just to give you inspiration? I couldn't even tell you who the famous guys are after The Rock. Man, no, like even nah, to go John Cena, John, I, I know John yeah. Cena. Who but else, you look man? at old stuff no. just to see. Oh god, like I'm gonna look at old. Like I can yeah, see you watching I mean, old school Ric Flair. I like to pull up some Ric Flair shit. There yeah, you... I like to pull up some. I'm a limousine rider, <laughs> can fly you. Woo! You know what I'm saying? I've, I could see it. I could see the inspiration. Now, what do we do to go on a run here? Right? We need to Especially go. Especially on... when I uh, had my long. I used to have long hair and shit. My hairline started fading back, so I cut it. Oh, okay. It looks great to me. You got a nice little fade there, nice and tight. Yeah, I cut it just right. Uh, now, we need to go on a run now, right? Like, that's the big thing. You can cut the promo, but you, you got to go on the run, right? You feel like you're... got to win. You got to win, baby. You got to win. Yeah. You feel like you're in a good spot? I feel like I'm in a good spot, man. I feel like I'm in a great spot. I feel like... I feel like every M1 champion that's come over has did well in the UFC. All of us have done well in the... I'm doing just as well as anybody and. uh I feel like I could beat a lot of the guys. They gave me nothing but tough guys. I love the tough guys. And it depends on who they want to give me. Can they give me somebody I could beat easy? Yeah, probably. They're going to give me somebody tough that's going to be another drag out fight like that. That would be a good one. It doesn't really matter. I could bang. I could been working on my grappling. I moved to the right place. MMA Masters got me doing well down there. Miami. All those guys. Yeah, Miami's nice and hot. So I think that's a big advantage. There's no winter time up here in the in the winter. It's cold. It's different training in the cold. You go down there, it's warm all the time. Mm-hmm. I'm in, try to stay in shape. Keep my been keeping my weight down. That's been the the biggest factor, I think. You don't have to worry about that cutting weight, all that weight afterwards. Yeah, weight just crazy. People have these bad 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 problems cutting weight, mm. and uh, I've been, I try to cut that shit out just by dieting. Patty Pimble said on Saturday, 200 pounds he was weighing. Guy fights at 55. Hats off to him, man. Hats off to him. Yeah. Well, Let it, him do that. He's going he to start dieting quickly, too, probably eventually. But, you know, he got it good, too, because they ain't going to pop up with no bullshit on him. They're going to give him some time. They'll probably be like, look, man, start getting ready. Right, right, right. I, I read that you said being in Miami is good because, like, you're, you're, you're pretty much by yourself, right? you got nothing to do there but train, right? Yeah, I like it. I like being seldom, I like being by myself in isolation. Give me time to think to myself. I'll be journaling. The main thing is I get to miss my wife. My, like I tell my coaches and shit, man, I got a nice-ass bed at the house. I ain't sleeping in that bitch, though. I'm sacrificing for this shit. Right. Respect. So cut a promo. Who's your next opponent? Who are we calling out? Man, I wouldn't mind Hurricane Shane. I wouldn't mind Billy Q. Billy Q on a two-fight losing streak, though. But I still think that would be a good one. But they could probably usually put people in the winners. I'm in the winning pool, so Hurricane Shane. They don't want to give me nobody top t- uh, top. But I think he's ranked. You mean though. Sh- Shane Burgos? Yeah, yeah her, Shane Yo, Burgos. He, he's he was on, he was on the show today. He just announced that he signed with PFL. 
Oh shit, well there you go. I ain't fighting his ass, man. <laughs> I definitely ain't fighting his ass, man. Uh well, that sucks. Uh with my running back, some of the fights I was supposed to have. Yeah. With uh the beer, so I was supposed to fight Zabir Tucker uh Tagu Tahugov. Zubaira. Tahugov, that'll be a banger, that'll be a good banger, I think. That'll be a good fan favorite. I think I'll get him out of there. Well, I mean, I think the Billy. I wouldn't mind touch. I wouldn't mind touching touchy Philly. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, that'd be a banger. I wouldn't mind taking the air out of uh, uh, Charles Jordan. Oh, now we're getting it. I like that. I like that. I like that. You Give me another I mean? one. Give me another one. But another. Who else? Who else? We got. Um, who else is up there? This cold. Um, wouldn't mind. Um, who else is a fight? Give me a. Give me one of these guys that's good. Uh, let me see. Let me see. I'm looking at the... I'm ch- but I like the puns that you were doing with the nicknames there. That was fun. Um, nicknames. I forgot about them, though. Who, who's another uh, one? Uh, Danny Gay? Danny Gay? Uh, I wouldn't mind taking 50K from oh, Danny Gay. You know look at this mean? guy. Look at this guy. I wouldn't mind. <laughs> who else we got up there? Uh, we got some guys. Zombie? Zombie? Fight. Zombie? Zombie, the zombie. I wouldn't mind going ahead and getting a head shot on zombie. Uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> Man, you're good on your feet. I mean, now I know. Now I recognize. Uh, Giga Chikaze, why not? I mean, you got to go for the guts, though. Yeah, I, would, he got, I don't even know his nick. I'll hit a ninja. He was the ninja shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was supposed to. I almost fought him, bro, a while ago, but I was I was coming off an uh, injury. One good time. And, he he ran real high too. They probably won't give me him, but that'd be a banging ass fight. He a tough motherfucker. I was watching that fight with him and uh Calvin Cater. Yeah. The other day. That was a good one. Right. Wouldn't mind fighting. I wouldn't mind fighting anybody, man. And you got the fifty K. Yeah, right? I got the fifty K. But I ain't any game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are you gonna do with the money? Put it in the bank? Be sensible? Man, we're gonna spend it on these trying to get these kids. Going okay. with that right. with that IVF, we put it on there. That's gonna cost twenty grand, and then um, just secure. Maybe one day buy another house. Look at you. Try to get another one. Eat the train, Clarksville's finest. Clarksville's finest. I like that Clarksville's finest. Clarksville, yeah. From Clarksville, Tennessee, Nate the yeah, train. Yeah, I try to yell it out. Man, I try to yell it out. I've been yelling that shit out since grade school. Incredible. What a fight. I'm in awe of what you guys did. It was beautiful. Uh, the the heart that you guys showed, the the grit, the determination, the will was just something else. It takes two, man. It takes two to throw a fight like that. It was a good one. But I mean, I think we know who took the show, the whole show. It was my show. I mean, I took the whole night. I feel like everybody talk about me. The UFC that post about five, six little posts for me. Yeah. Ain't nobody posted no posters for me before, but now it's all kind of posts. Look at you posted. now. I was trying to get you on before, and Brian's like, no, nah, you're too busy. You're too busy. And now, you see? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We got to talk to Brian. <laughs> That's yeah. right. That's right. Well, I'll let you do your thing, Nate. Uh, congratulations. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for coming on early. I appreciate you very much. And uh, hopefully this is the first of many. I enjoyed this very much. I hope you did as well. All right, cool. Yeah, it was fine. All right, cool, man. Peace out. All right. All right, holla. There he is, Nate the Train. Wow, what a character Nate the Train is. This guy's the man. Nate the Train Landwehr. Now, uh, 34, two in a row in the UFC, has a win over Darren Elkins as well. M1 uh, featherweight champ back in the day. And uh, a huge personality, a huge character. I'm looking forward to seeing his progression in the UFC. Now, I'm very excited about our next guest. I think it's been over four years since I've seen him in person. Let's not waste any time. Let's say hello to one of the greatest fighters in the history of mixed martial arts. Is he there? My man, Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson. Damn, it's hot in here, doc. Oh, that's <laughs> Check it out. Oh, How's it been, brother? How you been? What's up, Josh? How are you? Oh, it's so good to stuff. see you. We got a nice little thing. We sit down and take a look at all this stuff. What about that? I re- that's a good one. I remember this. This is Tom Anthony yeah. Pettis. That man was on fire that time. Yeah, the Wheaties box back in the day. Mm-hmm. Look at this. I mean, this is... This is this is the this is the unofficial MMA Hall of Fame, by the way. There isn't the real MMA Hall of Fame. Remember, I told you last time we talked, you should create I it. I should. Someone actually reached out to me. I told you. Make it nice. happen. Make it happen. Uh, what else uh, here? 
The U2s one, that's a nice one. What is this called? U2s. What is that? It's basically, um, I like to think of it as like, it's like a Funko Pop, but this one they uh -huh. do pretty much everything. They just, they just did Stranger Things, they've done Capcom, uh, they do plushies. Oh, wow. And so, they did one for you or you? They did one for me. I contacted them, yeah. And I was like, hey, we'll have to buy it out and get some made. So I think they're going to do a couple other ones. Last time I was talking, they were doing a new one for Shirk Sean O'Malley, but don't know where they're at with You're that. You're the first MMA fighter. I was the first MMA fighter for those and, guys. Uh, right here. Look at this. And now with the MMA bobblehead. Yep. Got to get along with the rest of them. By the way, I actually feel like this is one of their better ones. You think so? You don't like it? I love it. L look at the detail. Detail's first of good. all, it's like iconic. This yep. is your pose. Yep. And, uh, you know, sometimes. It's hard to, I think this is a really good one, Doug, as we go into the rabbit hole. The hor yeah, that one's a good one. He's a little bit more tan. I think he's a more pale, if you ask me, but that's yeah, just, right. this is me. <laughs> what about this? What about this one right here? This is not, this is like something sell. I don't know what the name of the company is. I'm screwing it up. Oh, really? I thought yeah. that was uh, MMA Bobblehead too, because I remember. No, no, no. Look oh, at this wow. one. Look at, look at that detail. Wow. You see he retired? They probably just, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. They probably just throwing blood in his face. When they're, I was like, just throw blood in his face like, uh, to get it right. But yeah, I saw he just. Retired. Okay, we team. have a lot to talk about. Um, you've been all over New York. In yeah. fact, you're late here. We have to change. Don't, everything. don't, 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 mean, don't, don't put that on me. No, okay? okay. Well, who are we putting it on? Josh. No, what do you mean? Josh <laughs> is the one taking you to all the spots. <laughs> I see you talking to everyone. He's taking me. Yeah. Well, I'm not driving. I'm, he's taking I'm me. I'm blaming you. I'm blaming this on the other media. Probably made you stick around too long. Okay, that's fine. We're we're having such a good time. We're having a ball, man. It was good. You're, you're feeling the love. Yeah, I'm feeling the love. Yeah. I, you know, when's the last time I think I saw you? When's that? The last time I think I saw you was L.A., mm -hmm. right? Cejudo fight. Yep, number two. Right? At the ESPN office, right? Yeah, well, I saw you at the media day. Yep. I don't think I saw you at the ESPN office. Do you remember the conversation? I do not. In the hallway? I do not. No. You don't remember the conversation? Mm -mm. I don't even know if we should be talking about it here, but it's been so long. You don't remember? Was it a good or bad conversation? Well, it it meant a lot to me, and it was a conversation that I'll never forget. Oh, like I said. Okay, well, basically, break the fourth wall. I had just left this show. Ah. Uh, do, you, do you remember now? No, I still don't remember. But I'm sure I had very encouraging words to you. Well, well, I was two months removed. I just started at ESPN. Mm -hmm. That was August of two, 2018. Mm -hmm. I left, I started there June of 2018, right? Yep. And uh, I was sitting with someone else uh, who was still at this site. And you were like, man, if I have to choose between one show or another on a Monday, I'm, I'm, going, I'm going with my guy, Ariel. Mm -hmm. And I was like, fuck, man, that meant a lot. Yeah. There's more to the conversation, but I don't know if you remember. Now, you're the champ. You're the pound for pound king. You're the man. You're the flyway champ. And you were telling everyone, like, I don't care what the name of the show is. I'm following my guy. Yep. And that meant a lot to me. Absolutely. Look where we're at now. I'm here. Look at us. And you got your own show. Look at us. And I'm back. Hey. Look at us though. Yeah, who would have thought? Who would have thought? But here we are back. But you know, it really did mean a lot to me that you said that. And I think that's the last time I saw you in person. Wow. Because then you ended up fighting. Yep. Didn't go your way. Mm -hmm. And then you went off the big trade, yep. all that stuff. Yes, sir. Um, and so let's actually start there because I saw recently you and Henry, you were hanging out with him. It's like a little bromance we had going on. And then you're texting him on the anniversary, <laughs> which was like two weeks ago or something. I didn't realize you guys were so close. Yeah, I mean... I mean, when I moved to Arizona, um, he came to the house. He already met the wife, met the boys. Wait, uh, you moved to Arizona? I have a house out there, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, Wait, we got a house out there. But you, Where are you full-time? Uh, Washington State. Okay. Full-time Washington State, but after COVID happened, how Washington State uh, dealt with it, Yeah. my wife, you know, she, tra we, she has friends in Arizona, and her mom lives there. And when COVID happened, Washington just shut down completely. Like, schools are out, masks, all that right, stuff. Right. My wife's hardcore. She was like, nah, I ain't got COVID. I don't need to be locked in a fucking house. Right. So she went down to Arizona to visit her friend. Arizona, she was like wide open, kids no masks. It was just completely wide open. She goes, babe, we need a house in Arizona. She goes, I'm tired of the, the rain. I'm tired of this damn overcast. I'm tired how basically Seattle was ran. And so we bought a house out there. Oh, wow. And when we bought a house out there, I knew Henry was out there. So I reached out to him. I was like, hey, dog. I was like, uh, I reached out to Roel Harris. And Roel Harris got us in contact. And he goes, oh, Demetrius, man, I didn't know that was you. I was kind of skeptical. <laughs> but I'm glad you reached out to me, man. I'd love to work together. And, uh, you know, <laughs> so. <laughs> so we started training together, and uh, it, it was awesome, man. I love everybody. You actually trained together? Oh, yeah. How come I've never seen this anywhere? You haven't seen it on his YouTube? I try to ignore his YouTube. Oh, why? See, the thing is, Henry, I don't want to give myself the old, you know, pat on the back, but, like, I kind of helped him along the way. Yeah. And then he stabbed me in the back. He did the exact opposite of what you did on that day. Really? I yeah. hope you fail, Ariel, you know? See, 
people have egos and stuff. I just want to see everybody eat. I want to see everybody succeed. Whether you you succeeding at my table or you succeeding at your own table, I want to see everybody succeed. So, um, shame on him. He should he should yeah. push you in the right direction. I got him. You know the Bella twins. Do you know mm-hmm. the Bella twins? I mean, yeah, yeah. he like. Oh, yeah. I got him in there. He's like hobnobbing with him. Then all of a sudden he stabs me in the back. Doesn't come on the show anymore. It's really because his manager won't let him come on. See, that's the thing, right? Why? Could you Why imagine? Not? Could you imagine your manager telling you not to come on here and you being like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I would say, no, I'm not. I'll go on there. I, you know. Yeah. My, you're a man. Yeah. My manager, he does, uh, Abe and uh, Maki, they do great stuff. They give me gigs. But for the most part, I get to say the final say so, what I get to do with my career. Right? And it might be the right thing, it might be the wrong thing. But sure. for me, if I feel good about it, if I feel comfortable, then I'm going to do it. I actually think I introduced you to Ava Malky via text. I, I, I remember meeting, uh, yes, you did. I remember when we were going through some uh, some turmoil with the right. UFC. So, yeah. But I remember meeting Malky in 2012, and it was after I won the championship. He, came, he goes, hey, my name is Malky, first of all, I manage uh, John Jones. I was like, mm, I don't fucking trust you. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, I didn't end up signing with him, but later in my career, I did. So Because you didn't have a manager, or was it just? It was, it was Matt. It was just Matt, yep. your coach. Just me and Matt, yep. And that worked for a period. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there comes, because we've had some guys recently say, like O'Malley recently said it. Some other guys like, I don't need a manager. Sometimes you, it's like, do you want to have an argument with the UFC? Right. Or, or with any with any promoter, whether it's PFL, LFA, One, one UFC, Bellator. It's, it, Bellator. It's, it, do you want to have the argument, right? And sometimes I don't want to have the argument. Sometimes uh, the managers will do that for you. So I remember there's times where I saw... Uh, Abe and Sean Shelby talked for three hours <laughs> just to get a, 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 a deal done. Right. Whether it was for me or somebody else, but I've heard stories like that. So some people don't want to do the, do that. So right now, like if you, 365, how many days are you spending in Arizona as opposed to Washington? Um, like your kids yeah. go to school where? Uh, Washington State. Oh, they do? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, that's just a vacation home. Got it. All so right. All I right. mean, right. if we were to move there, which my wife, she would love to move there, but we have all our friends and families. Yeah. Family and... Um, Washington, but if she could move there, we would need a bigger house, and I think she probably would, just because the system's different. Like, it's a grid system, there's no traffic. Like, the two weeks I was there, I never st- uh, stood in traffic, and I'm about 45 minutes away from the gym. Every time I go to uh, train in Kirkland, I'm in traffic every fucking day. Right. Every day. And isn't it like a two-hour commute or something crazy? Or it Yeah, it's back- an hour there. It's an hour and five minutes there, an hour. So like two, two hours, yeah. It's just the traffic there and the way the, the road system is built in Seattle. It just doesn't compare to it. And the beautiful thing I love about Arizona is that I see American flags everywhere. Like, I'm on the freeway, American flag, American flag, American flag. I just love that. What is that? Well, why does that? It's fucking patriotism. That's what it is. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you just want to see American flags. Just, they just say they're proud to be Americans, right, you know? Right, right. Like, in... In, in where I live, the only American flag are? I see, I'm sure they are, right? right? But they don't show it, right? right so okay. I don't know. It's just something about me when I'm driving, I see it. I'm like, that's what's up. Oh, shit, you told me not to hit my chest. No, but that's okay. I see it and I was like, that's what's up. Like, I, I love that. When I'm in, you know, where I live now, the only American flag I see is the one outside my front door. Right, so right. it's just, you know, just something that's in me. Makes you feel good. Yeah. Um, when you train with Henry, what is it like? I love it. It was awesome. Really? <laughs> Is Captain Eric there too? No, nah, his ass wasn't okay, there. Last time crazy. I saw him was when I was about to fight. When the the only memory I have of uh, Captain is when me and him were going to fight the first time, and he was like, "Man, you gonna beat him? You gonna get that Bugatti, baby? Uh, you gonna yeah, get yeah. that Bugatti?" <laughs> then when I beat him, I was like, "How's that Bugatti, huh?" You, uh, you still didn't get it. Uh, um, but I didn't see him. But training with Henry is good, man. Uh, Henry's legit. I mean, obviously he's achieved a lot of things in mixed martial arts that I didn't do. Right? I mean, beat me. Went not defend the belt, beat Dom, went not, well, beat, yeah, defended the belt against Dom, but beat Marlon and, you know, gold medalist, so triple C. And now he wants to come back and fight uh, Volk, which I think he can do. So I think me and him training together, we got to see kind of like our insights and see how different we are as athletes, but it was dope. And so will you keep doing that? Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, when, yeah. I'm, I already got my plane ticket booked for November, doing things coming out there and want to train again. And is this the first guy that you've ever fought that ended up yeah. training with? This is the first time I've ever trained at a different gym in my whole entire career. Wow. Like, I trained at uh, Shreem Couture for about a week, but like, you know, going here, sitting down, talking to Henry, kind of, you know, play sparring, you know, and just, you know, talking about certain situations and just our, our approach to the fight game, first time ever. No animosity. No animosity. No weirdness. Mm-hmm. Nothing. No. I mean, he beat you. Yeah. You didn't get it back. So, I don't know. 
You're yeah. a competitor. Yeah, I am. In a way, doesn't this fuel the the sort of uh, speculation that the loss was the greatest thing that ever happened to you? Sometimes I, I think that all the time, you know, because I think it's the greatest thing ever happened to me. It's the greatest thing ever happened to him. He yeah. went off to do amazing things. I went off to go off and compete in Asia, win a belt that I, you know, I've always wanted to win in my career, which is a World Grand Prix. Uh, growing up watching Pride and Dream and seeing, you know, that 16-man bracket and then finally a fight twice in one night and then they get that sick belt. So I was able to accomplish that in my career. And yeah, look at us now. Now we can train together. One on Prime Video One, I believe is the, is that the official name, Josh? That I get it. All right, I was wondering if it was that's a tongue twister. One, right? on <laughs> on one. one on Prime Video One, uh, you versus Marais Two. Yep. This loss was shocking mm -hmm. last year when you lost because we've never seen you lose like that. I mean, we've seen you lose to Dom and yep. whatnot, but it was like shocking to see you. And now you're getting to run it back. Was this something that you always knew was going to happen? Like, did they say to you at some point, you're, we're going to run this back? Obviously, it wasn't right away, but... Yeah, I knew I knew it would happen if I made my way back up the ladder again, right? Because I I figured after I lost to him, because there's other guys in in the division, Yuya Wakamatsu, Kairat Akhmatov, uh, those two guys were kind of on a win streak. And you know me, I'm always, I'm by the code, right? It's like, you lose, take your ass back down to the right. ladder, work your way back up, give the other guys opportunities to get a chance to fight for the belt. So after I lost to Adriano, uh, that was in my, in my mind, but then they came with me with uh, the super fight with Rotting. And I was like, sure, I'll do it. And after I fought Rotting, I thought I was gonna go back down the ladder and work my way back up to the title shot. But they're like, nope, I'm gonna give you a title shot. I was like, okay, sounds good. And you're ready for it? Yeah. Enough time has passed. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I mean, when you look at it, it's funny, cause like, I was talking to, um, Somebody, you know, like, dude, when you look at the fight, it was just that uppercut that got you. It wasn't like he was blowing the bricks off you, right? And so, you know, got caught with the uppercut, got blasted in the face with the knee, and got up, said good job, and went home. How many times have you watched it? Uh, probably five or six times, seven times, maybe. When's the most recent time you watched it? Oh, fuck. I think the last time. I think I was showing somebody and I was laughing about it. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Uh, laughing about the fact you got knocked out? Well, I was just laughing about it. I was like, look at that knee. Oh, uh, and even when I saw him, I was like, I said, hey, John, how could you hit me that hard with that knee? He goes, I'm sorry, bro. What do you want? Where did you say this? Oh, we're in Singapore together. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I was like, how could you be so like cool about this? Because it's a sport. It's a sport. It's a sport. It's it's how I make my money. It's my it's my livelihood. So. But though, didn't you like, you know, you were undefeated, you're this and that, you know, like knocked out, you were not knocked out, you know what I mean? Like that was a big so deal. I think, I think. The more time you spend in this sport, the more the, your chances are getting, they rise higher for you getting knocked out or anything like right. that, right? Like, you know, Habib got out unscathed, you know, 39 no? No. Or 29 no? 27. 27 or no? Right? No, no. 29, 29. 29 no. If Habib would have ki continued to keep on fighting, right. he would have lost one of these. T he would have lost, right? Bones didn't lose. Yeah, he hasn't. He hasn't, right? But if yeah. Bones continues to keep yeah. on fighting, Eventually, he's going to run into someone who's going to who's going to beat him, right? right? That's that's the whole same thing with Floyd Mayweather. If he was continuing to fight top top of the, uh, top elite boxers at his age now, he might continue to win. But there's opportunity he's probably going to lose. So that's the way I look at it. So staying undefeated, all that stuff, you know, undefeated, like not yeah, losing yeah, yeah, once yeah. you became champ and all that, yeah. was never a thing that you cared about. W say it one more time. Like once you became champ, right? Because yep. you did have losses prior. Yes. Right. You it's Brad Pickett, Dominic Cruz. Yep. Two, yeah. Yep. But once you became champ and all that, it, there was never a thought in your mind. I don't want to lose ever again. Like I want to. I don't think about it. No. I, I just want to walk off as champ. No, I just don't. No, I don't think about it. I just. It's crazy. Throughout the whole title reign, it was just going to gym, training because I lose in the gym, right? right? Like I get beat up in the gym. So when you get beat up in the gym, then when you get beat up in the cage, I guess you can say you. The same feelings, because when I go in the gym and I go against my uh, Professor John and we grapple, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm coming for you, right? And then when I lose and I get defeated, I'm like, ah, fuck, God damn it, you know? Or when I spar Matt and Matt's just piecing me up, I'm like, this fucking suck. I ain't the greatest fighter of all time. I'm getting my ass beat by Matt Hume. I, like, that goes around my Matt Hume still spars you? Oh, yeah. Wow. And he pieces you up? Yeah. How old is he? He's 56. Wow. <laughs> damn. How big is he? I know he's not a huge guy, but like um, he's about I'll say 170, 175, okay. 5, 5, 10, 5, 11. So okay. yeah, he still pieces me up, man. So I still lose in the gym, right? So I don't know how these other guys when they train. I don't know if Luke Rockhold's getting somebody's beating Luke Rockhold up or if uh, why'd you mention Luke? 
Because he's about to fight. Right, I just right. people are just coming around yeah, my yeah. right now. He's about to fight. I'm super excited to see him come yeah. back, find Paulo Costa. Damn, you um, follow. I thought you don't follow. The guys I like, I do. Yeah. Um, so I mean, I don't know if you know McGregor's getting pieced up in the gym, if John, you know, who who's beating those guys up, but I get beat up in the gym, so it's a little bit different, right? right. So when these guys are the world champion, or whatever, they probably don't get tested in the gym like I do, where you know, I'm tapping out, I'm getting, you know, beat up and it just happens. So. Do you have do you feel like you have like a kinship to those guys that you came up with? You know, like the guys that were, you know, a Rockhold is a guy. Yeah. Well, me and Rockhold, we we've done some things together. I remember we did a, a UFC event together and Destiny had on this badass dress. It's all out and everything. Hair <laughs> good. Destiny's your wife. Destiny is my yes. wife, yes. yes. Uh Rockhold goes, damn mighty you lucky. You know, I was like, hey, 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 keep your hands off, Rock, you know? So <laughs> good looking guy, Rockhold. Yeah, he's a, he's a handsome yeah. looking guy. You know, Ralph Lauren model, got the perfume, right. not perfume, cologne. So yeah, so but yeah. I'm cool with a lot of the guys that I came through the game with because we used to do a lot of events together. But I feel like there's, like, I feel this way, and obviously I didn't, like, when, when Rory retires, I, yeah. I was very sad. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just another one. Like, for me, it's like right. another one hangs up his gloves, right? Because me and Rory, we fought in the same car together. When I fought Ale Bogatinov, he fought Tyron Woodley. Yes. I remember me and Rory doing some traveling together. He was talking about how he would get, you know, paid in US dollars and he'll wait and circulate the money to make more money because how the oh, wow. uh, currency changes. So yeah, I spent a lot of time with Rory um, in the days when I was in the UFC. So yeah, you know, it's another one who hung his gloves up. And then on the same day, Dom gets knocked out yep. brutally, yep. right? Which is not something we've seen very often. But like I said, once again, the longer you stay in this sport, right. the more video that's on you, the more people you fight. Cause I think it's funny cause Chito Vera has been around the game for a long time. Right. You know, I think he is the next guy in line for a title shot because he's put together a lot of wins impressively. Um, but it's just a matter of time. You know, Chito had his Dom's number, right? Because when I was looking at this fight, I was like, okay, Chito can win this fight. If he doesn't, after training with Henry Cejudo and then see how his mindset was to Dom and training, I was like, okay, I can see why you beat Dom, right? Because Dom, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then when Chito was like, if he can't take you down, then he can't mix it up very well, right? Then I look back when I fought Dom, which was 11 years ago, I was trying to throw the high kick the whole time. Bop, 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 left high kick, because he always ducks out that way, right? Right. Obviously, I'm 5'3", he's 5'11", he has a range advantage. Chito, he's long like I am. No, like I am. Chito's longer like Dom, so he was able to get that time. And he didn't really uh, bait on his feints, right? His movement, right? So he was able to get the knockout. Did you did you watch the fight? Yeah, I watched it. First two rounds, Dom which looked is, great. He looked great, which is he looked phenomenal, yes. right? But Chito was like, Chito hurt him in the first round, right. right, with the hook, and he was like, okay, I know I can hurt him, yeah, right. I'm not gonna try to get on him. I have 25 minutes to get uh, this fight done, right? When he said that, I was like, it. I was like, it makes sense. I was watching it, I was like, he's just keeping control of distance, and he's not really worried about Dom hitting him hard. He's just looking for that right shot to hit him. Luckily, he landed that because if he didn't get that, then he probably would have lost the fight. But it's fighting. It happens. How do you feel about now the style that he has? It's and still great. It's not bad. Like when he said it's a low level, yeah. a low level, I understand what he means by low level, right? Because if you want to generate power, he what he means by low level, like the stance, you generate power like, <laughs> like <clears throat> that's how you generate power, right? You can't generate power when you're like this. Right. When you're like this. This is an avoid. You're avoiding fighting this way, right? So for Chito, he was like, okay, that's a low level. So if I stay in composure like this, when he goes like that, there should not be there should be nothing that's gonna hit me hard enough to knock me out. Mm. That's where I think Chito was going with that. But Don does a good job when he goes here, he goes back this way. Then if you come in, he can come back in for the takedown, which he hit me with um, and he hit Uriah Faber with. So right. once again, I'm 5'3", Uriah is 5'4". He has that range of edge where he can grab your legs and do that. So it works for him. Considering all that he's been through, though, like the knees and everything, yeah. are you surprised that he's still able to look this? Like, he was hanging in there. He, yeah, no, not I see at people all. calling for him to retire. Why? Yeah, I agree. Why? I mean, he's still, you know, relatively young. Youngish. Youngish. Uh, and he still loves it. And, you know, we all get, I mean, it happens to the best of us, right? So as long as he's mentally good and he's, he's healthy, I'll love to see him fight again. I'll watch him fight, so... Why not? By the way, the way you were breaking that down, how come you've never done any of this analyst stuff before? That was really good. Because I would have to lie. What do you mean? Because I'm not going to say somebody's athletic or not. Why do you have to lie? I don't just know. Just say they're not athletic. 
I feel like if you want that job to make the big bucks, you would have to, you know. You have to like pump you have to, everything You have to up. pump it up, right? If I came in there honest. But the way you were just breaking it down right there, that, that was great stuff. I could if I wanted to, but they have to pay me a lot of money to do it. Yeah. Because I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna do it unless I feel like I'm getting my money's worth. Right. So, but yeah, I can break down fights all the time because I, I see things. Did and, they ever ask you like in the Fox days? Did you ever do desk stuff? Yeah, I did the analyst on Fox a couple times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. UFC Tonight. UFC Tonight. Mm -hmm. What a show. That was a great show. Yeah. I know we'll, we'll be sitting there. We'll go through the block. Like you know, guys, that block was horrible. We're on live in three, two, yeah, one. Yeah, all yeah, right, yeah, we're yeah, back. Yeah, Michael Bisbee, yeah, yeah. take it away. And I'm like, yeah. uh. So I've done some. But did you stuff. enjoy it? Um, I did at the time, but I was very nervous about. You were? Yeah, I was very nervous. You probably couldn't tell. But now, if I did it, I'll probably kill it. But I have no filter, so that's where right. it would be, you know, conflict of interest. You're a lot more uh, comfortable doing media than you were like five, six years ago. One thousand percent. What changed? Just not caring. Why'd you stop caring? Just growing it's, as a human being. Just growing as you being, and you're either gonna like me or you're not, right? Mm -hmm. Like. I speak my mind, I speak how I feel, and I think that's got me to where I'm at, I, I'm at today. I remember like the first time I heard you swear, mm -hmm. and then I come to realize that you actually swear a lot. Oh yeah. But then it made me think that the guy that we were talking to this whole time was doing such a good job of- Being. Something See, else. I think what, what changed- Because once you started swearing, it was great. Yeah. I was like, oh, this is the real him. Well, I think, exactly the real him, right? It's like, I think people always say, I swear in front of my kids all the time, right? Because I've seen other parents not swear once in front of their kids. And next thing you know, I see they have the nastiest mouth I've seen in my life. I'm like, you guys don't know how to swear. Oh, the TV, internet, it's right. not good. I'm not, I'm not saying go out there and swear in front of your kids. But I try to talk how I talk, how am I talking to you? And how's right. I talk to my children? So, and then also I look at like people that I look up to, Dwayne Johnson, Kevin Hart, those guys, they cuss all the time. It's part of our culture. It's, it's part of our language, right? So they're not hiding it. They're not trying to like, oh, I'm a good person, da, 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 go behind screen doors and, screen doors, go behind doors and start blah, 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 blah. They kind of live, they live their life. So that's how I'm doing. Do you remember the time though, when you were like, I'm not gonna care anymore. I'm just gonna be myself. Mm -hmm. what the turning point was yeah what was it it was when i was streaming on twitch and i'm playing a game and uh when i started streaming on twitch i started being more out local and somebody in the twitch chat came in and goes hey man did you hear about the ultimate fighter they're gonna do next i was like what you talking about he goes they're gonna do the ultimate fighter it's gonna be all the champions and they're gonna fight you and the winner gets to fight for but i goes well, that's fucking stupid <laughs> <laughs> and then I was, I was like, well, what about the guys who's on a five fight win streak? What about Joseph Benavides? So they're just going to skip the line. I said that. The next day I got a phone call from Dana White. Oh, really? Dana White. He, Dana White never calls me when I was in UFC. He called me, he goes, you dumbass, you just ruined this whole thing we're trying to set up for you, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, uh, well, I just found out on, online from a, a random dude on Twitch and I gave him my honest opinion. And then he goes, Sean Shepard didn't call you? I was like, no, he didn't call me. And he goes, all right, bye. Hangs up. Next day, I get a call from Sean Shelby. Hey, yeah, bro, uh, we're doing this. Uh, I was like, too late. Yeah, <laughs> too late, like two dude. Days late. I was like, how, how do you expect I'm going? It's like, if I'm sitting here and I'm at the dinner table and Tyron comes to me and goes, hey, dad, mom's been cheating on you. What the? Yeah. You know? But if my wife were to kidding me, goes, hey, babe, I have something to tell you. Like, it's been five years. I love you with all my heart, but, you know, I've been seeing another man. I'm going to react differently. I'm not going to blow up, right? So, I feel when, like you'll still blow, blow up. I'll still blow up, yeah, yeah, but it'll yeah, be yeah. more get, of like, I'll probably answer like, so how long has it been going on? Like, right. when did this start? How did this happen? What did I do wrong? Instead of like, what the? Right, right, right. You know, it's two different ways you approach, yeah, approach yeah. it. So, but after that, going to Vegas, going through the whole thing. I was about to fight Henry Sudo, going through the whole thing. And then, you know, I remember Matt was saying, dude, like, just, just take fault. And I was like, no, fuck that. I'm not taking fault. I didn't do anything wrong here. Like, that was my natural reaction to news that was broke to me on the spot. Like, by a I, fan. By a fan. You're the champ. Yeah. And I was like, and I have to hide my feelings. And Matt goes, okay, whatever. Just go kick Henry Suda's ass and we'll get a new contract and call it good. And I was like, fine, but I'm not in trouble for this. Like, right. This shouldn't be my fault. And after that, I was kind of like, off she went. And then slowly and slowly, I started just being more me, more me, more me. Then... This is where I'm at now. That what was that phone? How long did that phone call with Dana last? I was like, probably two minutes. Wow, and he's yelling at you. Not yelling at me. He goes, I can't believe you did that. And then I was like, I didn't do anything. And I was like, it was a. And then it was actually an article on Bloody Elbow 
that did it. And they say, oh, Demetri Johnson reacts to a fan, da 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 da. And he goes, you, he goes, you put this article out there, da da da. And I was like, I was like, and I was like, he goes, I was like, what article? He goes, go read it. And I was like, okay, I go to bladeable.com. And I, I called back and I was like, you have to read it. It says, Demetri Johnson finds out live on stream yeah. from a random <laughs> fan about tough. And he goes, nobody told you. I was like, no. Um, I'll call you back. And that was it. So. I'll, I'll never forget, what was it, June of 2000, I think it was 17. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? I don't know. Yeah, I'm the finished. letter. Oh, yeah, I remember that. The yeah. letter was nuts, <laughs> man. I'll never forget because you were telling me about this. So they wanted you to fight TJ. Yep. You don't want to fight him. They... Here, here's the thing how it happened. Okay. So I'm in my backyard. This is crazy. Yes. I'm in my backyard. It was around June 2017, Something like right? that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't remember where I just fought. And they wanted us to fight too, though, Shaw. And I said, we'll fight him for a million dollars. And then the thing was, I knew TJ couldn't make 125 healthy. Like, I knew that, and so did Matt. We knew that. Because he's already shredded at 135. Right. And he's, he's tall, but he's not, like, a fat guy, right? And so Matt wanted to put in a contract saying, like, okay, if TJ Doshaw does not make weight... At 125, we fight him for his belt. They said, no, we're not doing that. I was like, okay, then. Then what's going to happen? And that's when I'm like, well, okay, we're in a close division. Because so I said, I'll fight TJ for a million dollars. It's a super fight. Right? Let's, let's make it yeah. happen. But they wouldn't do that. And then that's when I'm like, we're in a close division. I was like, I'm close the motherfucking division then. That's what I said. And then they didn't do it. And then that's when I came out the letter. And I was like, dude, it's like, what do I have to do? Like, everything that a champion, like, you would want somebody, like, one of the things I want to have happen when I'm done fighting is I want like Matt to be like, okay, out of all the people I've ever worked with and trained, Demetrius was the easiest person I've had to train. He always showed up on time. If he was gonna be late, he would let me know, traffic, never had a problem with cutting weight, never had, just no problems. I'm, I wanted to be the easiest champion athlete to work with. Where I show up, who do you want me to fight? Find this guy, okay, perfect. But once they started to like, murky this stuff. I was like, oh, you're going to fight this champion and he's ever been right. like, okay, let's add some more money. Let's add $1 million. No, that can't happen. Okay, well, if he can't make weight, then if he doesn't make weight, we get to fight for his belt. No, we can't do that. I don't know. It's like, so where, where do I have leverage here? Like, where's my power of being a champion, right? So, right. yeah, good times. You you sent me the letter, I think it was it was a Sunday night and then like there was like a revision on Monday morning. And you proofreaded it too. Make sure all my comments well, were Well, I mean, there was a lot. It was a lot. It was like all over the place. It was very yeah. emotional. And then you came on the show. Yep. You, I think you were on vacation. I was in Hawaii. Hawaii, in right? Yep. And I had never heard you so mad. Like yeah. you're such a mild-mannered guy. You were so mad just from the letter. <laughs> you're mad. I couldn't believe it was from you. And then you came on and this was like pre, I think you were on via phone. Yeah. There was, there was no Skype. No it was Skype. It was Skype. No was Skype. Skype? So I remember looking, I had my glasses on. I was like, thank God I had glasses oh, on. Yes, yes, yes. Now I remember. Yeah. Yes, now yeah, I remember. Yeah. You were so mad. Yeah. What, what, whatever happened? Like they obviously read the letter. I'm sure they did. They never called you about that? No. Wow. I don't, I don't know what happened after. I think they kind of left it alone. They left the flyweight division open. And yeah. Then, but yeah, you know, that was my... Crazy. It was a, it was a crazy time, you know? I, and I'm super grateful for the opportunity I had in there because if I if they wouldn't have made 125-pound division, then I wouldn't be in the position I'm in today, right? To go on, the, you know, the 11 consecutive title defenses and, you know, the Rayborg arm bar. I mean, it was, it was a great platform to, to be on. And I took advantage of it and made the best of it and you know I might have sold you know 4.1 million pay-per-view buys but you know when it came out there to put on a show and go out there and fight I fucking did my thing did you know before that Cejudo fight that if this doesn't go your way that no. there could no no I I have full attention to winning that fight <laughs> yeah full attention winning that fight and then who knows what I would have went from there who I might have went up to 135 like I felt like I was doing an interview earlier today I, uh, with your pretty good old Chuck. Uh, By the way, I missed MMA beat. That was a, probably my uh, favorite show to watch. That was a good show. Nate uh, just told me the same thing. Oh, really? Yeah. I loved it. It was amazing. Thank you. But I, I told I told Chuck, I was like, could you imagine like in 2012 when I started my title reign, if it was 2012, it was 2022, right? Yeah. With all the social media, with oh, yeah. all the hype there is now, and I went on that 11 consecutive title defense, dude, it would, like, I don't think I would have the same problem as I did back then trying to build my star power, because you can say, or, or right. sell a pay-per-view, right? Like, you would have put me on one of those, I don't know, Conor McGregor fights or John Jones cards. It would be like, you know, I, I think I would have done a lot better now than it, it was in the past. That makes sense. But also... Viewership. Yeah, but look, like, I actually have it up here. I don't feel like they ever put you on those. They didn't, no. 
You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when I fought on Fox, I remember when I fought John Dawson the first time, right. I think we did 5.5 million viewers, like at the peak. When I remember seeing it, I was like, holy shit, we did 5.5 million viewers on yeah. Fox. And I love Fox. It was Channel 13, Q13 right. Fox. I right. grew up watching that, like Simpsons and all that stuff. So The ESPN era is different, though. Yeah, I mean, I was at the gym the other day running, right? Little Miss Sandy over here, right? Yeah. Oh, doing yeah. her thing. And then on the news, it's like, boom, you have Izzy talking about yes. breaking the news. It's yeah. like the exposure of ESPN right. is just massive, right? I mean, it's just, you can't be. Who, who, who came up with the idea for the trade? Like, who's the first, who, who deserves credit for first coming up with it? <sighs> Please don't say Malky. Nah, honestly, I think it was, I want to say it was me, but it's, I still have, I don't still have the full story of that. I still get more of that story, to be honest with you. I feel like it's you. like one of the great like stories in MMA history that we still don't really know how it all went down because they've never really talked I about think, it. I think I'll probably like release it when I'm ready to. Oh, wow. Right? Like I know how it all happened, but there's still pieces I don't even know how it happened. Really? Right? So I still need to find that out. Um, I know Joe Rogan had something to do with it too, and so I haven't I haven't had a chance to talk to Joe Rogan um, because he kind of he was I, I heard something like he was like like telling Daniel like dude like get Ben Askren who gets it like just right. get him like why not right you know right. so it'd be kind of interesting to hear his his foresight on that like why would he push that that narrative you know so like I said there's still stuff that I don't really know about that like I know a huge chunk but. I don't know the whole complete story. Was it ever like super close and you were like, yes, this is going to happen. This is great and it's perfect. And then it looked like it wasn't going to happen. Was there ever a moment where you thought it was going to die? Um, kind of, kind of not because Malky was doing some of the, uh, some of the legwork, you know, back and forth. <clears throat> and then sometimes, you know, you're waiting. It's like you text somebody. It's like, yeah. you're that? waiting, you're waiting, you're waiting. What's taking so long? I just text you. You text me back. What's yeah, going yeah, yeah. on? S stuff like that. But I just kind of left it up to them. I was like, just let me know what's up. Because at the end of the day, they were like, no, we're not trading you. Then I'm like, all right, well, guess I'll go back in, into the pool and wait for the next title shot or work my way back up. So right. for me, I mean, it doesn't hurt to try because if you, if you don't try, you're back where you started, right? So was there any talks of like, who would have your, who would have been your first fight post Segundo Henry? fight? Probably been him, him, him again. Oh, you think it would have been? Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh, immediate? Uh, yeah, probably an immediate rematch, okay. guaranteed. And I think it would probably done very well. Yeah. And you think you would have won? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I'm just honest. I'm just straightforward. Yeah. I like to live in reality, ladies right, and gentlemen. Right, right, yeah, a yeah. lot of people out there think they got egos. Well, I would have won that. Da, 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 da. Yeah. I could have won. He could have won. Could have been. Who knows? Right. Are you surprised that there hasn't been a trade since then? Mm, no. I'm not. Because now it's all about content. Content is king. With one, UFC, PFL, LFA, I mean, Bellator. Bellator, CFCC, right? Everybody, there's so many different things on it. I like to look at it as like um, the streaming war. You have Hulu, Disney Plus, ESPN, Netflix, Amazon. Amazon Prime. You have all that, right? But people go to watch the streaming service that has the best content, right? Netflix, Stranger Things, The Sandman. Um, all the documentary, you know, Amazon Prime, it has, now it has one championship, it had the terminal list, right? So those companies are always battling against each other to have the best content, right? Because whoever, whoever you scrapped you, they get the most money. So with um, the trade, you took me, one of the best athletes in mixed martial arts and traded to one championship, and you got Ben Askren, which was a win-win for both sides because Ben Askren, he's a talker. Through Ben Askren, you got, you know, Jorge Masvidal. Through Jorge Masvidal, you got uh, Kamar Usman. So it's a win, one championship. They got me. Now they're coming into one, uh, to America, Amazon Prime. I went over there, had a good win. I lost to Adriano. People know who Adriano Moraes is. We're fighting for a second time. So it's a win-win from both sides, right? So I don't think the trade will ever happen because now people don't want to give her that leverage, mm. right? Like when Nate is like, man, let me walk, let me right. do my thing. We're not going to let you go. Right. Like if, you, if we let you go, then your star power is going to go to either PFL, bare knuckle fighting, right. Bellator, wherever it is, and it's going to bring eyeballs, right? So, but if we can, you know, give you hazmat, you know, to the wolf, and if you win, perfect. Maybe we can sweeten the deal and make you keep you. Or if you lose, yeah, get out of here. You're, you're, you're not... Who knows what their mindset is, but I just don't think you're ever going to see trades like that again because now 
Name name another good free agency a free agent athlete out right now. No, it's not. It's very rare. I, actually, we just had one on our show. Yeah, I just saw he signed a uh, P. Did you see him? PFL. Yeah, yeah. I just saw broken news on your show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and he's legit. He's a great, great yeah. fighter. I'm sure he'll love the the um, the tournament uh, tournament format or whatnot. So best of luck to him. When you saw the Nate thing, what did you think? Like this is a legend, and before you leave. We're going to literally feed you. I think he'll be wolf. fine. I think he'll be fine. If he goes out there in shape, I mean, it's a tough fight, right? Because I remember what Rory did to him, right? A lot of people like to forget, right? Yeah. But the thing I love about Nate is he doesn't give a damn, right? I mean, Nate Diaz lost his fight. He goes, I won that fight. Yeah, and it was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, you won that fight, yeah, Nate. Right. He didn't lose that fight. Hey, sure, dog, change that damn yeah, thing. Yeah, Don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at the end of the day, it's all based on perception and your mindset, right? Right. You know, you can go out there and lose a fight, and you can let that loss really affect your, your day to day life. Or you go out there and, and if you lose, you can be like, hey, I lost, it is what it is. Go back home and fix things and get back in there for another fight. So I think for him, regardless of what he does, if he loses, I'm sure he can angle a fight from Jake Paul, make more money than he did in a, in a Jake Paul fight than he will in the UFC. Or I mean, he go to bare knuckle fighting. There's, there's opportunities for athletes to go out there and make money if you have a good name. Have things changed enough in the last 10 years for the athlete, for the fighter, you know? Getting their fair share, getting paid, what you know, have things changed? It, it's not a mixed one. It's in all sports, right? Uh, like you can't say all sports. I can't say that. NBA players getting fifty percent. That's two. It's two sports. What do you mean two sports? Two sports. Okay, so we're gonna go down as fast yeah. as do. It. Okay, so you look at okay NFL. They are uh, NFL, NBA. Is baseball? Are they um, union? Yeah. Yeah. So all NHL, sports, all of them, all sports that are union. Yes, they're getting their fair share because they have bargaining power, right? Yes. Collective bargaining. Collar, collective yes. bargaining power. Okay. Now let's look at all the sports that are self, uh, your self business, right? Yeah. Motocross. Right. Right. The only people who are getting the best money is Eli Tomac, Malcolm Stewart, Ken Roxon. Um, who else? Yeah, but uh, how big is motocross? It's pretty fucking big. Is it big? It's, is it getting the rate? I know your it, sons love it and everything, yeah, but like, yeah. it's, it's not but it's, like it's people not, aren't it's paying not, $50 or $75 on a Saturday to watch motocross. No, no, no. It's not a like pay-per-view buy. It's, yeah. it's not like that, right? But it's still, there's still enough money to go around to okay. not make people. Should we compare it to like F1? Uh, F1? What those dudes Sh are getting? I don't know. Millions upon millions of dollars? Well, there you go, right? Who's getting millions upon millions of dollars in MMA? Nobody's getting millions besides right. Connor and maybe right. Easy and those guys, but... It's a hard thing. I understand where you're coming from. I totally get where you're coming from, right? But in order for that to happen, for all of us athletes to in MMA to say, there's a basketball player, uh, Dwight Howard. Yeah. Right. He never forget the conversation I, I had with him. Fucking tall. I was, yeah. I was looking at a damn tree. He goes. How long ago was this? Man, this is at Mass Square Garden. I was in the UFC, and he goes. He goes, we're standing up, we're clapping, the guy just fought. He goes, look at this. You see all this? You think they're here to see the executives fight? Right. He goes, they ain't here to see, see them. They're here to see you guys. He goes, I'm telling you right now, you guys can fucking band together wow. and create a union. Wow. He goes, because if you guys don't, you guys are always going to get pennies. And that's what he told me that. And I was like, and I said, but here's the thing you don't understand. As athletes, our culture is designed us to fight each other. Right. Like we want, like me, I'm good. I'm like, I want to, Chuck, DC, Rory, Nate, Nick, this DC, I want all of us to eat. I yeah. want everybody to be successful. I want everybody to make as much money as possible, right? Back in the day, I used to be like, how come he got that sponsorship and I didn't get that, right? right. It builds that animosity towards other athletes from each other. That's how I feel, right? But in order for us to band together and become, do a union, we'd all have to say, no, I'm not fighting. No, nobody's fighting. They won't put any, con won't put any content out there. The USC or right. PFO, anybody won't be able to put content out there. But that would just never happen. That would never so happen. you think it never happens? It would never happen. Man. I don't think it would, it, it would ever happen. You see like Kamaru, by the way, speaking of a guy who's about to be threatening your record and Anderson's record. He's got he's got a little bit of way to go, but yes. In terms of, in terms of title defenses. He's second to title defenses. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's at six? Yeah, he's getting, six. He's getting, yeah. He's getting there, he's getting yeah. there. Um, point is, he's fighting this weekend. Yep. And he tweeted something on uh, Thursday, I think it was, or Friday, about USADA waking him up at 5 a.m. See, this whole USADA thing, these people, gotta, they got to stop with that, okay? Wait, wait. You wait, sign, wait. you... Who's got to stop? The fighters. Come on. Dude. What are you talking about? Why do you have to be woken up at 5 a.m.? Who said you got to answer? Dude. What do you mean who have to answer the door? They're ringing your doorbell. Yeah. Have they ever come to your house at yes, 5 a.m.? Yes, they have. Why and I got three fucking kids. By the way, why can't they come at 11? 
It's their choice. But what's the difference? Like they're trying to catch you, right? They're trying to catch you. 5 a.m. Here, let me tell you my shoot up at 7 There's times I'm sleeping, a neighboring doorbell, and it's her, na- her na- a beautiful woman named Helen. That was, yeah. that was her name, right? It was always the same lady. Our same lady, because <laughs> the, w- the way they work is at like by region. By region, got it, right? Yeah. And so she told me she was like, "I'm this region, right? So I do you, I do uh, a cyclist. Where his house is all uh, what's our what's that thing? Hyperbaric. His oh. whole house is hyperbaric, right? Wow. It's so she told me all that she does, Kiesa, uh, right. Pena, all the guys in Washington State, right? And so she said she follows me on Instagram, she follows me on Twitch, she follows me on Twitter, so she knows where I'm at all the time, right? right? There's times she's come to my house, I'm playing World of Warcraft, and I'm like, she goes, babe, who is at the door? Oh, it's, it's your side. I'm like, oh, go ahead and ca- go on the couch. Let me finish this raid. I'll be right back. Hey, guys, I got I to gotta go take a piss and a blood test. I'll be back in about an hour, right? So for me, they caught me at, at the liquor store. There's times I'm in, I was training and I'm swimming and I come up in my lap. She's right there standing there waiting to get my, my sample. Right. For me, I never had a problem with you how to wake me up at 5 a.m., 4 a.m., 3 a.m., catch me at the liquor store. It didn't bother me, right? And I got three kids, so I know how important sleep is. Right. Don't, don't act like these guys right. out there, they right. got one fucking kid. Right. And they're like, oh, you're waking me at 5 a.m. I was like, try three in, in your title defense range. They didn't come holler me, but me? You want my pee in my blood? Come get it. Take it. Boom. Go. Like, I love you, Sada. Like, because I love that about them. But Fair, all but the fighters are like, you hate it. Da, 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 da. Well, can I just say my yeah. issue with it is you guys never had a say. Yeah. Football players, they don't get tested 365, 24-7. Mm-hmm. There's a say. Yep. There's, there's a conversation. Yeah. Oh, this period of time, this. You have to literally tell them. I know you don't have to anymore. But, like, on an app, right, yep. where you are. Yep. That's crazy. I That's that, didn't bother me one bit. You're being treated like an employee. Yeah, I know, but I don't even me. have to tell the people <laughs> I work. It's, yeah, because you're all about like clean sport, this clean, and that. Yeah, yeah. But you have no say in anything, and you don't get the benefits of being an employee. Gotcha. I try to understand where you come from, but for me, when it came to USADA, like if they wake up at six a.m., there's times that you can wake. You can open the door and say, hey, I'm going to finish sleeping. Sit right there and watch me sleep. You can do that? You can do that. They no. said they'll do that. They woke up Volk in Abu Dhabi. You saw that story? No. The guy's in Abu Dhabi about to fight Holloway yep. later that day. He's sleeping. Yeah. Could you not wait? Yeah. I Come mean, on. Obviously, obviously, they could have some common courtesy, right? Yes. That's, that's, that's all dependent on the, the collector himself right. or herself, right? Like, the way they, she told me how it works is that they'll send the message to her. They're like, hey, we need to get Demis Johnson tested within this week. You pick a day. You choose. Uh. And so she would follow me. And, and then oh, she'll be like, I, I know that you're going to be home because we're creature of habits, right? right? When you're right. in training camp, you're doing the same thing all the time, right? It's not like you're, some people will have erratic, but that's why you have the scheduling, right? It's like, hey, I'm going to be here, da, 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 da. So when I'm in training camp, that's when I at. And then tell myself, call you like, hey, where you at? You're not at your place. Oh, shit, I'm at the liquor store. Don't move. I'm on my way. Perfect. Wow. They'll come and meet at the liquor store. Like it's, people make it out to be worse than it is. But for me, it's like, okay, you woke me up. Perfect. You need blood? Whatever. Boom. It's If it was like every fucking weekend. Your wife never got mad? No, she never got mad because she knew it was part of keeping this sport clean. Right. Like. You're such a good guy. Just being straightforward. That's how it was. Like, you want it, Helen? Come and get it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do, you, do you still do the Twitch thing? I still do, yeah. And it's lucrative? Uh, it's not like it was, when it was when I was grinding. But right. It's, it, I'm okay you with it. You don't have time to do it like that. Don't have like, I don't have enough time to do it like I used to, but I do it because... I want to interact with my fan base, my my close peeps. Right. So, do you like the Amazon thing? Yeah, I love it. It's great. Yeah, Pretty I think. Cool, I th- right. Yeah, I think it's good. I think being on Amazon Prime, it's way easier for the for the American fans to watch it. Um, everyone has Amazon. Every, right. Everyone has Amazon. It's super. Everybody tells me it's so much easier to watch an Amazon Prime than it was on TNT. Okay. So I'm super about that, and we're gonna see how the production and the show goes, and wait to hear feedback. How do you feel about fighting in the morning? Because it's Evening here, right? So, August 26th here, August 27th morning there. Yeah. How so, do you feel about that? So when I fought him last time in, on TNT, like, I didn't like it because I stayed on America time zone. So when I'm over there, everything's closed, right? Oh. So my breakfast, lunch, and dinner was eggs, sausage, yeah. <laughs> and toast because everything's closed. Right. So this time, since, since I'm the main event, it will be, uh, I think I'm going to stay over, stay up. I'll probably be fighting around 12 p.m. Singapore time. So I'll probably, when I'm there, I'll probably stay up, train at that time, go to bed around 2 p.m. Singapore time, so I'll have better food. But, uh, you know, 
it is what it is. I was kind of get accustomed to fighting on their time zone. And it's always better because people, it's night, it's more mystic. It's, it's kind of like, oh, we're going to the fights tonight. So, you know, I had to just reacclimate back to, you know, time zone. And are you going from here to Singapore? No, I'm going back home. Because oh. I, got, I got one more week of training and then I'll leave Saturday to Singapore. So you're doing all this media for it. Yep. How much media is he doing? I don't know. He's the work. champ. I don't worry about it. They, they called me. I know, but you know, you're the, you're not the champ right now. Yep. Shouldn't that be part of the champ's job? You're see, carrying the promotion. See, see, there you go, carrying promotion all that stuff. Whoa, whoa, whoa. See, that, that, I, right, I got right. your back. <laughs> this is what, if I was managing you, I would say, are we getting paid more for this? No, I'm not worried about that. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a team player. Um, I'm very happy. You had to, to, you had to fly. I mean, it was, it was, when Josh told me you were coming, I was like, wow, DJ in studio. What yep. a treat. Yep. West Coast. I want to come see those beautiful eyes, man. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm super excited to get out there and do the media, build a, build a fight up, and yeah, just do my part. Full crowd? Um, I am assuming it will be. It's in the morning, so and there's, but is it, a, there's like, a show before us, too. So What's once, COVID like over there now? I think it's all open now. Oh, it's all good. All good. Because it was pretty intense. <sighs> Dude. Right? There was a point where I was like, I ain't never coming back during COVID times. Like, I, Because one thing Uriah Faber said that kind of like touched me was he was like, I don't fight. You know, I want to yeah. fight for the crowd. Yeah. I want to. It's, 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 it's nominate in my phase of my career or this arc that Chuck Mendenhall said to me. He goes, this is your arc of your, of your career. And I was like, wow. I like that. It's what like, a writer. Kind of kind of like... <laughs> He's, so He's a little jealous. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like anime, like, oh, the Dragon Ball Z arc, the Freezer arc, the, the Saiyan arc, the Android arc. For me, this is my arc in one championship in Asia. So there was a part of me where, like, when Uriah was like, you know, I fight with the crowd. Now in the stage I'm, I'm at, it's like, this is, like, entertainment for the fans, right? Mm -hmm. Like, when I fought Rod Tang, like, the amount of feedback I got from just taking that risk... Oh, it was great. And I was like, dude, I, I told Matt, I said, the, the game plan was like, you know, just stick and move the first round, right? And just try to avoid conflict, like fight. And I was like, Matt, that's not gonna happen because I don't wanna get yellow carded, right? I don't, right, right. When, they, when they start doing that yellow card, that's 10% gone, right? I don't come, I might fly over to Singapore, get docked 10% of my pay, and that's not gonna happen. I'm gonna right. go out there. But I rather go out on my shield and keep my extra 10% and get knocked out than, oh, I didn't get knocked out. I got to keep my 10%. Right, right. So I told him, I was like, Matt, they say, they start warning me. I look at you. I'm like, it, it was a good, it's been a good one. I'm, I'm just gonna go heads, right? So I went heads with him. I banged. And then the second round, I just walked forward and got him in a submission choke. Like, my stock rose so much. That it was like, okay, people just want to see me fight. They right. don't care if I win or lose. They want to see me fight. So now that I have that on my heart, like for this for this fight, it's like, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to push the pace. I'm going to get in his face. I'm going to do everything I can to, to try to win this fight. If I get knocked out again, so be it. I mean, I could. can I sit back and relax and play the safe game? Like, oh, oh hey, hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. hey no, hey, no, hey, no, hey, no, hey. no, no, no. We've seen That's that. That's fucking boring. Yeah. Nobody, Nobody's going to remember, right? But if I go out there and I'm like, hey, let's go, like, what you got, right? I mean, I get dropped again. I get blasted in the face with me. I'm like, hey, it happened. But wow. I give it my all. So that's where my mindset is now. So They need to cut that and use that to promote the fight. They can if they want, but they got to pay you for that. That's true. That's yep. a good point. You got to um, set it up some way. Are you fighting in the U.S. next year? Um, That's up to them. It's, you mentioned U.S. Are they fighting they're, in the They're here? making their way over here to the U.S. But there's a lot of hoops and hurdles they have to get through in order to make that happen. Because also we have a different rule set. Right. Um, could you imagine, like, right. if something happened and I got blasted in the face, and I'm like, oh, no, he's got da-da-da-da, and they should have never done that rule. Then we also have the hydration protocol. So there's a lot of things that have to happen in order for us to be here in America. Do you, do you think it, like, would you like to fight in the U.S.? 1,000%. Yeah. Oh, I would love to fight in Vegas. I miss fighting in Vegas. Really? No taxes. You show up, you get your check, you go. Yeah, so, that's true. And the flight? The flight's easy. There's always something open, food, it's 24-7. Like, Vegas is my favorite spot to fight. Last was this your last Vegas fight? That was my last Vegas fight. Wow. UFC one night, no? No, no, no. Two, was it 16? I don't know. I'm looking at it right. 216. I got 216. it right. Man, I'm so good. Yeah, that was my last Vegas fight, man. After that, what was out. Montreal? Montreal. Uh, Montreal was against Kyoju Horiguchi, and that was UFC 190. I feel like, I feel like. UFC 178 was uh, Chris Curiosso. Yeah. Uh, UFC 197 was Henry Cejudo. Um, fuck, I think it's like 
I don't know. 86. 86. 186. I headline a lot of fucking cards. So that's like when I'm trying to remember, I'm like, shit, I remember when Conor McGregor and Dustin Poirier were the undercard. Yeah, and I was, I think I was the main event. You were main event. That's Carry Yeah, USC 178. So I was supposed to sit down with you, UFC 186 in your hotel, Montreal, my hometown. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you called me. I only was sick. Only time you've ever canceled. Dude. That was bad. <laughs> that was the only time in a fight when I was fighting. I was like, I don't want to be here right now. <laughs> really? Yeah. Because I got, because um, flying from Washington State to Montreal, at the time I was going to 125. So I drank two gallons of water, right? Uh -huh. And I wasn't going to eat anything on the plane. So I got water sickness or water poison, right? Wow. And when I got there, I was just, just everything was going through me, right? Wow. And then I told him, I was like, I, I don't want to train today. I'm just going to go to bed. And then... Got there, made the weight, and I got in the fight. And I remember the first round we're fighting, and then the second round he took me down, and I was like, oh, I don't want to fuck me. I'm so sick. And then came on, got the arm bar. Really, you were thinking that? Oh yeah, I was sick. I was sick. Wow, like, is that the the worst you felt in a fight? Oh yeah. Really? Because I couldn't keep anything down. Like, were you afraid that you were gonna like poop? Yeah. No. Throw up? Uh, I just didn't. I felt lethargic. Right, right. Because right? my yeah, body, like weak. when you get food poisoning yeah. and it takes you a couple of days to get the, the substance back in right, you, right, right. but I couldn't take a couple of days to get the substance back in me because I couldn't blow back up because I had to make 125, right? And so I just remember like being in there. I was like, I don't want to be here right now. But we rallied through and I remember I was like, all right, boy, all right, boy. I was like, I'm going to hit this fucking arm, I'm going to get in yeah. trouble. And it's uh, and hit With it. like seconds remaining. Yep. This was so fun. Yep. All right, I know. Come here now. Look at you. All grown up. Got your own studio now. So oh, proud of you, Ariel. For a while, if I'm being honest. Well, I know, but you know, it's Hawani show. This, this, is, no, this is me. This is me. My you, name is on the logo. Right. I mean, look at that. Uh, thank you for coming by. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Don't worry about being late. Water under the bridge. It's all good. <laughs> 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 I'm kidding. Uh, good luck to you. August 26. One on Prime Video One. Yes, sir. The big rematch. Get her done. Come back on. We'll discuss. Sounds good, brother. All right. Appreciate you, baby. My best to your family. Thank you, DJ. Likewise. There he is. One of the greatest ever. How about that? Royalty. Literal royalty. Thank you, Josh. Appreciate you very much. There he is. Demetrius Johnson. What a great honor. What a privilege. What a pleasure. Everyone has trouble with that door. Um, to have him on the program in studio. Wow. That was something. Uh, thank you so much to DJ for that. Great to have him on. And uh, appreciate the one guys for allowing DJ to come on and talk to us here today. That was really, really cool. One on Prime Video One, August 26th in uh, Singapore, Friday night here in the United States. If you're in US or Canada, you can watch it with your Prime subscription. It's a tremendous deal for everyone. Now, let's go back to Saturday. How about what Cheeto Vera did to Dominic Cruz? Incredible, still in awe of that knockout. What a fight it was, what a moment it was. And it's always great to talk to Cheeto. We don't have to build this up. We've been talking about him all show long without further ado. Let us say hello. We good, Joe? Not yet? No? Okay. Yeah, we are good. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, Cheeto there. There he is. What's happening, Marlon? Cheeto Vera, the victor from Saturday in San Diego. He knocked out one Dominic Cruz. It is so good to see you, my friend back at home. We just spoke on Monday. You didn't do it. Now you're back seven days later. How about that? It was great. Lives. Uh, I don't know. I just like to sit down and just let the moment sit let all the emotions go by and just, you know, just enjoy the process. Just enjoy the today. Um, be present on, on what's going on and life great, dude. Life's great. Feels good. And, you know, just happy to be here. Greatest moment of your career on Saturday so far? And so that point, yeah. Of course. Oh, Always the fight ahead of you is the most important of your life. That was Saturday night. My whole life is stopped around 6 o'clock until the fight was over. I say to myself in the locker room, this is it. This is the moment that you've been waiting your whole life. It's not about the opponent. It's not about anything. It's about what you want. It's about how much I dream to be there. Just the little things that people don't realize. The little things. That was the first time I have I have the mic on a wing mm. because it's an arena show. Yeah. So you, all those 
all those little things, I was like, holy fuck, this, this is beautiful. It's it's amazing to be here. It's great to be here. And fuck, you know, I get I get to I get to talk to the people in the crowd on Wayne's, and then I was like, fuck, this is not an epic show. It's a real fucking arena with thousands of people and the kid from Ecuador pack it up and deliver. Amazing. What was the week like? Like leading up, with, was everything okay? How were you feeling? Beautiful week. I I I came and fight with ready. I came ready to fight. I came prepare. I came with a great mindset. I had great people around that uplift me and make me make me feel good, make me do my job better. And you know, once you get to the hotel, you know, there's not really anything to do but remain focused, do the weight, and fight hard on Saturday night. So I just flow, you know. I went I went for a run. I went for a run. Um trained with the team, enjoy, did the press that I have to do, and just was cool. It was fucking cool to be there. You did that face to face with him. Uh, for UFC, what was that like, dude? It was easy. Like that's why I really, I really said before. Like you know, I, I'm not tripping. And then when the UFC asked me, "Would you be down to do that?" I was like, "I don't give a fuck. If you put it on my calendar, like if that's on my schedule, I do it. Mm. I'm not looking forward to do it. I don't ask to do it, but I'm a professional. And then of course, I'm gonna repeat what I always say." If you give me the wrong energy, you will get a fist back at you. If you're an all right person, the way that I am, just chilling, cool and calm, we can do it. We can talk. I say with the, the same thing I said before. I'm ready. I want to fuck you up. And you're not my friend. You know, I'm not I'm not playing body body with nobody, but I'm not also an idiot that walks around yelling, you know. There's no reason for that. That's a waste of energy. So we did it and it came pretty nice. So now we get to the fight. First two rounds, uh, the judges scored it for him. What are you thinking? And 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 you did hit him with some shots, but uh, I think most would say that uh, he was up two rounds to none, and then you got him in the third, and then, of course, it ends in the fourth. What are you thinking after those first two rounds? I drop him, you know. I drop him in the first round. I drop him in the second one. I got takedown in the first one, and you know he lands on top. I close my guard. I control pretty good. Put a couple elbows on his head. Um, he was definitely throwing numbers. He started a little harder than usual, but of course he, he started harder. He wanna he, he wanna let me know what's up. He's a former champ. He's a guy that's been there, so he's probably trying to be like I'm gonna show him that I that I that I wanna come fucking hard, strong to fight. And I was like, cool, good for you. But, you know, it's just my time. Like, I was telling that stuff to me when I was, you know, when I was standing up under the curtain before I woke up, I was just repeating in my head, it's my time. It's my time. It's my time. And I didn't stop that until, until my music go and I just, you know, started vibing. But there were, he was throwing a lot of numbers. He was, he, he was, he was trying to pressure me, but. I just keep coming, I just keep coming, I just keep coming, I just keep trying to find him because he moves a lot. It's a hard guy to find. It's not an easy guy to find. That's why I don't I don't throw many low kicks because I don't want to blow my feet too early. I'm definitely down to blow my feet if I'm really down and I have to do something. Then I say like fuck it. Might as well let you break it. So I was it was a calculation in there, you know, you gotta figure it out, you gotta find it. It's a different thing, the speed. The, the vibration that we bring in, in our energy, the power. So all those things, I got I to gotta, I gotta have a feel and a read in order to find the way you found him. And, you know, I, I, I could say those, the first and second, they gave it to him. But you can also, if you see who dropped who, you can also give it to that person or at least make it even. But oh, what we can do about it? Yeah. It's weird. So it's just, just, just keep trying. The more you try, the more lucky you can get. Did he okay, so let me ask you this. Did he surprise you at all? Like the movement was reminiscent of the old Dom. And I thought that, all right, you know, you get older, you're not moving it. Like, did anything that he 
did out there, especially in those first two rounds, surprise you, or maybe you weren't expecting? Um, I was expecting the movement. Yeah, of course. I know he's really good at when you throw a combination, he goes side to side, and then he comes back with something. But it's very easy to say that. Uh. But once you're in there, it's a different animal. That's why I don't... I don't like to make fantasies on my head and just think like, yeah, sure, I'm gonna, it's, it's all that I'm gonna catch him. Like, the guy is just as strong as any other young guy that I fought. Fucking got balls. He's gonna try hard, but like, I just knew one thing I, that I remember from the last time he got dropped. That was the Munoz fight in the first round. Munoz dropping and then Munoz on a lot of him. Like, just throw every single ounce to put him out. When I drop him, if you, can see I was calculated. I, I never went apeshit. I never went crazy. I was like, Let's take your time. Be a sniper. When you have somebody hurt, you don't have to kill him. You just have to touch him again. Touch him again. And coach was doing a great fucking job on just telling me the right little things. And I think I think we we show up a little better in the last fight. And next time we will show up even better. So I just feel we're adding wrinkles to my game. I feel like I'm just getting better by practice. I'm better by by every day in the job. And I said it and I will say it again. I'm becoming a pro because I'm, I'm I'm getting better. I'm getting better. You know, that again, that performance was fucking cool. But that's in the past. I don't live or enjoy myself because why I just did. I forgot about it. I'm going to take the good. Try to take away the bad and get better for the next one. I don't live up for that moment. I live up for different things. That alone is business. My life is what really makes me happy. So from now on, just keep getting better. Keep adding wrinkles to the game. Keep figuring it out how to just become a better fighter because this year, this year is coming up are the best years of my life. And I'm going to take a lot of advantage of it. Uh, Eric Nixick, the coach from Extreme Couture, had this tweet in the middle of the fight. I'm sure you've seen it since, where he was saying, yeah. like, the, the kick is right there. And then you, at the post-fight press conference, mentioned an exchange that you had with your head coach, Jason Perillo, who's one of the very best in the game, and what he's done with you and so many others, nothing short of amazing. Uh, I hate to ask you to repeat the story, but it's amazing, because Eric was getting all this credit, but you said that he sent you a picture of that exact moment, and that was it? Like, telling you that the opening was there? Yeah, like like seven days ago, I can go back to my message and I will send a screenshot later. He sent me two pictures. He don't say nothing. He don't write nothing. He sent me just a picture of, of Munoz kicking him literally right on the hip bone and Dominic's head was deep in full in the other side. And he sent me that, that picture. And we just understand each other so much that I didn't even ask him how, why, or what is that. I just saw that and I was like, okay. And I, there's one, the first thing that came to my head was a decoy, decoy, decoy. Throw something here, you move there, throw whatever as hard as you can on the other side. And it worked. And he did tell me in the third round, in the break of the third round, going to the first, like, hey, you're this close to catching. Keep throwing. I like the energy. I like that you're not getting discouraged when you're missing. And what I like the most, you're not losing your balance. You're throwing, even when you throw in the air that hard, your base is fucking beautiful. He was happy. He was happy with the work. And then he told me, just do your thing. Just throw a, just throw anything hard at the end in any side. Wow. And dude, it was like, boom, dude, that fucking thing sound was heavy. I felt, I felt the energy in my leg. I was like, that's it. And that's why I, I called. I was like, thank you, coach. I was like, that was like really like, Little reminders. I, a lot of coaches talk a lot of bullshit. They try to motivate you. They try to play Mr. Strong, but read what's in there is the most important. And Perillo is really good at reading what's going on in there. What was also amazing was you're in San Diego, his hometown, and the place exploded, which I thought was great. Obviously, I, I believe there were a lot of uh, you know Latino fans there. Did you feel the love? Like I didn't feel like you were being booed. I didn't feel like you were getting any type of hate. I think that arena was for me. I really think that people like what I'm bringing to the table. Oh, yeah. I think they love the show. 
and I think they like the reason I do it. And that's what I said before the fight. Don't be surprised. If, don't be surprised if, if if people are shooting for me. And when I walk out, there was no boo. At least that I hear, right. I hear just people cheating. And then when the fight start, there was a chant. Cheeto, cheeto, cheeto. I was like, holy fuck. I was like, this is fucking beautiful. Yeah. And that's just fucking, that's just gas in the fire. Gas in the fucking fire. And I have a lot of wood to burn. So I was like, I like this. My workout, it was electric. I, it, you know, I watch a lot of fighting. I watch a lot of tape. It feels that when I was walking to the cage, I felt like Anderson Silva with the gi and the hat backwards, walking and touching people's hands. The way he always was kind of like dancing and going really happy. Kind of like a John Jones vibe too when they when they walk out. I felt like that. I felt like I felt like what I was doing, the energy around me was when I was a kid watching in my house, watching them out wow. and seeing their their aura just like powerful energy. And I was like, that's exactly how I feel when I was dancing, touching people's hands left and right. And the music, everything was just it was it was perfect. It was it was great. And that motivated me just to fight harder. Just to stay more focused. Just to be like, this is fucking sweet. Are you thinking about that in the moment or is this after the fact? When I was walking, wow. I felt when I was walking in the cage, the enjoyment was so much and my memory is really solid that I kind of was watching myself from and I remember Anderson walk out, John John walk out, GSP walking out in Canada and just that like everything is for you there. Go and take it. Because I don't know. I, this is the first time I headlined an, an, an arena. Like the Apex was the best, the biggest opportunity of my life because brought me to this, brought me to, to Saturday night. That I'm the kid that came from so far away. And I headlined in San Diego, California with a sold arena. I was just Whatever the fuck makes the happiness in the brain, that thing was fucking coming hard. It's like, boom, boom, boom. I, I love it. I fucking love it. I love the clip, two clips. One where Action Bronson, Bam Bam, is cheering for you cage side, and he's so happy, and you can just see the love that he has for you. And then the clip of you two in the back, him hugging you with that bear hug. I felt that bear hug before. It's a tremendous bear hug. The love that you guys that's have for a, each other is a beautiful thing. That's a real brother right there. That's a real brother right there. And to be honest, when I was in the locker room, somehow this time I was able to, from the TV, I was able to pick up everybody, which I didn't like that part. I watched my wife. I watched action. I watched like everybody that came from me, my friends from, from, from LA, my friends from Ecuador, my family. I was... They, they literally were showing everybody, like, just like, I was able to see, oh, he's there. Oh, he's, I was like, fuck, I got to perform for these people. Like, these people, they didn't even came here for nothing. They want me to win. And I was like, okay, let's fucking go. Let's do it. And, you know, the, war, the warm up was good. And, you know, like back in the day, you, now you have a locker room with other people, many energy going around, you know. Win, lose, people getting hectic, people getting angry, people walking out. So all the little things, everything, it was just like, holy fuck, like the old days again, like, like we're going big and I'm the fucking money man. Like, like this whole car is, is built around me. Just those little fucking things, I appreciate them so much. That just make me, I put way more value on everything I do and I put way more responsibility in everything I do. And it just, it just feels so fucking good to live this life right now and knowing that I can keep it up and just keep doing it and getting better. It's fucking awesome. Also, did you see the clip of Rockhold reacting to the win? Like the happiness? He was like, he was like shaking. He was, he was fucking, yeah. Isn't I, it amazing was, to see how happy people were for you? It's cool, dude. It's cool. Like, 
Just put a smile on me, knowing that I can put a smile on people, and that's that's a good thing about just just making sure you're, you're living your best life. Just just be yourself, be nice, surround your, surround yourself with people that will uplift you, make you feel better, and you can do something for them in a good way. It's just it's just not that's what that's what like one of my favorite rappers from from Spain when in one of his rap songs he said something about like don't get confused with 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 temporary fame when some people have like that eternal popularity like you know there's people that they're forever famous they're forever something they're forever important but not just because that that moment mom, that moment of that day those 30 seconds that some people have of fame and they think that's it and they can just live out of that is it's just that that other thing that is a little greater, a little longer, but it's just good. It's natural. It's healthy, and that I feel that's what I bring. That's what I have around me. I have I have good people around me, great people, cool people, and it just everything just feels good, smells good, and that doesn't mean hard days or bad days will come to us. It's just the way life goes. But it's how you handle it, how you take care of business, how you how you surpass those bad times or moments is how how far and how great you will make it. And I think we're here for a for, for a long, good time. Title shot next. Possible. I would love to. Is that is that a possibility? Do you do you believe that it could happen next? Yeah. I it could happen literally after what happened in Abu Dhabi. It it really comes down to I said it before, it really comes down to performance. Right. Like show me what you can do, and you know I want like I want like I give you what you want. They don't want winning is is great. Winning is the most important thing. It's not the only thing. It's the most important thing. Fuck the rest. But winning like that is what you just go and you keep going to the other place. Just keep climbing ahead. So that's what they want. They want choking shit. They want to be like oh fuck. They love it. They love it. Do you first? And if you don't get I the title shot, it. who who makes sense? And they are in the top five. I'm a top five guy, right? So yeah. I don't I don't know if I'm gonna move up. Maybe I move a spot. Maybe I said top five. Who not? Who, who knows? And I don't give a fuck because rankings are rankings are nothing. Just win. Just win, and you fight for the bill. Win, and you keep it. So it's simple for me. So. We have all we have all those top five guys lined up. We got Mirab and Aldo next week. And um, them Corey and Sonja Dunn. Them Jan and O'Malley, Sterling and Dillashon. You know, it's it's really up to what happened with those fights. Like anything can happen. And really at that level, it's really who is come more prepared. Who was for the longer time getting better. I'm bringing something new and it's staying focused. We don't know all, none of those things. We just saw these little interviews. We just saw little clips, but we just see the last couple of fights. But what you're doing from, from now to to the final line is what are, are going to make you get ahead because the level is high. Everybody's good. So who comes more ready? I think they can really give me the title fight. I'm asking crazy for it. I'm thinking I deserve it. I don't... I'm not full of shit, so and I don't I don't waste my energy on things I cannot control. The UFC like me, sure, they love me. They not like me, a thousand percent. They want me to be a world champion, sure. I sell. So the arena. If that if that arena will be with three thousand people, four thousand people, they're like, okay, we got we have a little problem. Maybe you gotta keep just winning like that to see what we can do. The way I want, how I put the crown on their feet, that's all they want. All the smoke, and I have it. Uh, there's also the X factor uh, known as Henry Cejudo. Yeah, he can, he can, he can come back too. He can get it. Uh, and since he's a former champ, he never lost the belt. He just retired. Maybe because you saw this guy. Who knows? Wow. Um, wow. But you know, if he comes back and he skips the line. That wouldn't bother me. Like, really, like, why that would bother me? 
I feel like these guys get so crazy online, like, you know, just, dude, we are adults. And they're really bitch about, like, oh, you're retired. Oh, you're fine. Oh, uh, you guys are fucking pussies. I'm like, I'm like, what the fuck? This is fucking fighting, boys. This, this ain't fucking Disney Channel or some shit like that. Like, you know, you can fight for your sport like that. You just fucking call Dana and he will answer you. He will tell you the truth. It's like, I'm next, yes or no. Don't go fucking all bitch online crying. So if he comes back, he comes back too. He can get it. Anyone can give it to him. I can definitely give it to him. So we'll see what happens. Just keep it simple. Keep it real. Keep it going. Uh, you want to fight again this year? Yeah. I could. I'm healthy. I'm really healthy. I don't have, I have nothing on my body. And, you know, I've been, I've been chilling today. My mom and dad is still here. So, you know, I'm just making sure we have the best time. We can laugh a lot. We can just talk a lot. And, you know, go back to the gym very, very soon. I'm already getting bored. I swear to God, I'm a fucking weird person, dude. I, it's almost like I like to be tired and just, Going after, I, I, I actually, this is the real truth. I enjoy training, and that that can be a problem too because you know you you train too hard is is bad. But that's a good thing about this when you're when you're good here. You're confident enough to take time off too when you need it, and I have a fucking good coach that knows when to pull me down, pull me up. So I think we're going to the good direction. I'm gonna be a world champion. When? I don't know. If, if if anybody can see the future, nobody will be stuck in a hole at some point in life. But I'm going to be a world champion. That's without a doubt. That's a thousand percent sure. That's a fact. I'm going to be a world champion. When? Who knows? Soon? Maybe. Uh, just two, Very soon. two more things before I let you go. Um, I got a lot of time for you. I appreciate it. Thank you. But I don't want to take you away from your your parents and your family. Um, it, speaking of family, it was so nice to see your kids in the in the cage and whatnot. Was that the correct me if I'm wrong? Was that the first time you were able to bring them all in there? On no, 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 that's why my wife and my three kids came to the cage. But this time in the apex too against Rob yeah. Font. Oh, okay, all right. Uh, yeah, my 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 daughter shoes is still having drop of blood on her shoes. Oh my gosh. And she wore them again. Wow. She's like, Dad, this is, and this is, this, this thing's got blood on the last time. I'm like, I'm like, you should clean that or have mom clean it or give it to clean. I, she kind of like, take it like a prize. I was like, okay, cool. You, you want to rock it, rock it. <laughs> uh, but it must have been amazing right now. Like it's different, right? To have it them all there. Weird. Were your parents there too in, in the cage? Mm, I think so. Oh, they went. They came backstage with me for sure. Okay. No, they they, they were. I don't think they made it, there, but they did came backstage. But I had my two friends from Ecuador. One corner me. His brother was sitting with my wife. So they come to the cage. Then we have the whole team inside, dude. Yeah, it was just now that you're talking about that. You bring the memories like again when I was a kid. I was watching UFC, watching Lions fights or win world titles, and families in the cage, and you just ask yourself. Did one day I'm going to be able to do that? Like, because you you ask yourself, like, I'm going to do that one day. Is that, that's where I'm heading? That's what I really want? And now that it's happening, it's just like, just like, wow. Like, life is amazing if you, if you actually try, if you go and get it. Like, a lot of people is just afraid to speak their mind and go after things that are, that are great, that they're big in life, just because they're hard to get. But when you have, when you can sit in there and in your heart, in your gut, you believe it, you will live it. And fuck, the Saturday night was, was amazing. Just having my mom, this is the first time ever my mom was able to watch a fight. Normally she goes and pray and walks around the neighborhood and just go crazy. Last time she came, but she came to the apex and she said, fuck it. She left. She couldn't. This time wow. she watched like a fucking champ. And, you know, they're, 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 they also get better at it because it's not easy to see your yeah. somebody that you love getting in the cage. It's, it's not fun. And, you know, it was my mom, my dad, my sister, her, her, her husband, my auntie, my uncle, and my whole family, my wife, my three kids 
in the arena. So, you know, I just have a, I just have a real reason to shine. I have a real reason to do things. I'm sure everybody else does it too, but I just make sure minds are strong. And, you know, I remember uh, early days of the pandemic, uh, I was doing these Instagram lives and you would pop in sometimes and we were talking about old school MMA. I think we even talked about Diaz Daily, which happened at that same arena in San Diego back in 2011. Mm -hmm. And I know you have a great appreciation for fighting and for the history of the sport. And then I see, you know, someone texted me earlier and like, I love Cheeto, but I wish he didn't say that Dom was low level. And I was like, look, Cheeto, like Dom, is someone who speaks from his heart and doesn't sugarcoat. But I know, and I will ask him this, you have respect for Dominic Cruz, and I think you have respect for what he's done in this sport and who he is and the legend. I know that you respect the history of this sport. And so can you can you back me up on that? Because I know you guys were saying things and stuff like that. Oh. But you 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 do respect this man and what he's done in the sport, right? I respect I respect a thousand percent him for what he did. He, I said this in the press conference. He made Bantam way cool. He was the name that brought up the Bantam. When he was a champion and he was fighting other people, he was fighting all right guys. He was a cool guy making the name for the division. And I think the reason there's a big gap between 125 and 135 in terms of names, because he was a WC champ, came to the UFC and got the belt, even when he was injured over the years, no one forgot about it. He come back. He did what he did against Mr. Gaki, which was fucking phenomenal. Then again, he broke fucking something. Come back, beats TJ. That's fucking amazing. But I can't bring any of these emotions sure. or respect once we're firing. And I'm going to explain a little bit when I say the low-level thing. Talking about fighting, like fighting technique, doesn't matter what your style is. Like we got a guy like Alessandra. Like he's very flashy, right? Like he's very technical. But he has a real solid base. His technique is sharp as fuck. But he's really flashy. So that's one thing. With Dominic, the super nurtured movement that he does, me, we, we, me and my team, me and my coach, we think that's a low level style to do. MMA. It's just our opinion. It's a fact. Maybe we prove it because the way we finish it. But I wasn't talking shit on the way like, oh, low level, like he suck. I don't think he suck. I don't I don't think at all that he suck. It's the movements we don't think work for MMA because there's kicks, elbows, knees. There's so much shit that you can run into it moving like that. Yeah, you make a little trick, sure. But he's not having a good base. When I said to a good base, it's like a proper fundamentals. Mm. Like, throw good combos, move well, move your feet correctly instead of just like doing crazy back and forth. They make it a little harder, but it's not technically or correctly for us. And that's an, that's an opinion. That's what I said. That. I was like, yes, I say it like that and I mean it. It just sound a little fucked up like well, I was just talking shit. I wasn't talking shit. Okay. And I do respect it. I like, fuck, you know. And the way they put him out, I had a little bit of pressure going to that fight because, you know, in the history books, never lost a long title fight. That's already pressure for me. But all this motivation for me. Because now you want that. You want to knock the door, you want to open it. So finishing, finishing him the way that I finish him, it's a great fucking cherry for my career. It's, it's beautiful because I, I didn't just beat him. I put him out cold, which that's the ultimate thing to do, you know? And it feels good. It feels good. But I'm, I'm definitely respecting him. I'm for sure not his friend. I'm not, I'm not trying to be his friend, but I respect him. I have respect for him and I appreciate what he did because without a guy like that, maybe Bantam wouldn't be as good as it is. Much love, Cheeto. So happy for you. Congratulations. Keep doing your thing. Four in a row now. And I can't wait till you get that title shot because I'll keep playing that clip of me saying you were going to fight for the belt when no one believed it, Cheeto. I believed it. Don't forget it, my friend. All right? Let's go. I won. Orale. I don't forget. Thank you, my brother. Appreciate You're the it. man.
Talk to you soon. All the best. You too. I'm surprised you even have the beard, by the way. I thought you were going to shave it because you 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 change the look every. Day. I am shaving, yeah. <laughs> but like, this is the first time I fight with my head fully shaved. It's a good look. A longer beard. I like it. So, I like it too. I'm a fucking Viking. So we'll see what I do next. But I'm always changing. I'm always changing. always always. Much love. Thank you so much, Cheeto. Thank you, my brother. All right. Talk to you soon. Thanks, everybody. There he is, Marlon Vera. What a huge win for him on Saturday. Main event, San Diego. What a moment. What a guy. What a legend. He is going to fight for a belt one day. I said it last year when no one was saying it, and uh, it is slowly but surely coming to fruition. And I feel like I have had the same sorts of uh, thoughts and feelings about our final guest of the day, who is just a mere five days away now from finally fighting for the belt. What a long journey it has been dating back to, oh, I don't know, you want to start this journey, 2015. He'd probably started way before that growing up and everything that he has had to overcome to get to this point. And of course, the last three years, well-documented. He is now in Utah. He has been there for several days. He is headlining UFC 278, August 20th, this Saturday against Kamaru Usman, the man who many consider to be the pound-for-pound -pound best fighter on the planet. And of course, the UFC welterweight champion. Of course, he is the pride of Birmingham. He's the pride of... Jamaica as well. He's the one and only Leon Rocky Edwards. There he is. Rocky, we're here. We're finally here, Leon. Oh, oh Leon Edwards. Oh my gosh. I'm hyped. How are we feeling? I, you know, I told Tim, I just, I, I, I didn't think it would be right if we don't check in on the Monday. I'm not going to keep you long, but how are we feeling? How's everything? What's the mind like? What's the body like? Tell us, tell us. Um, I feel good. I, I came out here, like I said, seven days, well, 10 days ago. Um, my body is good. The air is good. Everything is just perfect. You know, I truly feel like this is it. I belong, I belong here and this is how it's meant to be. And I, I, I'm excited for, for next week, for next week, well, Saturday, five days. Saturday. Um, does it feel uh, crazy that you're, you're next up? Like, this is it. This is your, this is your title fight week. It's, it's weird. Eh? It, feel, it feels a bit like. I just feel like I belong here. I don't feel uh, like nervous. Um, I don't feel like it's a big fight. I just feel like it's another main event for the UFC. And um, obviously, I'm, I'm excited. I am. I just feel like I belong. I don't feel like out place. I don't feel that the pressure is going to get to. I feel like this is it, and this is where it's meant to be, and this is how I'm meant to be right now. And uh, I'm, I'm excited. Now, the last time we spoke, uh, you revealed that you had never heard of Utah before. You had no idea where it was. Now you've been there for a week. What is it like? Tell me about Utah. I've never been there myself. It's, it's, it's beautiful with the mountains anyway. Yeah. Some good mountains. It's like an outdoorsy place, right? Like yeah. In the winter, it's like good for like snowboarding and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no, no good for me. I'm black, but the, 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 <laughs> the mines the the are good. But like, even from the house, it doesn't can stay over there. Oh, yeah. The, the mines, oh, wow. Yeah, That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, exactly. So it's, it's nice there, man. I enjoy it. I prefer it like for the air. In Vegas, you know. What about, I mean, you mentioned uh, your skin color. How many black people have you seen there in Utah? Because that's always the joke with the players, the no, basketball no. players, that there are no um, black people living there. I, li I literally don't understand. I went to, went to that shopping like, like a couple of days ago. I saw like one or two. Like, <laughs> like sprinkling about, you know. <laughs> but apart from that, there's literally, there's, there's none here, but the neighbors in this neighborhood, they're, they're, they're very nice. They keep like waving <laughs> We're not a black guy and shit. <laughs> <laughs> do they realize who you are? Like, do they do they understand what you're doing there? Um, now they do. I've been telling them no, but I don't, it's mad. I don't know why the UFC came here because when talking about the UFC, they're like, oh. I didn't, I didn't know who was in it. <laughs> when I asked people like, in in town, like, what's going on? They said, oh, I didn't know the UFC was even in in town. You know, which is crazy. I was like, that's mad, but it is what it is. Uh, I'm, I'm in drama time here. It's almost, I feel like it's fitting for your career that it's happening there, right? Like you, you've been under the radar. This is an under the radar spot. You know what I'm saying? Like there's some, there's almost, almost something, this, this never could have happened in Las Vegas. It wasn't supposed to be like that for you. I feel like this is symbolic of your whole entire existence in the sport. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I feel you. I feel you. I, I believe so. I believe, like I said, I feel this is the perfect, perfect time for us to compete. This is the perfect time. This is where I belong. You know, I, like normally when I'm fighting, I can I feel like nervous or like this far out, but now I just feel like I feel belonging, you know. I feel like I, I deserve to be here. 
Has uh, been a long time coming. I said this to you after our conversation when the fight was first announced, and then I, I even said it to your. Hey, there's Tim right there, right? That was Tim right there. That's, 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 that's a different white man. Oh, wow. <laughs> it looked just like him. Oh, what's up, Tim? How are you? Uh, it looked exactly like Tim with the shaved head. Um, but I, I said it to him after the press conference that you guys had uh, around a month or so ago, and I was like. I feel like for so long you were, oh yeah, now I see that is not Tim. Uh, for so long you had this like edge where you were trying to convince people that you need to fight for a belt. But now that that's gone, it feels like you are so calm, so happy. This weight has been lifted and now you could just flow into this fight. You know what I mean? Like even watching you at the press conference, you were different than in the past. That interview, yeah. you were different in the past. It feels like everything is different about you. Do you get what I'm saying there? Yeah, 100%. I, I feel like, a, like you said, it's been a long time coming. It doesn't feel like a, like I rushed, like I, like I rushed into this position, you know, I feel like, obviously the ups and downs was annoying, you know, but I feel like it all happened for a reason and um, I'm here now, you know, and I'm just taking full, 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 both hands, grab, grab both hands and, um, yeah, I, 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 feel, I feel good, my body feels good, my mind feels good, uh, my team feels good and we've got to get the, the perfect game plan going into the fight and um, I'm excited. What about his energy? What did you feel from him at the press conference? I haven't seen him for, for a while, you know. I, I think the last time I've seen him, I was probably like a little skinny kid. So now he's seen me, I'm like, I've, I've grown I've grown up and got bigger. And um, if it wasn't, it wasn't just Usman, you know, he hasn't said nothing dis disrespectful from what I, what, what I um, heard. And uh, like, same as me, I'm not going in there thinking oh, I hate this guy. I don't. I'm going in there to be, to achieve my dreams and you know, how to put the icing on the cake from, like I said, coming from Jamaica. Um, Going through um, immigrating to the UK, going my dad dying up there. This all is coming to, coming into this, you know. I truly believe this this is all for this, you know. And um, that's all it is for me. It's not it's nothing to do about me hating him or, or whatever. It's just that what it is. Why does he never wear a shirt though at these press conferences? I mean, can he? Put I know. A shirt? I, mean, I, was about, I, was about, I was about to say that. It looks like the fucking you know Terry Crews from yes. White Chicks. Yes. Yeah. Well, like what's going on? Why? I don't know. It's changed there. Or he was, you know, he's man. No, no, got a t-shirt on. Never. He's, I don't know. I don't, I don't. I don't know what's going on. The money's getting to his head. Do you? Do you really feel that way? Because it, it happens to every fighter, right? You reach a certain yeah, point. Hundred percent. The door's getting to his head. Listen, it is like no t-shirts ever again. He just <laughs> embraced Africa. From <laughs> embraced Africa, like really. You know what I mean? It's just like it's a mad, a mad situation. I feel it's. it's it's truly getting to that. I believe so. Between that and the injury recently and the surgery, you feel like he's he's primed for, you know, a loss here. This is it. The stars are aligning. I hope not. I, hope not. I, don't, I, don't, I don't. I don't. want that to be the excuse. You know, because that, right. that would take the, the win away from me. You know, I want. I want him to be everyone that claims that he's number one pound for pound. That's what I want in the cage when when, when I compete. You know, when I lost, I made the excuses. I said, listen, uh, that that was it. You beat me. You got a decision over me, and that's it. I moved on, went, um, got better, improved myself, and now here we are again. So I don't want none of them excuses about oh, I weren't focused and blah 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 hand injuries. I want Kamar Usman now. What about that promo from BT Sport when you're doing like all the the ninja stuff? Did you see that? Yeah, how sick is it? That was uh, amazing. I was, I was, I was, They're the best. Yeah, it was sick. I was in London, but it's like uh, when you're filming it, it felt weird. Okay, like blindfolded for the, like the whole the whole thing. So they don't you know what the fuck is going on, but. Where it, where it turned out was he oh, just all the all the ones you know the one the one that did for Woodley was good as well that was a good one as well yes that the that's the the cartoon one right oh, cartoon one yeah yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That, 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 that's the best thing I, 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 I like that one. That we, yeah, we're actually playing it right now. It's incredible. The the stuff that they do is amazing. And I think today there's like a documentary coming out about you. Yeah, yeah, coming, right. Yeah, for sure. For and they sure, followed yeah, you yeah. for a long time. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, following for a few fights, and um, I think it'll, it's all coming out tonight. I'm trying to watch it over here. I don't know how, but I'm trying to find it over here. I'm sure they could get you a link over there. I mean, it's about you, for goodness <laughs> sakes. Um, nah, definitely. And I also saw, what was this? You, you you were carrying the torch for the Commonwealth Games? What was that? I'm a man of the people now. I everyone. mean, <laughs> golly, look at you. In the neighborhood? <laughs> Where were you? Was that in your neighborhood? Yeah, that's, that's the neighborhood that I grew up in. You know? I was like, wow. when, I, when I was younger, I used to like, do like match on them streets. So now to like be crying a torch and being clapped and shit, it was like it was weird to, to do it, you know. But um, I, I enjoyed it. And to have it come away from Birmingham, it's a big thing for the city, you know. So I'm happy to be a part of it. And I wish I could have like been out there to see like some of the sprinters and um, the athletes, you know. 
Were you getting a lot of love before you left? Like people recognize what's going on here? I feel like even at the event yeah, yeah. that you were at, like you, you were getting the big pop now, people were starting to treat you like the star. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's, it's grown a lot, in, in, especially in the UK. It's, my my stardom has grown a lot, you know, and um, before this fight, literally ever I walk to the uh, Winnie Fan Usman, Winnie Fan Usman, um, now here we are and constantly I'm, I'm on my, my Instagram and my, when I'm out, just like they're, they're all excited and they're excited for me to bring about back home, you know. Did you see his tweet where he was saying that they woke him up early? Usada was waking him up early, and he was upset about it. You see that tweet? Have they woken yeah, you up early that. as well? Um, no, not not at five a.m. <laughs> they came to my house. <laughs> to my, I, I don't. I, I look like a normal guy. Don't error. I That's look like I'm a fucking juice. Yeah, you yeah. know that man like it's on juice. So if I was Usada, I'd do the same thing. Um, but now nah, I, got, I got tested a few times. But I, I like normal times now, like nine o'clock and um, ten o'clock. You think he's on juice, Leon? Uh, I don't know. Who cares? You don't care? You don't think about nah. that? Not really. It is what it is, isn't it? If he is, he is. If he ain't, he ain't. That's it. You don't care. You're still going out there to do the damn thing. Going out there to get that bout arrow. You could be, could be juiced, juiced up as much as you want. It doesn't matter. I'm going there to be to be a world champion and even being in juice and not stop that. And and as far as like everyone there, like your brother's there, is, 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 is yeah, you got everyone, everyone's sorted. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. Gone for like a hike somewhere. Left me in the house. I've gone for like a hike. Okay. Um. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just saying now, me, Tim, my all my co- everyone's there. Everyone's there. About fifteen of us in one house, and um, just so chilling. This is a huge day for uh, UK combat sports with Joshua fighting on the same day. Not going to be at the same time, but it all culminates with you and your moment on Saturday, August twentieth, in Salt Lake City. Have you have you allowed yourself to even dream of like? The scenarios, the feeling, belt around your waist. Like, do you do that at night before you're going to sleep? Yeah. And if so, what, is there is there a constant dream scenario that keeps playing in your mind? Um, I was always just picture me being with you know, I always pictured about getting wrapped around my waist, and um, I've, I've pictured many things. I've, it changed as, as 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 the days as the days go on. You know, like how I win. Um, I picture myself being down and I have to come back and win. I picture it all. You know, and um, I always picture even the worst scenario that might happen in a fight and I have to pull through and come back to get a victory. I never just picture just me always being easy, make, making an easy fight in my brain, you know. I always make it a hard fight in my brain. So when it does happen, I'm, I'm, I'm prepared if it does happen. Do you, do, you, do you think about the title being wrapped around your waist? Yeah. It always ends with me getting wrapped around my waist. So no, matter how much, no matter how the fight goes in my, in my, in my mind, at the end, I'm always victorious. I know I've never seen me losing. You know. Do you even watch the first fight? Um, I've been watching it for this, for this camp. Or I'm watching really? it. Even, like every go, literally it's on every <laughs> every look is showing it. You know, but since before that, I haven't seen it for like five years. You know, so when I, when I, when I watched about like this camp for for the first time, and I thought, oh shit, I was actually doing decent defending. Is 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 grappling? You know. Even though I didn't know how to grapple, right. but I actually didn't. I actually didn't all right. So, um, yeah, it is what it is. By the way, before I let you go, because you're related to both guys, your your story's tied to both guys. Just curious, uh, Nate and Hamza, what do you make of this whole situation? Um, obviously they're both grown ass men. They both choose to fight each other. I also would have preferred, or if if I was Nate anyway, to fight someone else and um, probably like another veteran in the sport and go off into, into the sunset like that, you know, but. Um, the UFC is the UFC and they're going to do what they want to do you know and um, fair play to Nate for taking it is when, when it's all said and done he's going to go down as a mad <laughs> tough tough motherfucker you know and fair play to him man man you win this fight on Saturday I mean they may when when when, when. when. sorry excuse me I, yes, sorry yes, sorry yes. they'll probably want to do a trilogy if not it's probably you know if Hamza beats Nate then it's either Hamza it maybe a like this is the beginning of a whole new chapter of your life that's, that, that's what I've been wanting anyway. I believe I'm number one anyway, Arrow. So bring them all on one by one. I, you know what? I'm just happy I don't have to, you know, fight the good fight for you over here. I don't have to take the bullets for you anymore. We're here. I we know made well. it. Well, you're doing well, man. You, you push my, you're pushing it for like for years to be fair. So I know. Thank you for helping me. And now we're here. Here we are, five days away. We'll talk to you on Monday when you have the belt. Deal? Trap time. Facts. Yeah, for sure. Where will you be on Monday? Um, I don't know. 
You go. Um, you're gonna stay. You're gonna stay a couple of days there with the belt. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, my, my mom is found me an arrow. <laughs> okay. All right. We got to let mom uh, talk to you. Uh, Leon, you're the man. Good luck to you. I wish you the best, my friend. Get her done on Saturday, and we'll talk to you afterwards. All the best. Have a great week over there, and uh, much love and much uh, much luck on uh, Saturday night. Good man. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you for doing this, Leon. I appreciate you. There he is. Leon Edwards, kind enough to join us. Listen, when mom calls, uh, you got to... You got to pick up. Wow. What a day. I mean, that is a marathon of a day, guys. I mean, and we're not even done. Oh, Lee, uh, let me put a, what should I put a little 10, seven here? Bang. A little 10, seven in the chat. Bang. A little Helwani face in the chat. Bang. A little Barry Horowitz in the chat. Bang. A little Oh My in the chat. What's the last one? Oh, the Westphalia. Bang. A little was failing in the chat. I mean, we could go all day. Man, what a day. Is anyone, uh, Frank, you still there? Yes, I am. I feel like we spoke like five hours ago. This is old school right here. We used to do shows that would go on for like six, seven hours. It's the best way to do it. Is it? Some might say otherwise. Who? I don't know. My wife. Uh -oh. um, all right, we got to check in with the guys if they're still around. And then we'll wrap this bad boy up uh, back on Wednesday, of course. And uh, by the way, it's very hot in here. Is there any AC? I'm just joking. Let's say hello to our good friends over at DraftKings. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What is this, the Smashing Pumpkins? No. Get in on the hottest sports action for your shot at cold, hard cash. With DraftKings Sportsbook, bet on your favorite sports all summer long and gear for football season. Right now, new customers can get a risk-free bet of up to $1,000. Just make your first bet up to $1,000, and if it doesn't hit, you'll get another shot at a big win. Feel the thrill of every sports season in a whole new way by betting on baseball, golf, MMA, and more. Plus, with same-game parlay spreads, money lines, over-unders, and props, your betting options feel endless. Best of all, DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable. Deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code the MMA Hour. Make your first deposit and get a risk-free bet of up to $1,000. That's promo code the MMA Hour only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com and show notes for details. Please support them because they support us. All right, let's talk, guys. I'm going to do very little talking. Well, Why? that's not going to go very well then. <laughs> you. you act like you've been talking all day or something. I mean, I'm just tired. Uh, I used to be able to do this, you know, eight, nine years ago, but uh, now the bladder is acting up. I mean, there's all kinds of issues. Yeah, so. lately the bathroom breaks have, uh, you know. What bathroom breaks? Yeah, uh, come on. Uh, yeah, sorry. Way to break the fourth wall there. I mean, golly. Um, all right, so much. I mean, where to even begin? Uh, we could talk about Cheeto Vera. We could talk about Leon stopping by before the big title fight, Cheeto with the big knockout. Uh, Shane Burgos feels like it happened Burgos. legit a week ago. <laughs> I mean... Uh, Dude, my biggest takeaway from Shane is yes? how on earth that man gets down to 145. I know. He didn't even he want to tell huge. me. Like, he is huge. Very, very big featherweight. I see you have some uh, decorations over there near Greg. <laughs> yes. You got the special <laughs> the best, K. The best cereal in the world and the little... Cavs mask up. And where's the uh, the cup? I wasn't going to hang the cup. I'm no, but is it up. next to you? Is that, it's going to be at home. Oh, but like right now? I have it in my bag. Oh, oh okay. I thought that was going to be the in-office coffee mug. Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, I thought he was going to eat the special K earlier. I can't even <laughs> lie. I was like, dude, I'll go buy you a box. I'm tempted. I mean, it's just I'm right tempted. there staring at you. Uh, we're not going to say it, but we have... We have some thoughts as to who may be behind the gifts. We have some. I'm eighty percent sure. Eighty percent. Wow. Wow. I'm not as confident, but I have some. We have whittled it down. A recent clue from another gift that we received after this gift, which was from mysterious. No, excuse me. Two. Well, actually, it's always labeled as from the MMA Hour family, which <laughs> which is always true? very confusing. To mysterious Frank, mysterious Frank, you got a, a gift as well. And I did. Tell us. It was a, a stack of a million dollar bills. And why? Because I said I like money. 
I don't even remember you saying that. Yeah, it was last week. And it wasn't just a stack. It was a... Uh, well, it's a it, it has become a stress toy. A stress toy. No, it's not become. It is. Oh, I thought it was actual money. Oh, I, I thought it was very nice. There I am again checking the mail. Another gift from Mr. Anonymous. This time to Frank for his contribution. He's been using it today, too. Yeah? The bird in, in the background right for Cheeto, he was squeezing it <laughs> oh, hard. You didn't like the bird? I mean, Cheeto was the the main event here, not not the bird. Well, speaking of Cheeto. It should be another show on HBO or something. Oh, wow. Good call. Guys, what happened on Saturday? Uh, what do uh, you have to say? Are you, are you Dude, talking about the parlay? Yeah, you, you said a bunch of topics to talk about. Yeah. That wasn't one of them. So let's just go through that list and then no, we'll address it. That, we were that. wrong. We, I, I'm happy. When you say we, you mean you and your crick, right? Because, I mean, I had five right and then oh. one wrong. And somehow the one wrong it was the one ends that up you costing picked. me. It was the one I that mean, you picked. It's unbelievable. I mean, unbelievable. Did I not pick nickel? Did I not pick downy? Uh, you mentioned nickel. That was never going to happen. We do the parlay on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what we're going to do, have one pick and then add the three after. That's not going to work. Downy was a minus 1,200. You're breaking the rules there. Uh, did I not say Mowgli? Did I not you say... You did. You did. You said Mowgli and... You said uh, them and then you left them up to the... And, I mean... And Josh Quinlan and okay. you didn't go with either of them. Can, can we just talk about how bad a decision it is to let I know. YouTube comment section let's, pick? Let's actually talk about how more impressive it is that you had five You had five winners and only six picks and you picked the one... It is amazing. Won. It truly is amazing. It doesn't matter though because me and... Uh, I was feeling really guilty. Like I, I apologize to you guys. And and there's DC talking about like DC and Bisping are arguing about who's looking better, who's not looking better. I'm like, all right, I feel pretty good about this. DC, you know, got my back there, of course. Yeah, I okay. think DC might have jinxed you with how like he was firm. getting a he little was like, too calm. Ode's yeah. winning the fight. Yeah. Ode is winning the fight right now. Uh, and then he gets then knocked he out. Not. And then I apologize to you guys because I thought all your picks were really good. I mean, honestly, mm. doing those picks again, I would pick Loopy. I would pick. Uh, Lipsky. Lipsky to be Cachoeira, and I thought the two and a half was a great pick as well. Yeah, I felt Thank decent you. about it going into it. Uh, <laughs> if you want me to be totally honest with you, I was having a conversation with someone uh, before the day started, and they and they mentioned the parlay, uh, and I was like, I don't know about this one. I think this one's going to lose. I didn't mind the four picks individually, but all four of them winning. Yeah, uh, We saw how that turned out. You guys didn't out. feel confident. Well, I, I think— I said it on the show. I thought it was kind of he, nice. Here's the thing. The parlays are going to have different odds, right? That one was a riskier one than the ones we've done previously. You have to understand that going in and adjust accordingly. That's that's just what that is. Now, this week we're going to put one together. Yeah, I do know that. We, we made bad reads. It happens. That was that was a bad week. What was the most shocking result? Mm, Loopy not wrestling was yes. shocking, but her like losing, I guess, was not shocking. Angela Hill has a tendency to make fights close. I mean, I I would, I would want to say the the Lipsky, but like that's Cachoeira's style. Yeah, it's that's how Cachoeira like wins. That's that's why that one's not shocking. Is like she, here here I'll give a little bit of a, of a, of a breakdown on my read on that fight. All right. And Lipsky is a better technician. She had more ways to win. Um, and I thought if she's able to execute any of those different ways to win, it would be her fight to lose. The one thing she could not do is get into a firefight with a harder hitter a better puncher and she did um immediately that, that immediate like she got clipped <laughs> once and then decided i'm gonna stand here and trade with with a stronger fighter so bad bad strategy bad game plan but that was the way she would win so if i was you know if cash is gonna win that's how it's gonna be so i can't call it like the more shocking i would i would lean with gc and just say like loopy not going to the wrestling is a little bit head scratching in my opinion yeah, I guess that is the most surprising sort of um, game plan. Strategy. Game plan. Yeah, I still think the Cashewar win was surprising, but Lipsky really hasn't. I don't know. She's she's hot and cold. Yeah, she's really been hot and cold. This was a this this was a fight where she she had the advantages and could have won, and she the, the, it went out the window. It was it was a bad showing, quite frankly. Uh, but. It doesn't matter if you lose one leg. It doesn't matter if you lose all four legs. You lose one, and it's blown, so it's good that we got it out, and now we're going to be back on the winning we're track. Back. Let's go. I know. People were, like, after we lost, who, who was the third one? Lipsky. 
who yep. were like, oh, yeah, oh, and three, man, rough night. It's like, bro, we lost the parlay two hours ago. Right. Like, this thing has been dead. Uh, DraftKings has already graded it as a loss. That money is never coming back into my bank account. Like, I've moved on from it. Um, yeah, you you miss one leg, you you technically miss them all in the parlay. So, time to bounce back. Two seventy eight PFL. But but there is something to be said for the fact. That I think we said we we're going to do this. We're going to start like counting everyone's wins and losses, right? So yeah, Frank yeah, is undefeated. So. To, He's undefeated. To their point, it was, you know, interesting to see how it would play out. And Frank, I feel like you're not speaking enough here because, I mean, this was, you know. I mean, my pick speaks for itself. Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> so this I hear guy. you guys making justifications, rationalizations, but, you know. I think, again, all of Frank picks that he was going to go with were all winners. Yeah, that can't be I mean, true, maybe. I mean, this is an amazing turn of events. The one thing I will say for myself, I need to start thinking the way Frank is thinking. Like, how's that? Nina Nunes versus Cynthia Calvillo was over, you know, like the, the, written all over it. Yeah, you know what I mean. I I I, I kept thinking of just like straight up money line winners. He's thinking of it the A right prop. way. Yeah, I'm not thinking of props, so I need to start doing that. Yeah, absolutely. We, we need to. We'll get you to look at the odds before the show. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> that, that, that's a fair point. Although I'm looking at the odds right now for 278, a lot of big favorites. This is right up my alley. Yeah. Miranda Maverick. Be, 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 on, careful on be careful here. Be careful here. Minus Maverick, 475. Yeah. Uh, sure. Amir Albazi, minus 390. Yeah. Uh, there's another, oh, our good friend uh, Harry Huntsucker is a big time dog against Tyson Pedro. Minus 740 for Tyson Pedro. Alexander Romanov, minus 410. I will say, if you're going to take Pedro, I would just take him inside the distance. A little bit of a prop is what mm, GC is saying. That's way too much pressure. I mean, Hans Zucker has, <laughs> has, not, said, I need he has to be never left like the this, first round like, nope. in his... Is that true? Pro wow. No. Is that before or after the uh, Applebee's fight? The Applebee's fight, he won in the first round. Oh, my God. You're talking about HRMMA, the heavyweight title. Of course. Who could let's, forget? Uh, let's save this for Wednesday. Of course. This is the good stuff. You're right. You're right. You're right. Um, uh, all right. Uh, let's see. How did the people do? Tell us, GC. Uh, sure, yeah. We were recapping the picks from uh, Saturday <laughs> night. Yes. Yeah. Did you forget? I, because I set that up weird. I mean, you could you could go with the people. You could go with yourself, whatever you want. Yeah, we'll start with myself. All right, uh, fine. You know, we'll, like we'll we've go, done it for the past year. We'll go to me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for the past year. Uh, all right, let, let's get the the singles up here. Really well on the singles. I mean, well, we've been finding so, so much success in the parlays lately uh, and kind of struggling on the singles. We do great with the singles. I hit my first same-game parlay. I uh, was wow. pretty excited about that. Uh, also hit the crew's more significant strikes. I mean, we just had the had the main event dialed in on the parlay as well uh, from Frankie over there. So uh, that was nice to see. Parlays, though, we struggled. This is where we fall off. Uh, you know, a lot of red on here. Only only get the one, the the prop parlay. Obviously, the MMA hour parlay, uh, air fryer parlay. I, I love every week, you know, we start off with the air fryer you know, maybe we hit one leg, two legs, and people are like, this air fryer is going to hit. And I'm like, we're not, we're not even halfway there. Mm-hmm. And uh, I missed the rest the rest of the legs on the air fryer. So uh, it is what it is. But because we did so well in the singles, we did win this week up 2.53 units, up 39 on the air, up 51 units all time. We passed the 50-unit mark. Feels good to be here. Feels, uh, feels good to pass the 50 units. Congratulations. That is a big freaking deal. And then I saw I I saw you tweet that, and then I saw someone else say, seventy five. Is that the new goal? Seventy five is the new goal. That's onward and upward. I mean, it's it's not to say we. Is that even doable? Seventy five. I mean, listen. With time, this is a slow burn. That's what I always try to remind everyone. We're in here for the long game. Uh, That's not to say we're not going to drop back below fifty at some point. You know, we will have our losing weeks. Um, But yeah, seventy five, onward and upward. Wow. Have you already started to look at? uh, 278? <laughs> uh, I already have five bets and two parlays. Wow. I mean, usually by this time, I, I already in. have quite a few bets in, yeah. Any, so, like, super early good. ones? Uh, Marab Devalishvili, as soon as that line dropped, yeah. I took him in plus 145. Okay, interesting. But I'm a Marab guy. Oh, now he's a favorite. Fellow Georgian. Yes, he is. I think a lot of people are going to be on Aldo, so I could see that line moving. All right. Uh, Draft King? Yeah. Argandi? And look at this, just just for you this week, I uh, I added the lineup in. Uh, 
Dom Cruz, Nate Landwehr, Lucindo, Mirzakhanov, uh, Mowgli, and Quinlan. Gets it done for him. He wins $125. So even though Cruz lost... Yeah, he still he still scored fifty points because you know he he did outstrike him, landed a lot of significant strikes. That's kind of how you rack up points. I'm still trying to master the game. I finished almost in dead last every single week. I'm kind of just donating five dollars wow. to DraftKings, but uh, it is what it is. All right, big hitters, um, got a ton of these. People did excellent, but there were three that stood out. I'm sorry if you did not make it. It it was almost impossible to top these three. Uh, we will start off at six feet deep. I think a lot of people might have had an idea of what this was going to be. This was the winner. Plus 173,400. Four-leg parlay. Nina Nunez plus 162. Tyson Nam knockout plus 542. Angela Hill decision plus 371. Mearshart round three sub plus 2,090. Jesus. $6 into 10,410. Wow, that is nuts. That's Hall of Fame type stuff. I've got his profile picture framed. We will have it up next show. I mean, that is Hall of Fame level stuff. Oh, and then just as a way to finish the night, he uh, also hit Cheeto round four plus eight. Oh, four. my God. Wins another 276. Uh, that is your big hitter of the evening. Next up. I can't imagine going to bed that night. Be like, <laughs> I, could, I wouldn't have gone to bed. Yeah. I wouldn't have gone to bed because for this next guy, me and my roommate, when we saw it, actually started planning out what we would do with the money as if we won the lottery. It is Johnny Judo at Judo Capper plus 57,300. Three legs. He goes Josh Quinlan KO. Another guy, Mearshart sub round three plus 2,700. Cheeto knockout round three, four, or five plus 900. Parlays it all together. $25.00 into 14350 I mean, that is... Damn. $14,000 would uh, go a long way for me right now. Wow. I mean, that is just fantastic. And then on top of that, uh, he doesn't just kill it with this parlay. He also tweets out before the night all his picks. Here's what he's got for the card. He finishes up over 13 units on the night. I mean, Johnny Judah cashing out on Saturday night. Respect. Uh, Respect. For real. I mean, plus, if you're hitting a plus 57,000 parlay, I don't even think I've ever placed a plus 57,000 parlay. I mean, I guess that's why I'm not hitting him, but unbelievable stuff from him. Last but not least, Teddy Choppa, 99. Uh, he hits this two leg parlay twice. Uh, I don't know what inclined him to place it twice, but he took Marlon Vera KO round four, parlayed with Teofimo Lopez to win in round seven. Plus 2,600, plus wow. 900, pays out plus 26,900, uh, turns $15 into 4,050. Uh, this might have been the most impressive trio uh, we've ever seen on the big hitters. I mean, this was, this was insanity. They the toughest week to make it on the show. These people, I mean, it was just. How do you pick the round like that? You know what I mean? I, dude, I, I have no idea. One of the, like, one of the coolest bets I've made on the show was, uh, Tank. Uh, Tank Davis. Rounds like, yeah. That was my age down. Javante Davis, no, five through eight. Was rounds five through eight. eight. Right. I was giving four rounds. This guy is, this guy is getting... The exact round. He's getting round and method of victory for Marlon and then round for Tiafima. Crazy, man. Wow. Crazy. So shout out to all of them. Congratulations. Here's uh, Six Feet D's picture. It'll be up on Wednesday. Oh, wow. Look and at that. Illustrious Hall of Fame here. Only only few people make it. I think you have to get over plus 100,000 to make it. How many are there? Just three. Just three. Just three. And what are the posters? We've got PFL and we've got uh, Leon and Usman. Of course, PFL 9 and then uh, UFC 278. Could have picked a lot as the secondary, but we're going with Kayla. Yeah, Kayla Harrison. Kayla uh, Harrison. She- I forgot. I should have replaced this with a with a Nottingham Forest picture. I know. What about our squad, huh? My God. First win in uh, the Premier League in 23 years. You were watching. I was watching. Oh, we were all watching. We were all texting. Dean Henderson, man Dean of the Henderson, match. Dean Henderson, loan from uh, Man United. I mean, they're reaching out to me. There's talks of a, of a trip in the works. Can There's I just a say chance this? outside the stadium? I, oh, the chants were amazing. I thought you meant outside the studio. Can I just say one thing? Where's this from? 
I was outside the wow. city ground yesterday. Dino Henderson. Man. Wow, they, what a they legend. All saw that was feet. amazing, yes. And all the fans started chanting it. The love and the the reception that we have received, the reception that we have received from the NF Army, the Nottingham oh Fourth, has been amazing. Unbelievable. It I feels mean, like I'm I'm welcome home. Oh my God. Compared to the toxicity, the hatred, <laughs> oh, the the I mean, it's just it's vile. It's how vile. did I how did I ever support a club like Everton? And you I see, got, you can't you know what's the funniest thing about it is like you can't change teams. First of all, like the whole bit to go to Everton was me changing teams. Second of all, like it was all, you know, I had my heart broken. I, I told you guys this once. Now I realize the experience that I had as a Premier League fan was the wrong kind of experience, was ruined by the toxicity and the hatred and the the vileness of these Everton fans. I, I have now seen the light. I have now seen the light. I have now been blessed by the Nottingham Forest Club, and they're going to be this show's club forever, and we are going to ride them all the way to the top of the table. I saw that they're currently a plus 8,000 to finish top four. Oh, top of the table. Not I, I have I, I placed my uh, to avoid relegation bet last week at minus 140. It's now minus 170 after the big win. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, we're just beating lines over here, even on even on Premier League. There's talks of me attending the Man City match on August 31st. The jealousy I will feel. David versus Goliath. But of course, August 20th, Saturday, not only do we have 278 Usman Edwards, not only do we have uh, Perry MVP, which by the way, talks of a face-to-face between Perry MVP on this program on Wednesday. All right, so stay tuned for that. Not only do we have PFL in London, right? We've got Kayla Harrison and uh, Brendan Lochnane and, and Chris Wade fighting on that card. Not Did I mention Joshua Usyk? I might have not mentioned. Okay, we also have Joshua Usyk now on zone. but we start August 20th. We start the day with oh, good versus personal. evil, with David versus Goliath. We start the day with Nottingham Forest versus Everton. Frank, you can't go. script yeah. this better. Yeah, I know, right? God, I can't wait till they mop the floor with those losers. Those, I mean, yeah. that... I'm not... I'm, Yes. Not certain if it's David versus Goliath. Nah, whatever. Everton. Uh, yeah, they looking. suck. You're right. Whoa, no, no, no. Sorry. Excuse me. A <laughs> versus King. No, no, no. Maybe. Oh, you you might have misunderstood. Nottingham Forest is Goliath. Yes. We're the freaking Goliath. <laughs> Those losers. Those never was. By the way, I'm actually more of a Liverpool fan than Everton at this point. How about that? Wow. That's saying a lot. You know what? I don't... I regret, you know, sometimes you have a great relationship with someone and then you go your separate ways and you're like, you know what, but we, it is better to have loved and lost than to have never loved at all. Do you know that? Yes. I regret I loving. I regret the relationship. Uh, let's get our man Erickson out of, uh, yeah, out of Man City. I mean, they're struggling over yeah. there. Get it. Uh, I mean. let's, let's get him. No, Man United. Out to the forest. Yeah, Man United. I, uh, sorry, you know, still new to this whole. Sure, sure, sure. Prem. Uh, uh, I saw you got roasted pretty hard for calling it EPL. Why? What? What's so bad about that? It is <laughs> the English know. Premier League. Know. By the way, I'm new to this. Conspicuous by his absence in this conversation is New York Rick. I feel like you want nothing to do with this. No, he ignored all our texts. Yeah, he, uh, you did not. You didn't. We're in the, not my, you didn't, not my lane. You, you the, didn't double tap. You didn't do lane. anything. Not even a double tap. Yeah. We're in the final minutes, sweating out the sweating. onslaught that uh, you know. Nottingham Forest was fighting through as I uh, West Ham against West Ham. Yeah, that's right. And uh, this is this is all over done. here. Why? This is you guys. Why? 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 Not, I can't wait to put my. It's scarf a parlay up. pals I'm thing. A, I'm getting a scarf soon. Did you get it? I, I got a I got a patch. I got I'm, a patch for the computer. Let's go. let's go. I'm still I'm still riding with the last time I did this the the Liverpool. Oh, come on. Mm. Uh, but I will say I have to tell you, truly an inspiring like this showing that you're putting on now like truly inspiring. I. But it, it brings to mind, you're talking, like, go. as you talk about this, you're talking about this abusive relationship yeah, yeah, that yeah. you had with Everton. I can't help but wonder why you stick it out with the New York Knickerbockers as they continue to that's, that's step on your throat. That's in my blood. I mean, you just... That's in my blood. <laughs> see how happy you are. It, I, I just, will say, this... Chase happiness. This fan it. base is, I mean, 
You know, it's a, a, the, I see people saying like you're a bandwagon jumper. This team okay. was in relegation for 23 years. Also, who cares? I'm so yeah. happy though uh, that we I'm picked okay them that. for all the like. What a story! What a fan base! I've been I've been watching and reading about the great Brian Clough. <laughs> come on, stop. legendary Legend. manager. I, I mean, Legend. come on. I've been reading all about. It. I've been listening. <laughs> <laughs> to Men in Blazers, uh -huh. interviewing yes. their CEO, Dane, a Connecticut resident. I mean, it's just... So all I'm saying is I want this happiness for you. You're right. All, there is something to be aspects. said. There is something to be said. But Find it. no, with my with my other clubs, my uh, North American clubs, I can't, you know, I can't jump. I can't uh, abandon ship. But golly, it's sort of like DJ in the UFC. I wish I did it a few years earlier. You know, <laughs> I wish I just ended it a few years earlier. What a, what a show by DJ today. Good stuff. You know what was so great about that DJ quote-unquote interview slash conversation? I don't feel like the interview ever started. Oh, I was about to say, why are you saying quote well, Because I just that feel was... like he was, I, I was legit happy to see him. I yeah. felt like I was seeing an old friend. Two, pal two pals just catching up. I had nothing like ready to talk to him. I just was like, oh, and so let's talk about this. And then remember when you did that? Do you remember that letter interview? I do. That was Dude, crazy. He was on fire. Oh my like, God. I remember getting the letter and being like, holy shit, DJ wrote this? Yeah. He was really pissed. I mean, wouldn't you be? I mean, he laid it out pretty yeah. pretty well here. I love how when he walked in, the first thing he said, he was just like, man, it's hot as hell in here. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get a picture with him? Yeah. Dude. What about Shane? No, I didn't give him one. No, Shane. No, no. Can we talk about Shane for a second? I mean, yeah. this is Please. a big deal. Huge get deal. Get the money, bro. Um, Multi-millionaire. That's crazy. He has, to, he has to complete the contract. Sure. Let's not get ahead of right, him. He, he has to do that. On Saturday, I was thinking to myself, I was saying, I'm not going to say names of who I was thinking about, but there are names I was thinking about. If you're 15 to 10, or even let's call it like 20 to 10, right? Like there's no official rankings of 20 in the UFC rankings. But if you're the 20th best fighter in a division uh, of the UFC up until let's, let's say 10, but you're not getting the top five fight. You're not getting that fight that puts you into championship contending territory. You're kind of like going up and then hitting a roadblock and falling down, and maybe you've done this a few times. What and, and maybe I said this last week, but what's stopping you from going to the PFL? Like That seems like the destination. That seems like the place where somebody who's lingering around the 10 to 20 range, who can't seem to crack into the top five, who can't seem to crack into that title contention territory, is is having an opportunity to make the most money of their career. Why Why wouldn't you? What what is what's so funny over there? I'm sorry, Frank's just packing his bags. On, yeah, on Frank's, Frank's here. Got I mean, he's just he's, he's done. Getting, he's getting ready to leave. What's happening? That's our sign. All right, this is uh, this is what happens when you win was, one week. Uh, Rick I mean, is giving a very intelligent. See, yeah. <laughs> what are you done? Well, no, I'm very confused. No, that I mean, literally just put my laptop I mean, away he's, as I he's do giving every a very show. Intelligent breakdown of why you. Would yeah, I thought it was a great problem. breakdown. And all I hear is just. Thanks, Frank. Yeah. <laughs> He's just Audio slowly guy? trying to zip Making up noise. his bag. He's complaining about Cheetos birds. It's like you might as well just zip it quick rather than that slow yeah. burn there. But again, this goes back to what we were saying about Bellator. This is that like Bellator didn't even make a push for him. Now, maybe you could say, like, maybe he's not moving the needle for that. You know. I think he's more valuable to PFL than Bellator, if I'm being honest. Yeah. I think a name like him, it means something more to the PFL than it does to Bellator. I think there's been other fighters like Shane Like, Gegard Musasi, right? Right. Gegard Musasi, Musasi is a bigger signing, in my opinion, sure, sure, than sure. Shane Burgos at the time that he signed um, from, from the UFC. So, uh, you know, Rory, when he first went to... He went to Bellator before he signed with PFL. That was another post-UFC move. So... Bellator has has done this before. Cyborg, there's there's you know a ton of these. Uh, this is this is more new territory, groundbreaking for PFL. And also to I think Shane's point, like he's in the prime of his career. These are the best years he's going to get. Um, so they're getting him at the right time. I I like the move for for both parties. Um, but also to Shane's point, I don't think it's an automatic million dollars for all these guys no. that are going to come over. It is just too tough. Um, and a tournament format in general is just too tough. We saw people not competing because of visa issues and that's another yeah man thing altogether um that's a huge thing like that wasn't originally part of the plan to go overseas for these semifinal fights and if i'm one of these guys who now num can't make a million number one seed yeah that's that's tough that's tough there's i mean i'm hoping maybe there's a competition on the back end of that but right. that, that's rough um but either way to the to the point this makes a lot of sense and i think it makes a lot of sense for a lot of fighters but i also think 
there's a lot of fighters that would be in Shane's position the first time. Hey, I really think I can make a run at this UFC championship. I want to be here. I'm 26, 27, not 31. Right. I want to keep climbing. I want to. I want to try and achieve that. So I think he played it perfectly, and I think a lot of fighters could learn from from what he's done here. The biggest hurdle is always going to be what he discussed that he was feeling before signing the last deal, which is everyone wants to say I'm a UFC fighter. It just you know. It's it's the creme de la creme. It's like saying, I work for ESPN. I felt that too, right? I, oh, everyone knows, what is it like? What is this, that? You, UFC, do you know Dana White? Do you fight at Madison Square Garden or whatever, whatever? So that's one thing that fighters are going... And there are some who don't care. We've heard this before, right? We've heard people say, I don't care. I just want to get paid or I just want to be comfortable and I just want to be happy. Yeah. Some that truly don't care. I remember like Alima Lay McFarlane was like, I want to be Bellator fighter my whole life. Remember that? Yeah. So... That's a thing, but I also think a major thing for a lot of these fighters is, and I've seen some turn down big deals because they just don't feel comfortable not being a UFC fighter. I there's think validation. There's definitely some of that. I would almost say, like, tangential part, part and parcel of that is also like, I think I can be a UFC champion because I think I can be a UFC champion is the key to even more riches, right? Like a million dollar payday from the PFL is nice, but once you're UFC champion, then you're talking like even potentially more earnings than that. Um, you're getting, you're now getting cuts of pay-per-view and, and all the things that come with that, the exposure, the recognition. So I think it's the promise and, and the career and the confidence in your career that like, look, I'm, I'm not making it right now, but if I become UFC champion now, I've, now I've won this game and I've hacked it and more power to, to that person i don't think there is a one right way or wrong way to do it but i think there's a lot of um fighters who should be considering their options the way shane did and he pres he he did he mentioned speaking about it at media day what the way he he phrased it was was very intelligent it would be negligent of him not to yeah. test the market yeah he may very well end up back in the ufc and it sounded like what he said to you he thought he would end up back at the ufc it would be negligent not to test the market and figure out where where you're going to do best for your family and he did it so good for shane congrats to that guy Speaking of UFC championship, UFC titles, becoming a UFC champion, is Cheeto's next fight for the belt? Mm, I feel I like I so. feel like he has one more. Yeah, I I still how, I, how could you not give it to Jan or O'Malley at that point? Well, if Aljo wins, you're going to go back to Jan. Why not? Mm, third fight. Yeah. Why That's not? Something fresh. I I do Jan and if O'Malley knocks out Jan, then yeah, that, I mean that's no brainer. Yeah, what would you want? Like if Al, say Aldo beats Marab, like Marab Cheeto. What I love so much about this bantamweight shot? Grand Prix, the UFC bantamweight Grand Prix that has commenced, <laughs> it really is. Like if they would have yeah. positioned but, it, you could really break it down. Nine of the top eleven that, fighters. There isn't that connective tissue, right? We don't really know. It's all it, it, well. It's kind of like a Grand Prix, but it's also like all right. It's not just a win. It's style points, as Cheeto said, style right? Points. So, like, if this was the PFL, Cheeto would have six points right now, right? Because not only sure. did he beat a legend, he also got the knockout and he got yeah. the style points. Now, I feel like the pressure is on Marab and Aldo. Like, if Marab or Aldo win a decision and it's just like, man, eh, whatever, I don't know if they're ahead of Cheeto, momentum-wise, popularity-wise, etc. Now, if they want to do Aldo title fight in, in Brazil, perhaps. Then you move on to uh, Song Yadong and Sanhagen. That's further down. Further down, right? That's like that's probably like a four or five matchup, right? Yeah. Um, I was trying to I was trying to actually give them rankings, like, like a ranking. Like I feel like oh, one like seedings for the tournament. Yeah, I feel like one versus eight is Yano Mali, right? Wow. No, just based on ranking. I don't think so. One versus eight, you know, just stick with me. So you you think if if O'Malley beats Yon, it's immediate title shot? Oh, f not even. No, but I'm just question. thinking of ranking, like probably. based on where yeah, they are. You're saying O'Malley's eight seed. Yeah. One versus eight is Yano Mali. Aldo versus Marab is two seven. Um, Cheeto versus Cruz three six, and then four five. That makes sense to me. Song I just think that if you're doing the ranking by like who's gonna get the title shot, not what is no, their ranking. Right. Sean O'Malley's number one. Yes. No. No. I just mean like if this was I know, I know, the yeah, NCAA I know tournament. Exactly what you're saying. Now, Sahudo's the wild card in all this. <laughs> He is always, I mean, that's always the case until <laughs> until he actually right. fights. I think he's going to fight. I just don't know how he factors in because I could see them just doing Cejudo Aljo or Cejudo TJ again, right? That's a, see, that's a great storyline. I think a lot of people aren't considering Cejudo Aljo. 
I think a lot more people are kind of like booking Zahudo at a 45. Like it's like no. Volkanovski. To me, I think that fight makes the most sense. I think I think Cejudo I don't think coming so. back was not fighting at 45. They have no interest. There's a better yeah. by the way, there's a better chance of Volkanovski fighting at 55 than Cejudo fighting at 45. For sure. I mean, I would like to see that fight more. Uh but I I like Aljo versus Cejudo. I really like that. I fight. like both of them. And I think Cheeto's right. Like you can't hate on Cejudo getting an immediate title shot because he never lost the belt. I'm just really curious to see like I, I was lamenting the fact that for so long all these top bantamweights had no fights. Now they all have fights, and they're all within the span of two months. It's tremendous. I mean, if Aldo beats Marab, him getting a title shot in Brazil in January would be pretty crazy. Yeah, it'll be amazing. Uh, that that Brazil card is going to be interesting to see how they book that because you have Amanda Nunes. I'm I'm assuming you're going to have Figueiredo and Moreno as that feels uh, like a no brainer. Yeah, and then I don't know if they put a third one. They want Yuri versus Glover to be on there. Yuri I'm is like, there. yo, why am I going over there? Let me fight in America and let me fight sooner. Let me fight December 10th. And that's why he sent out that tweet last week. Yeah. And for some reason, everyone just ran with that as being like a done deal. Not a done deal. But they want John Jones to be on December 10th. And they're trying to be crazy. And they're trying to slide in one more fight for Francis. That would be crazy. I don't know that if that's going to happen. Yeah, obviously, for a yeah. multitude of reasons. <laughs> yeah. Other than uh, Stipe <laughs> as the it, that that whole December January pay per view situation is about to get really interesting. Yeah, it's going to be crazy once they start announcing official fights. Cue the uh, well. You don't have to wait for the official announcements. You could just you trust. Know, yeah, yeah. Top notch journalist. Uh, cue the Instagram. Ariel Hawani is reporting that blah 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 blah. All these like all of a sudden you see all these like these Instagram, Gunner Jones, book. Twitter accounts. Yeah, book John Jones, Francis Ngannou is official, is in the works, is targeted for December tenth. That's all I got, guys. It's a good show. It's a good show. Great show. Great show. Busy show. Busy show. A uh, lot more on Wednesday to get to. I've discussed some of the guests. And we're just, you know, celebrating one year. Of course, neither of you guys were here last year. Frank and I were no. here. That's right. I was, I was in Atlanta watching it on my couch. Wow. You were just like, like what, what am I? What is MMA yeah. stand? <laughs> what am I about to get into? Frank, what do you remember from your first day, from the first time we met? Um, you grilled me on how much MMA knowledge That's I had. That's such a lie. I you, grill, that, that, you, you told everybody that I didn't know who Conor McGregor was. What are you talking about? I even true. How would I even? We well, have the receipts on that one. It's on the that. episode. You're like Frank doesn't even know who Conor McGregor on is. on the first episode. Yeah, it's I have a hard time believing that. Well, and and now he's now the he's only one diehard. making right picks yeah. in the parlor. I mean, Rick, those are your words. <laughs> I wasn't now saying now that. He's booking <laughs> spots on my couch for two seventy eight. Yeah. Oh, you guys watch it together? Yeah. Wow. He's also going to be making spots. Everybody invited here. Wow. That's amazing. You guys watching it together. Yeah, it should be having a nice little... Uh, Guess I missed the invite on that one. The I, <laughs> I mean, this is it? This is just, it? Just what about the, entire the, uh, the Everton? Everybody. Yeah. No, I'm going I'm going to watch BJG. Everton. At, uh, what's the name uh, of the place? Smithfields. 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 I'll, I'll be there on the Saturday. The trip on the invites. I mean, That's I just... the best, right? I can't. Come on over. Isn't your family out of town? Me? Yeah. Yeah, I'm all by myself. So no will be at Harry Styles. We'll have a bachelor's night. We can leave Smithfields, go out to Midwood. Yeah, Smith, uh, uh, Smithfields gonna, the official uh, <laughs> How are we going to kill the time between 12.30 oh, and... PFL's in London, right? By the way, there's like a thousand... There you go, there you go. Main, so, and Usyk, so, and Usyk. Yeah, main card... Though, here's the thing. Just to let you know, Everton, Nottingham is 10 to 12. That's Usyk, Joshua, main card yes. starts at 12. So yes. we, we stay at Smithfields, they put and the then, game on. And then it Fights, goes to PFL, me. and then we say, yo, put up MVP... And Mike yep. Perry, bare knuckle affair. As soon as that finishes, we catch the and first he, train to Midwood. Wow, what a day. Just got a day planned plan. out. Wow. I mean, that's a legit, we're talking 10 to, what is that, like a 15, 15 hours. hours? Yeah. 15 hour day. Wow. Sign me up. Sign do, me up. Do you need to check your calendar first? or Who, me? Yeah. Oh, I, I'm not agreeing to any of this. I'm just, ta- I'm oh. just sort of reminiscing <laughs> about how oh. great this day would be. How great it will be. <laughs> I'm going to need to deposit more into the old. Wow. That is amazing. All right. Well, we'll see. Um, thank you, well, gentlemen. We'll see. That's <laughs> the biggest well, no, no I've ever in the history. Of <laughs> I've got a lot of things that I need to take care of. You know, first of all, I have a dog. 
Is the dog allowed yeah. to come? Dog friendly bar. Yes, yeah, so you can meet my dog. Quote unquote. Is it a dog friendly bar? I'm sure it is. It's mm. Manhattan. Um, all right. Well, I'm tired, guys. Thank you so much. God bless. Frank, congratulations. Oh, wow. We're just going right to oh, it. When huh? you said Frank. <laughs> I, no, I said Frank, congratulations. I was just trying to have one. No, 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 please. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that. You can't play the song and then turn it off. It's like Pavlov. Oh, my. What a day. What a day. Oh, wow. Mike Johnson. Uh, Mike Johnson. Mike Jackson has a fight. I see here. On MMA Junkie against Pete Rodriguez. Wow. What a great story he is. Gentlemen, ladies, we have said it all. We have done it all. It started with Shane Burgos just walking in. The only thing that would have made it better if he just walked in with the old Billy Strutt, right? Vince McMahon style. No chance. So that's what you got. <laughs> Announces the news that he has uh, joined PFL. Thank you very much to him for stopping by to make that announcement. I appreciate him very much, and I wish him the best in this new chapter as well. Then we went on to Bo Nickel, one of the rising stars in this sport, who's now 2-0. and God bless him. I see that Dominic Cruz has... Uh, put out a statement. I was texting with him a little bit. Hope he's in a good spot and doing well as well. Then we went on to Nate Landwehr. I almost screwed that whole thing up, but uh, very appreciative that he came on. What a personality. That was a lot of fun. Great to have him on the program. Then we had the great Demetrius Johnson in studio. Love talking to him. Good luck to him on August the 26th. One on Prime Video One. That was tremendous. Then we had Cheeto Vera. Congrats to Marlon Cheeto Vera. And then we had Leon Edwards fighting for the belt in five days. Good luck to him as well. What a day. What a show. Back on Wednesday to do it all over again. I'll do this. Peace.